it be about six o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, what, what's the weather report, Canfetted? The weather report is f fucking stench streaming down from the sky in big long ribbons because we're about to do long ring long land. Beautiful, just how I like it. Yes, indeed, we are talking about the rest of One Piece box set 2 today. Uh, I've taken extensive notes on the parchment, so hopefully we can get through it a little bit quicker than last time. Uh, and yes, to start us off, we are of course talking about Long Ring, Long Land, uh, which is a delightfully smelly little set of chapters, uh, but you said you wanted to start off slightly before that. Yeah, so chapter 303 is technically the beginning of the next... Uh, of the next arc. So it's called the Wealthy Pirate Gang, and this is where we meet, uh, I believe this is the one in which we meet Foxy, but first, at the start of the chapter, we get the good old the monkey boys, they're here, they're saying, ooh, there's no gold in the sea, let's, let's give up on that, let's, we get this really cool panel with Mont Blanc Cricket, and he says, what sort of adventure do you want to chase after next? And that, that is mighty fine. Oh yes, I do. But like then, but then after that, we we come back to uh, to Mock Town, and we have mm. what is this? Bellamy is fighting with his first mate. Why yes, could he... I, I did actually have this in my notes. Uh, funny enough. Why would Bellamy be fighting with his first mate? They're, they're good buddies. Um, it turns out. There's a guy, his name is Don Quixote Don Flamingo, and my goodness, he's a flamboyant kind of guy. He's he's pretty pretty fancy. His name does look very intimidating when it's written down, but when you say it out loud it just sounds like he's called Donkey. <laughs> uh so yeah, he's a he's a big boy. He's one of the seven warlords of the uh the Shichibuka. And he's apparently making Bellamy fight his own crewmate against his will. He, not only is he... He's not just commanded him to do so. He is incapable of not doing it. And we get a little side panel kind of thing. With... It looks like Don, Don Quixote... It, well, I'll say Do Flamingo to avoid the donkey thing now. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> It looks like he is moving his fingers like puppet strings, and that yeah, yeah, well, that's what the fuck is that? I wonder. That's pretty interesting. So we'll uh, we'll we'll get back to him pretty late on in the story, but he's a big boy. He's, yeah. This is I can't remember. Did the uh, I think we've seen him once before, but not really had any idea what he's doing. Yeah, he, he very briefly showed up when we were checking in with the Shijibukai uh, over on um, Marijua. Marijua, yes. Um, so, what he says... Uh, he's essentially got this idea of dreams are dead. Like, mm. And that's where, that's why Bellamy was so, was so emphatic about taking the piss out of Luffy and his crew. Yeah, yeah. And it's because his big boss, it turns out, was Doflamingo. Mm. In uh, many ways, you could say that Doflamingo is the one saying, Dreamin', do give it up, Luffy. Hmm. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, uh, he is going to kill Bellamy, uh, but Bellamy, he's, he's a pretty loyal guy, he says, I'm gonna eliminate the weak and make it to your level, so please let me stay on your crew. Uh, and Doflamingo, he's, he's kinda touched by this, he's not entirely a monster, so he lets Bellamy live, but he kicks him out of the crew. And he says, the new era is almost upon us. Yes. Um, and... This is Doflamingo's big... This is his big thing, is he's... He's obsessed with a new age. 
Mm. An age of unmatched power. Yes. Very so that's uh, that's what I wanted to go over here. Is okay. Doflamingo is he is a pretty spooky book. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Uh, right, so yeah, keeping him in mind for later, I'm sure. Uh, next up, I've got Foxy shoots a horse. Yeah, Foxy does shoot a horse. Um, so mm. be- that's uh, that's a little bit further on. I uh, mean, a little bit, but does anything important really happen before Foxy shoots the horse? Well, we might as well go over it just to uh, just to make sure people understand what's actually okay. happening. Well, they, they they arrive on this island, which they soon find out is named Long Ring, Long Land, hence the name of the arc. And uh, the gimmick here is that everything is long. The trees are long, the horses are long, this guy on stilts, he's got really long stilts. So high up, so long, that he can't even get down. Uh, until he gets knocked over, of course. Hmm, and my disappointment is also long. Yes. <laughs> uh, so this is very widely held as the worst One Piece arc. Um, it, it's pretty dull. It's pretty dull. Almost nobody enjoys it. It was really just... I'm not entirely sure about this, but I've got a sneaking suspicion. This was just so that Oda had some time to breathe before he got into the real big boy stuff of Water Seb. Yeah, Um, it it definitely feels like filler, but in the manga. Yeah, so this this is why everyone who's watched the anime says... Fuck Long Ring Long Land. The real, the real canon here is definitely G eight. Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> I can see it's why just, say that. It's just vastly better. Yeah. Um, so, Foxy, he's he's a pretty snazzy dude, uh, but he's also a big bastard. Yes. Um, yes, entirely. He goes around. He challenges people to the Pirate Olympics, and well, he cheats and they lose, and he steals all their crew. Hmm. Yes. Um, uh, specifically, he challenges them to what's known as a Davy Back game, uh, which is a, a set of events where you compete, you know, crew versus crew, and whoever wins each event gets to choose uh, a member of the opposing crew to bring over to their crew. Um, yeah, so, uh, the. This is an interesting part. Um, so, before we. We've again. I've got to go back a little bit. Okay. There okay. is, there is one other part just before they get to Long Ring Long Land. We get a snapshot of Grand Line Navy headquarters. Yes. Um, and the guy that we see, it's because the Navy they're talking the big. Like the, the big cheeses, they're talking about. Oh, that guy! He's off on his bicycle. He's he's mm. fucked off. Where is he? Um, but he is apparently, in air quotes, I would put it, the greatest power in the navy. And this is Admiral Aokiji, and we get this really cool. Well, I don't know, cool. I guess just funny. Uh, no, panel. Like a cool for the pun. Uh, well, we get this really funny panel of him. We see a silhouette on a bicycle on the ocean. Yes. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he nearly crashes into a dolphin and just goes, whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I do really like Aokiji. He is definitely the best thing about this arc, I'd say, is his introduction. Yeah. Um, and he. We get another little bit of his silhouette, and we see, hey, he's looking at a wanted poster for Luffy, and he says, "Not an honest fellow in the whole family," and that's uh, mm. that's not good. An admiral is now after Luffy, mm. and uh, I'm sure, as we'll get to the end of this, we'll find a lot more admirals will be after Luffy. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, they. Uh, Foxy challenges the Straw Hats to a daily back game. He, uh, <laughs> his ship, it's got like claws on the side, which can like trap another ship against the shore, uh, essentially forcing them to play this game against him, um, if they want to leave, basically. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, yeah, so charges them to the daily back, and Straw Hats go. Well, I, I guess we got no choice, except. Uh, and round one is a race, a race across water. Uh, 
where you gotta sweep, uh, paddle your little boats. Uh, get you gotta all make the way your own the boat, island. and then you gotta get all the way around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and w what I thought they were gonna do here is um, uh, because they they established that long ring long land, which looks like eight islands, is actually just one big island, and most of it is submerged um, because of a high tide. And uh, so what I thought was going to happen was they were going to go around the little island and Foxy's pirates were going to you know, get around real quick and they were going to like go, ah, oh, yeah, we win. And then the other guys are going to go, ah, uh, no, you didn't go all the way around the island. It's actually a really big island. Uh, and so, you know, uh, Nami and, uh, and the others have gone all the way around. And, and that's how they win. But no, instead Foxy just cheats, um, as his pirate crew is known to do. Yeah, because um, Foxy, he's got a devil fruit of his own. Uh, he does. He's got the slow, slow fruit, mm. um, which he fires off a beam, and Luffy, he's really, he is enthralled by the idea of beams. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he can fire a beam, and it'll slow down whatever it hits, and what it hits keeps its momentum. Um, so yeah. the beam lasts, I think it's 30 seconds, and then once it wears off, you just go flying off again. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it works a bit like, uh, well, I mean, actually, yeah, it, it, it works basically like the um, the stasis rune in Breath of the Wild, uh, if you know any of our viewers have played that, where if you freeze something, and then, like, you hit it a bunch, then that, you know, the, the force of you hitting it will build up until the, the slowness runs out, and then it'll all hit it at once, basically. Yeah, and um, that, you can see, I mean, it's a, a bit like Luffy's power, it's a bit weak in and of itself, um, mm. but if you use it right, that could be pretty darn powerful. Yeah, and Foxy, you, you get some creative uses out of it. Yeah, so... I don't know. We there's not much to talk about about Long Ring Long Land. The next yeah, one is uh, they have a fight that's just football, except one of your crew members is the ball, if I remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got it written down as human basketball. Um, um and which means you've got to dunk one of the opponents in a hoop. Yeah. Um, and Foxy, his big trick for this one is he's got a big old. Big boy is his yes. one of his crewmates is I think a half giant. Yeah, yeah, I seem to remember he's a half giant, uh, which is still pretty big. Yeah, because you got to remember the giants in this. I mean, how you get a half giant, I've not a clue. But the, 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 the giants there are some in this very, can very brave women in the world. The giants in this can be pretty darn big. I think there's different species of or, I guess, races of giants in this. Mm. So the biggest giant ever, I think, tops out at... Ooh, something like 100 metres. It's pretty big. Yeah, that, that, is, that is rather large. Um, but the regular giants that you'll see about, um, they're, they're around 30 metres tall, and that is still mm. huge. Um... So yeah, uh, basically the only reason anyone ever, the only thing anyone ever enjoys in this is, of course, Luffy in his most powerful form. Yes. Afro Luffy. <laughs> Afro Luffy. I, I do appreciate the, uh, the, the Afro Luffy aesthetic. And of course, Usopp cheering him on the whole time, saying, this Afro will give you power. This, that you need this. And, I mean, Nami, she doesn't really get it, but everyone else, they all know yeah. the, they, the they, power they, of the afro. Because the final fight, the one where he gets to put on the afro, is a fight between captains. Yes. And the reason that it all comes down to this is that, essentially, Foxy bets his whole gosh diggity darn crew. Um... So, pretty much, the, the captains, they're going to have a big fight, but, of course, you can't beat Luffy when he's got the power of an afro. 
Exactly, yes. Uh, the, the fight does, uh, you know, it does drag on for a bit, because Foxy is a pretty tricky one, and Luffy is uh, a, a bit of a ditz, let's say. Um, yeah. So he does fall for quite a few tricks. But in the end, when it comes down to it, Luffy too strong. He got Afro. Yeah. Um, so, Afro Luffy, he wins the fight, and Foxy, even though he's a big bastard, he's still a man of his word, in a sense, yeah. in that he's like, well, no, my honour as a pirate is tarnished now if you don't take me in as your crewmate, because essentially that that fight was genuinely over the entire crew of each uh, ship. Yeah, basically. Um, so now Luffy, he's got something like 130 new members, and he wants none of that. <laughs> yeah, no. No, he says, I don't want your crew, I'm taking your flag. <laughs> yep, um, but he doesn't just take their flag, no. he gives them a new one. <laughs> yes, he's, look, he's a good Samaritan, he wants them to be able to sail away, so he just draws over it. Yeah, um, and it's awful, <laughs> it's hideous. It, it is peak um, Luffy art. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's pretty much the end of that. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, as they're uh, getting ready to leave Longwing Longland and go on ahead to the next island, uh, they encounter Mr. Aokiji, uh, who is here, and, you know, he seems pretty alright, pretty chill, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, yeah. You know, he's, he's a, a fairly laid-back kind of guy. So here we've got uh, One Piece's called Parker. Uh, he has yes. <laughs> the power of ice. He's an ice man. And yes. that doesn't just spread to himself, obviously. he's His devil fruit, rather than Luffy's fruit, so Luffy has a paramecia. And paramecias, yes. they affect the body of the user. Yes. So you could... You have an equal chance of turning into venom as you do into, like, bread. Uh, so they're kind of... There's some oh, wildly like varying the two powers. options you go, you go for, venom and bread. Yeah, what, you can see how some of them can be pretty powerful, but some of them kind of useless. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Aokiji's fruit, his is a logia. Mm-hmm. And the logias are... Renowned as the strongest type of devil fruit. Yeah. Because so the Logias, perfect. they affect not just the user's body, they they turn the user's body into some kind of element or yes. substance. But they also allow the user to manipulate the weather and the world around them. Yes. And, and that they is hide that substance, yeah. Mm, that is very strong. Especially when you get something as universal as ice. Yeah. Um, because essentially, he can take the moisture in the air, turn it into ice. He, he has this cool attack where he turns a, a blade of grass into a big long ice sword by freezing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's got a very strong devil fruit, and he's got a problem with Robin. Yes, he does. Or, well, not, not so much a problem, as he, he's very interested to see, you know, what she's up to at the moment. Yeah, um, so he says we go way back, and mm. Robin, she is spooked at the Im- at the sight of him immediately. She knows yeah. that something bad is about to happen, um, and there's a reason for that. Um, yes. So Aokiji, he has some history with Robin. Um, Indeed. Uh, so Robin... Before we get into the uh, history that she has with yeah. him, Robin takes some time to explain to Sanji and the rest of the crew just what the rank of Admiral means. Mm. Um, so in the Navy, there's there's a lot of ranks. Um, we saw yeah, with Kobe, yeah. he started off as a cabin boy. He's, just, he's essentially a cleaner, or started off as... Um, and then we've seen captains like Smoker, we've seen uh, 
vice admirals. We've seen a few of them. We've seen but a couple admirals, lieutenants as well. Yeah, but admirals. There's only four of them. Yeah, they're, uh, they're the big boys. Sorry, three. Three of them yes. um, at the moment. Yeah. So there's Admiral Akainu, which. Yep. Okay. So these aren't their real names. Um, no, they're, they're titles. Yeah, so there's Akainu, uh, which translates to Red Dog. He's the mm-hmm. Red Dog. We have Aokiju, which is the blue pheasant. And then Kizaru, which I can't remember what uh, that yellow is. Monkey, That's the yellow. I think. Yeah, yellow monkey. Yeah. Um, so. Three of them in the entire mm-hmm. navy. And then the only person that you really have ranking above them. Although, there are ranks higher than that in terms of governmental. But in terms yeah. of the navy, there's only one, and that's, that's obviously the fleet, the fleet admiral. admiral. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these guys, they're they're known as the powerhouse of the navy. They are the reason that the navy is able to control the world. Yeah. Um, and they live up to this. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> they are nigh unstoppable one on one. So. It's kind of weird that one of these three people is coming after Robin. Uh, why? Yeah, she's she, she's she only got pretty important. Yeah, she's got a seventy-nine million berry bounty. That's pretty decent, but it's it's nothing compared to some of the bigger fish. Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, then later in this, Luffy gets a three hundred million bounty. So he does indeed. Um, so uh, Aokiji explains that. He's not really there to capture them. His motto is lazy justice. Lazy justice. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some debate about what exactly that means, but essentially, he's a laid back guy. He's not gonna really do anything to you if you're not actively fucking with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or if you're not doing something that is immediately dangerous. Um, So he says he just came to verify Nico Robin's whereabouts. Um, And then... uh, Luffy, (laughs) he tries to attack him. Yes. Um... On the, well, you, you know, what's going through Luffy's head? He's just like, oh, this guy has a problem with Robin. Better beat him up. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Luffy, he doesn't understand. But the rest of them, they, they know what's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Aokiji, he decides. Well, I'm gonna take this old guy who's been stuck on the island forever. Um, the uh, he's going to take him off uh, take him to somewhere where he can actually have a proper fucking life uh, if I remember right uh, yeah I, I think he was going to um, essentially make an ice pathway for him to get to the, the next island piece in Long Ring Long Land so he can meet back up with the rest of his tribe yeah um and that's that's that is essentially how he managed to ride his bike on the ocean as well. Yes. <laughs> um, so his signature thing is he doesn't need a ship. He just he poodles along on his bike across the ocean by freezing it, um, yes. creating a little narrow walkway for him to ride along. And that's how he gets about. Yeah. Yeah. Very um, cool. Then. Yeah, then Aokiji, uh, he saves them from uh, Sea King, and he yes, freezes he the whole goddamn ocean along with it. Yeah, uh, he's a bit overkill. Just a smidge. Yeah, um, his power, he's trained with it to the point where it's not just like he can create ice crystals or whatever to, to throw at you or something. He can freeze the entire area around him very yeah. rapidly. Um, and if he 
manages to freeze you, you can imagine what will happen. So, uh, he explains that he knows Luffy's grandfather. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he immediately turns around, 180s, and says, Well, now that I've had a good look at you, I'm going to kill you. Yikes. Uh, so they're pretty fucked. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he freezes Robin and essentially uses her as a hostage. Um, not really, I don't think not on purpose. He just wants to take her out of the equation. Yeah, yeah. Um, Luffy goes to fight him. Um, Luffy gets fucked up real good. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he gets frozen. Essentially, the fight ends with Luffy and Robin frozen. Um, and Chopper, he <laughs> he comes up with the bright idea of showering them to warm them up. And that actually does work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Aokiji... I'm just reading along very quickly, skin. Mm, okay. This. okay. <laughs> um, and Aokiji decides not to kill them. I can't remember quite what. Uh, but I think it's something to do with them liking Robin and wanting to help her. Um, yeah, yeah. Because Aokiji, he doesn't think that there's any real way to save Robin from her fate. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he, he says to the Straw Hat something along the lines of, soon enough you'll see why she's so much trouble. Yeah. Um, so, this is, this is foreshadowing for the next couple of arcs. Yeah, but yeah. Yes, let's just say there's something really Odd about Nico Robin mm. and her For sure. relationship with the government. Yeah. So this is uh this is the end of Long Ring Longland. So they're off. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Let's actually get to Water Seven. Um. Yeah, but before we get to R Water mm -hmm. Seven, uh, they're sail sailing along, and they see oh, yes. a big frog doing the front crawl. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> And Luffy, he's pretty interested in this. Uh, so they follow it and... Hang on, there's... Rails on the ocean? Yeah. Um, and then suddenly, out of nowhere... Holy shit, there's a big-ass fucking train barreling towards us. <laughs> yep. Um, that frog's getting right in the way of it. Yeah, uh, the frog, he's... He seems pretty intent on... Bashing headfirst into it for some reason. Um, so he bashes the train the train obviously wins uh, but the frog lives and yes. they're at a train station on the ocean or a, a lighthouse yeah. specifically um, and there's and living there, yeah. uh, yep, living there are Kokoro, Chimney and Gombe the uh, quote cat yes the cat uh, yes. Which is very clearly not a cat, but we'll go yeah. with it. No, the the um, the at least in the um, in the manga I was reading, they made sure to specify every time he was on screen, he's not actually a cat. Yeah, <laughs> just in case you didn't get it from the rabbit ears. Mm. So, um, chimney, she's she's a weird girl. Uh, yeah. She's she's interested in the pirates, and she's like, "Hey, look, Granny! They're gonna kill us." Uh, <laughs> um, so Granny comes out, Granny Kokoro, and she is drunk as fuck. Uh, oh yeah, that 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 seems to be her perpetual state. Uh, yeah, is, is so drunk. so she's a v huge alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
Luffy introduces himself. He says, Hi, I'm Luffy. I'm going to be the king of the pirates. Uh, and he asks them about the train. Mm. And apparently it's called the Puffing Tom. Puffing Tom. A, um, a delightful little name for a train. Yeah, so the Puffing Tom, it's taking people to and from a place called Water 7. Yes. Um, Water 7... It's a pretty cool place. Uh, oh, yeah. So, Luffy, he's hoping that it's like a... a basically a big restaurant island. Uh, <laughs> but no, it turns out this is where the best shipwrights in the world all gather. Oh, what um, a coincidence. We were just looking for a shipwright. Yeah, we were looking for a musician and then a shipwright, hopefully. But uh, yeah, definitely the musician like first. Hmm. Uh, but but it's probably a good idea to get a ship right. Yeah, um, yeah. So they're off to Water 7. Um, it's the city of water. Yes. Um, it basically means that part of the city is submerged. Um, it is under the, the water level. We don't find out quite why until a bit later on. Uh, but essentially... So... This city has been steadily sinking into the sea over the course of many years, uh, and they just sort of keep building it back up in the middle. Yeah. Um, so the effect that this has had is essentially the city is one piece is equivalent of Venice. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of canals everywhere. Yeah, so it's a really cool design city. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, love it. You get when they get to the city, they have this big. Uh, there's this big panel of uh, just the city, its layout, and you see there's a big waterfall coming down four sides of the city, and it's all interspersed with canals. Um, it just looks really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got the the big uh, shipyard in the center. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, now that they know they're going to Water 7, they are... They're f they've realised their, f their first goal here has to be to get the Merry fixed. Yes. Uh, so they're looking for a carpenter. And I'll put it in the chat here, because it's very important that this goes on stream. Uh, okay. On stream, but this is Luffy's ideal carpenter. This is what he's looking for. <laughs> uh, Five meters. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't end up being all that wrong, to be fair. Not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you can sort of see the shape design going into that, yeah. I can see how he might be um, pleased with who he ended up with. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, he was definitely pleased with who he ended up with, but... Uh, yeah. For very different reasons than that. Uh, yeah. So they've reached the island, and there's no way to get around really on this island without. Uh, well, first a guy tells them, "Hey, you pirates, you need to go around the other side." Because yeah, I mean, this city—it's a ship, a shipwright center. It's of course pirates are gonna be coming in here, but yeah. They've got to have this superficial show of not allowing them in, so they've got to go around the other side. Exactly, yeah. And it turns out you can't get around without a Yagara. Um, so or, or a bull, as it's translated. Uh, yeah, so the... Well, no. The bulls are the male Yagaras. Oh, is that so? Okay. Yeah, so the species is Yagara. And these Yagara, they pull goat, uh, goats? Gondolas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't pull goats along the water. <laughs> um, no, they pull gondolas, and yep. essentially they're like Lapras. Uh, that, that's what they look like to me. That's a good way to describe them, yeah. So they're fish horses, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so they're off with all of their gold, and yes, they're going to find... get it converted into money. Yeah, so they're off to find a money changer, and yes. 
Nami, shit. They get to the money changer and Nami is having none of this shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, essentially, the guy offers them something like 30 million. They come out with 100 million berries. Oh, no, no, 300 million. Oh, sorry, oh. yeah, 300 million. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and they're quite happy quite with happy. this, so... They're off to see Mr. Iceberg, the yes. leader of Water 7, the mayor yes, of the town. Yes, because uh, on, on their way here, Kokoro uh, gave them the, a note saying, uh, you know, go go see Iceberg, give him this note, he'll know what to do. Yeah. Um, so Iceberg, we see him for the first time, and he's with... Uh, uh, Khalifa? He's, yeah, he's with Khalifa... Fra- uh, not Frankie... Uh, Oh, I forget the name of the guy who's always smoking a cigar. Uh, uh, Paulie? Paulie, yes. Uh, so he's with Paulie and Khalifa, and there's a pirate at the gates, and yeah. they're saying, hey, you fixed our ship, but we don't want to pay. Uh, so just give us it back or we'll kill you. And he <laughs> immediately gets fucked right up. Uh, yeah. The uh, shipwrights of Water Seven. Oh, sorry, go on. So, I was just gonna say. So there's a there was a weird moment in all of that where uh, right before they decide to you know beat up these pirates, um, Khalifa says, "Oh uh, yes, these pirates want to leave without paying. That's sexual harassment." Yeah. So that's her thing, her gimmick in this. Um... Yeah, it, it's her gimmick, but it only shows up here once, and then like way later on, like she completely drops it for most of this arc. And then it just comes back later. Um, not in the anime. Uh, okay. I think it's just to save panel space. Fair uh, enough. You can't just ha- dedicate half of a panel to its sexual harassment over and over again. I mean, this is Oda's one piece. Like, he, he could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> but so it turns out the shipwrights here, they're fucking strong. They are very yeah. strong, and oh, yeah. you don't want to mess with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, this particular company, this particular shipbuilding firm, is the Galila Company. Yes, Galila. And Galila, they're cool. They're headed up by Iceberg. He's the mm-hmm. owner of the company, but he's also the mayor of the city. He's a pretty important guy all around. Yeah. Um, so, the Straw Hats, they come up to this now, and they're like, what the fuck? There's, <laughs> there's pirates just knocked out here. Yeah. Um, but while they're meeting with Iceberg for the first time, the Frankie family... Uh, have a bunch of weirdos in big bowling ball suits. Uh, yes. <laughs> they've, they've come onto the boat and they're gonna uh, they're gonna steal the ship. They're gonna tear it down and turn it into scrap to sell. Because that, that's what they do with the Frankie family. They're ship dismantlers by trade. Yeah. Um, so Zorro was left to guard the boat. Mm-hmm. Or more specifically he was still mapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they wake him up and he's a bit cranky. Uh, so he he wrecks them. There's oh, yeah, no tough. there's no way that they were gonna <laughs> survive that. Um, so he launches them and now we're in Water Seven's shopping district. So yeah. while Luffy and the and I think it was Luffy, Nami, and Usopp went to get the ship uh, repaired, or at least discuss the cost of repairs. Yes. Um, Sanji, Robin, Chopper, they went to the shopping district. Sanji to get food. Robin because she wants uh, books, uh, I think. Uh, No, sorry, Chopper because he wants medical books. Uh, Yes, yes, that's right. And Robin because... I, I don't know. She just seems to enjoy shopping, which yeah. is fair enough. Um, and there's a costume festival being held. Uh, everyone's in weird masks. Everyone's 
uh, dressed up all fancy and what? one of the masked people walks past Robin and says I'm with CP9 I'm with CP9 <laughs> Uh, and Robin seems dismayed at this. She's very shocked. Um, but no other words are spoken. No. Um, that's all that's said. Uh, so Robin, she keeps her cool and continues on as she was. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> so Robin goes in... Uh, sorry, Chopper goes into the bookstore in his uh, human quote marks form. Yeah. <laughs> But he looks like a yeti, obviously, so... But fortunately, because it's this big festival, everyone's like, Hey, look, that's a pretty cool costume. Uh, you must have spent a long time on it. Yeah. Uh, he specifically states... Someone asks him what costume it is, and he says a human reindeer. Someone goes, a what? <laughs> uh, so it kind of plays into the whole raccoon dog thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the tanuki thing. Um, nobody really knows what a reindeer is outside of Winter Islands. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so yeah. yeah, let's see. Uh, so oh yes, they they uh, meet up with Kaku. He is another member of the um, we've got the Galila company, and he goes off to have a look at their ship to see you know what kind of condition it's in, how much it'll cost to fix that sort of stuff. And, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So he's a. Uh, <laughs> he is very strange. He's Im- immediately you're reminded of Usopp, but like Minecraft Usopp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Minecraft Usopp. That's a good way of describing him. Um, yeah, because he, he's got the long nose, uh, but it's all square. His, his nose is very cubical. Yeah. Um, but he he doesn't just go off to find the ship he launches himself off one of the highest points in the city yep. and essentially runs off across the rooftops mm-hmm. so he's pretty fast he's pretty he's a very good jumper yes it's it's all so far in line with how we've seen that Galila is no, sure. their members are very strong yeah um so he gets to the ship and he takes a look at the uh, stern of the ship um, and immediately he sees there is a huge crack in the going there um, specifically in the one most important piece of a ship um, yeah so the, the, in they essence, refer to it as like the like the spine of the ship, you know, just holding it all together. Yeah. So basically, the Going Merry, she is not going to be able to sail for much longer, uh, and they refuse to repair it. Um, well, not this... so much that they refuse; they say it can't be done. If, if we were to fix this, we would basically just be building a new ship. Yeah. Um, so. The Straw Hats, they're pretty heartbroken at this, and they don't really believe it at first, because this is the Going Merry, she's a crew member. She just yeah, is. Exactly. Um, and she's she's pretty much meeting her end. Hmm. So, the crew, they're still hoping that there's some way for her to be fixed some way for them to continue their journey with her. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're going to hold on to this for a, a little while. Uh, hmm. but, but yeah, now we we cut back to Sanji. He's in the town. He's looking for mm-hmm. uh, for food to stock their ship back up. Um, yeah. And he sees Robin walking away with the masked man from earlier. Yes. Uh, and they get to a corner, he turns the corner, and they've disappeared. Mm. Um, there's like a dead end, there's no way that they could have gone, it's just open ocean from there. But yeah, they're just yeah. gone. 
Um, so that's uh, that's pretty strange. What? Why is Robin sneaking about with a masked individual? Yeah, there's there's something going on there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, no, no matter for now. You know, it's it's just Robin being Robin. I'm sure she'll come back later. Uh, for now, I've just got to buy some of that water, water meat. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, now we're back with Iceberg, and Iceberg is a cool guy. Uh, yes. He carries around a little mouse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he literally just picked up a mouse. Like, it, he saw a mouse and figured, hey, that's a pretty cool mouse. Come with yep. me. Um, I think he literally said, like, he found it that day or something. Yeah. Um, uh, and apparently the mouse he's named Tyrannosaurus, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, but Iceberg, he's a busy guy. Uh, you can't really meet with the Straw Hats to talk about uh, buying a new ship hmm. or how they're going to have the Going Merry possibly repaired, maybe. Uh, so he, he just says, I'll cancel everything. Yes. <laughs> um, All my appointments today. All I'll cancel. Just to meet with the Straw Hats. Um, which, the only real reason you could think... Well, there's two reasons this might be. One, they've got 300 million berries. Uh, they're pretty loaded. That's, but that's also, pretty respectable. But also, they've had this recommendation note from Granny Kokoro. Yeah. And at this point, you're just left to wonder, well, what does Iceberg have to do with Kokoro? Um, the, the, the only explanation that he's given is that they're drinking buddies. As we'll find out, it goes a little bit deeper than that. Yeah. So, uh... Basically, at this point... Holy, we get introduced to Prockley. Yes. Um, and he tries to steal the Straw Hat's money. Well, um, specifically, uh, some of the Frankie family come along and try to steal it first. Yeah. And then uh, he steals it from them. But thankfully, Iceberg, he's there to stop. Uh, sorry, Rob Lucci. And yes. Rob Lucci, he's a badass. Uh, you oh, see yeah. his character design, and immediately you're like, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's got a pigeon on his shoulder with a tie. Uh, <laughs> yes, I love the little tie. That apparently speaks for him. Um, yeah. But he's kind of like the boss under the boss of Galila. He's he's the yeah. Iceberg's the head honcho, but Rob Lucci. While Iceberg's busy doing his melee stuff, Rob Lucci's the guy that they go to. Yeah, exactly. So he tells Paulie to knock it off. Uh, they, the, Nami, she's like, well, who on earth was that that just tried to steal our money? And. Pally first, she explains that it's the Frankie family. Yes. Um, the ship dismantlers who... Yeah, they're, they're ship dismantlers, but they're also bounty hunters on the side. Bounty hunters on the side, and also basically the crime family of Water 7. Yeah. Um, so they pretty much run the underworld here. Uh, so they're some shady individuals. Yeah. Uh... And Iceberg says... So, Luffy's like, they didn't seem that strong. But Iceberg says... They might not have been strong, but the family's leader, he's he hides himself pretty well. And you don't yeah. want to underestimate him. His name is Frankie. Mm. Um, so, Frankie, he sounds like a pretty powerful... Uh, indeed, indeed. Um, so, yeah, let's see, where, where are we at? Uh, so yeah, ship can't be fixed. Uh, oh yeah, the, the Frankie family um, do end up successfully uh, stealing some of their money because Usopp's a, a dolt and doesn't look at, you know, he, he's not watching it, basically. Um, well, yeah, so Usopp, he's furious at himself for this, uh, very yeah. disappointed in himself. So he yeah, goes off to get the money back, and 
this is this is the event that pretty much starts off the big events in Water Seven. So Luffy, mm. uh, sorry, uh, Usopp, he goes off. He encounters the Frankie family, yep. and they brutally beat. Oh he, yeah, yeah. He, he stands no chance against these guys. Yeah. Um, so he gets found by. I believe Robin and Sanji. Think so, yeah. Think so. Um, and now Luffy has got a huge, huge debt to pay against uh, the Frankie family. Not only for stealing their money, uh, Luffy's pretty angry about that. But more importantly, they fucked Usopp up. Yes, uh, it was not good. Uh, so Luffy he goes off to fight the Frankie family. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I believe Sanji goes with him as well. Yep, Sanji goes with him. Um, and then they meet up with Zoro on the boat, if I remember right. I think um, so. I think so. So we get this really cool panel uh, of them standing side by side, about to break down the. No, sorry, just after, I think, breaking down the door to the Frankie's house. Yes. <laughs> um, and, I mean, you just look at, uh, you just look at this and, hang on, I'll get you the, uh, I'll get you the exact screenshot. Here. Sure. Uh, So, yeah, here we go. It's just before. Oh. Oh, here we are. This is the screenshot, and look at this. You know, you know yes. the shit's about to go down. <laughs> That's the one. So they say, we're gonna go demolish that ridiculous house. Uh, yes. <laughs> and when they say that, they mean it. They, they mean it. <laughs> yeah, so they barge in, and Frankie... Is like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, the Frankie family. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, because Frankie's left at this point. Yeah, Frankie's left to do something. So he gives half the money to the family to spend as they please. Uh, yes. Which basically just means buy booze. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and then he pretty takes half of it for some unknown purpose. Yes. Um, what purpose he could have with 150 million that wouldn't be augmented by another 150 million, I don't know. Or yeah, well, at least he, we he don't know some- yet. Yeah, he says it's something that he's been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah. But essentially all the money at this point has been spent. Yeah. So the only thing that is left to do now is to beat the shit out of the Frankie family. Yep. <laughs> and that um, they do. Yeah, that they that definitely do. do. Um, Luffy goes mental. Zoro slices them up. Zoro, uh, Sanji, they get some... They get the party table kick course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, essentially... They find out the money is gone, Uh, so they're off to half the money is gone. They're off to find Frankie now, Uh, because Frankie has most of, or at least a large amount of them. And if they can get back that, because the amount that they had before is a lot, Hmm. but even half of that is still a lot. So they'll probably be able to get something pretty fancy for them. Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, so I believe at this point they go back to the ship and discuss what to do next, don't they? Uh, not quite yet. Not no. Just before that, they entirely destroy the Frankie house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> it, it's rubble. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, now they're off to say goodbye to the Mary. Yes. Because um, uh, so Luffy, they, uh, at this point, he's decided. Yeah. He doesn't want... He doesn't want to keep sailing the Mary and eventually for her to break down and just no longer be 
Ableton content. He wants to leave her in a state that, even if she can't sail, she's still there. She's still... Exactly. She still exists. Um, Unfortunately, Usopp doesn't quite see it that way. No. So, and this is... I mean, the chapter is called The Big Argument. Um, And Usopp, the way he sees it, the Merry is a broken comrade, but still a comrade. Um, And currently, he's a broken comrade, but still a comrade. So they can't really continue with the Merry. Uh, She... It's sad to say, but she'd be holding them back at this point. Um, there's a good chance that in the middle of the sea, she'd just break down and leave them all to drown. Um, and the way Usopp sees it, he's just as much of a liability. And if they can find it in them to leave her behind, then someday they'll have to abandon him. Exactly, um, yeah. And while he understands that, it still hurts him. Um, yeah. Yeah. It hurts him that he's not good enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, during this argument, obviously, it gets very heated. You know, um, both Luffy and Usopp are, are, you know, very much at each other's thro- at each other's throats. And at one point, you know, um, Usopp says, "Well, if you're just gonna abandon crew members, why not throw me off the ship too?" You know. Um, and Luffy's like, well, if that's how you feel, then why don't you just... And then... Oh, uh, one second. Him. Um, or, or Zoro, just... One second. Okay. Well, my webcam flickered when you move. That's crazy. <sighs> just some kids fucking with me. So uh, good. Just those kids. slam in my door. Get off, Get off my lawn, you darn kids. Oh, do we have a lawn on this ship? Uh, well, my side does. Don't know about you. Damn, I've been missing I got, out. I got the side with the oranges. Oh, I didn't even see the oranges. Uh, so where were we? Uh, oof. Yes. Oh, for so fuck's the, sake. Uh, no, I'm going to have to do something about this. Okay, uh, they're okay. throwing stones at my windows now. All right then. Uh, so yes, we were just at the end of the uh, the big argument. Um, the, the two have decided that they they very much disagree on what to do with Mary. And Usopp says, "Right, I, you, Luffy." I challenge you, sir, to a duel. And if if I win, I'm taking the Mary, and I'm going off with her. Yeah, and this... I mean, a duel is a big thing. Um, it, it's definitely, especially between crewmates, that's important. Yeah, yeah. But you don't really find out why... Uh, just how big of a thing it is until later. Okay. Uh, and that's a big emotional crux of this art. Um, so yeah, Luffy, he's had enough of Usopp's shit. Um, Usopp, he storms off. He's going to prepare for their duel. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is this is the setup for some big events later on. Yeah, yeah. And this duel is... It's painful to read. Because, you you know... The, these are two of the first crewmates that we've known. Obviously, Luffy we've known since the beginning. Usopp since very early on. And, you know, to, to see this huge rift between them. And to know that they both believe so strongly... You know, in, in what they believe in. And also to, to know that... No matter how much they seem to hate each other in this moment, they do care for each other a lot, and that's why it tears them up so much. Um, well, the to, thing to is, like this. I, we've mentioned this before, but Luffy and Usopp. So, 
the crew's dynamic, everyone has their own place within the crew. Zorro, yes. he's kind of... He's the rigid rules kind of guy. He's, yeah. He sticks to the rules. He's, he's there to enforce. Sanji, obviously, he's the cut. Um, yep. But he also kind of... He's a bit of a guardian as well. Um, hmm. Where Zoro is definitely strong, and he definitely wants to protect his friends, Sanji, that's his big motivation, is to protect yeah. people. Um, Nami, she's kind of a little sister in the group. Um, in many ways, yeah. Robin hasn't quite earned her own group dynamic yet, but so far she's pretty much the big sister. Or maybe yeah. the mother figure to Chopper. Um, yeah, I can see that. But Luffy and Usopp, they share an important and special dynamic together. Um, so they're the only two that are the same age on the crew. Yeah. So whereas Luffy, he's friends with Zoro, and Zoro... Zoro admires him. Respect, I suppose, is the better yeah. word. Um, Luffy and Usopp, they're best friends. Uh, yeah, they're al almost like brothers. Yeah. Uh, so, them monkeying around is on a whole different level. Um, they kind of get carried away when it comes to being around each other. Yeah, so when yeah. there's this huge blow-up between the two, it carries a lot more emotional weight than if it was, for example, Zoro who threatened to leave the crew. Because Zoro is a very important member, but not exactly as emotionally attached. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, this fight is... It's not as big or as flashy as the pre as some of the previous ones, but it's brutal in its own right because of the emotional yeah. weight behind it. Yeah, and you know, unfortunately for Usopp, it goes exactly how you'd expect. You know, he, he it puts up a good actually. fight, but Usopp, you would expect to immediately lose. I mean, he's that's, that's smart. Awesome. He's definitely a whiz with his slingshot, but he's not in any way strong at this point. No, no. He, um, he very much relies on you know tricks and traps and uh, you know all sorts of things like that, which you know they'll work on Luffy once or twice, but once he gets wise to them, Usopp's got nothing. Yeah. So Usopp, he does a lot better than you might think he would. He definitely. I mean, Luffy doesn't expect a lot of what's thrown at him. Even though Luffy is quite smart in battle. He just... I mean, yeah, Usopp is absolutely giving it his, his all, you know? Mm. And this results in... <laughs> so, one thing that I do want to mention, Usopp, Usopp tries to pull his I have 8,000 henchmen thing, and <laughs> yes. Luffy actually falls for it. Uh, no, sorry, <laughs> Chopper actually falls for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Usopp uses the worst thing? Uh, Usopp Voodoo. Uh, oh, yes. And Usopp Voodoo is essentially him trying to conjure the worst possible ma uh, mental images yep. to, to break you down psychologically. So he's like a razor blade running between each of your teeth. Uh, um, but, yeah. Uh, Things like that, yeah. Eventually, even though Luffy gets blown up, stabbed with caltrops, he gets pepper, like, hot sauce shoved down his throat. Luffy, he was gonna win from the beginning. Um, yeah, yeah. So, Usopp's lying there on the ground. He's real fucked up. And there's an... There's an image of... The Merry, um, a big wave comes and splats against the Merry, and it leaves this. And this, I think, is really fantastic for Oda. 
Because, yeah. I mean, it looks like the ship itself is crying. Yeah. With I mean, all it, the crewmates it, looking somber in the background. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, L- Luffy, you know, after all is done, he says, You idiot, you never could have beaten me. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, uh, I mean, he's right, but could you blame Usopp for trying? Yeah, I mean, Usopp, he has, he also has a stronger connection to the ship than the rest of the crew. Because yeah, it's from his hometown. It's not just from his hometown, it's from a girl that he spent years trying to cheer up as she was essentially yeah. dying. Yes, um, exactly. He went to this girl's house every day, and... Mm-hmm. Eventually, the crew, they saved her, but... I, I, I like to think it was him that kept her strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, he's... Uh, he's yeah, and throughout this whole journey, he's been the one making repairs, even though he's no good at it, you know? Yeah, and he's the one that... Uh, the only one that saw whatever it was that repaired the Merrier uh, on Skype here. Yeah. So yeah, Luffy, he's defeated uh, Usopp, and Luffy, as a final, it's like an act of concession, uh, he, he gives the going merry to Usopp, uh, which I think, it doesn't just make sense, it's, it's very nice. Uh, although, the idea of leaving the two broken crewmates behind to try and, like, for Usopp to try and fix her himself is a little bit... not heartless, but ruthless, like... Yeah, it it is very very much an all-or-nothing move. Um, So Luffy says, we're gonna find a new ship and we're gonna keep sailing forward, and that's really... that's really the, the big thing for Luffy is... He can't let the ship get in the way of the crew's adventure, even if exactly, even if it means that they have to leave someone behind. The adventure has to continue. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the end of that fight. But mm-hmm. Chopper tries to go and tend to his wounds, and Sanji he stops him. And Chopper's like, "What the fuck? I'm a doctor. Just let me go." Um, But Sanji explains, he lost the fight, pitting him now, that would just rub salt into him, that's, it's not right, he needs to leave Usopp to deal with this himself. And Zoro gets one of his many cool speeches here, um, Mm. in this art, he says, so Luffy is crying and he says this is too much and Zoro says that's the burden of being a captain don't doubt yourself if you start becoming unsure how can we who can we have faith and yeah I mean Luffy as much as he's a young man he's I believe 19 um, something like that yeah either 16 or 19 I can't remember which but he's a very young man um, but even so he's strong and he has the admiration and respect of his crew there's a reason that they've all agreed to go on a journey with him and not yeah. someone else because uh, exactly. they all yeah. have had the opportunity to leave in the past uh, any mm-hmm. one of the islands so far they could have gotten on um, but they carry on with him for a reason and it's because each of them in their own way, even if they don't think he's very bright or a very good captain, they still look up to him as a person. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so, anyway, with that all over, <laughs> we move yeah. on to... Um, ah, yes. There is an assassination attempt on Mr. Iceberg uh, while he sleeps. Yeah, um... And this assassination attempt has the entire, the entire town 
but everyone likes Iceberg, so they're not happy with this. Yeah, no. And, uh, and reportedly, there were two assailants, one of whom, uh, Iceberg tells everyone, was Nico Robin, of all people. Yeah. Uh, so he was shot. Um, he told them, apparently he's still in a coma at this point, so nobody knows what's happened. But all they know is that he's been shot and there's a massive panic in the town. Um, so the Straw Hats, they're off to find out what's wrong. Yes. Uh, and potentially to help, because they're the Straw Hats, that's kind of what they... Yeah. Uh, Galila, they're trying their best to work out why this would have happened and who could have done it. Mm-hmm. Um, but before uh, anyone gets a chance to really figure out what's going on, Frankie shows up to assert his dominance over the shipyard. <laughs> yes! Uh, so we finally see Frankie for the first time. Yep. And at first he's wearing this really weird mask, which I don't like at all. This, this yeah, thing looks no. freakish. It's very strange looking. Um. Um, but he takes the mask off and... It's fucking... It's great, because... His design is one of the most ridiculous things in One Piece. It is fantastic. Um, Um, Essentially, what if Ace Ventura, but wearing swimming trunks? (laughs) What if Ace Ventura, but wearing swimming trunks and incredibly buff cyborg? Yes. (laughs) Incredibly buff. Uh, So, yeah. Um, Frankie, he is gonna fuck up the shipyard. Yes. Uh, and he shows that he has the power to do it. Oh, so yeah. he sucks in air into his hands, into a hole on his hand, and essentially uses it as a cannon. Um, yeah. So he's got this crazy, powerful air cannon that manages to knock over one of the cranes. Um, Also with him, uh, he's got two square-headed individuals. (laughs) Yes. Kiwi Um, and Mozu. Yep. uh, Kiwi and Mozu, they're pretty great. You gotta love Kiwi and Mozu. Um, Uh, I I love how, like, you know... for a long time, you only see them from the front, and then in one of the panels, they turn to the side, and their hair is just flat. Yes. Um. So yeah, uh, these are some pretty crazy individuals. Yeah. Um. We also find out that the entire island is currently about to undergo a lockdown. Um. Mm. And the reason for this is that every year there is essentially a massive tidal wave uh, called Aqua Laguna, Laguna, um, which submerges the entire town for a period of around 12 hours. So Aqua Laguna, it's gonna fuck a lot of shit up if people don't board up their houses and stuff. And this is the reason why the city has been slowly sinking. Hmm. Um, so, the Straw Hats, they're rushing to find a place to hide, but then they remember hey, Usopp. Uh, he's, he's got nowhere to hide, but yeah. they're gonna have to just kinda let him get on with it, so... Yeah, he's not part of the crew anymore. At, at the end of the day, it's his problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're here with Frankie, um, uh, Kiwi and Mozu, and there's, he's, he's dancing around, he's... Yep. Oh, I love Frankie. He's, he's such a, a real bombastic goofball. character. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell from the beginning that he... Well, I'm not going to say it just yet, I guess, but he's very uh, suitable for the crew. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, Absolutely. And the entire town thinks that it's him that attacked uh, Iceberg. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so the the townspeople they know he's got some beef with Iceberg. You know, they they know that they, those two don't exactly get along very well. Yeah. Um. But frankly, he's not here for Iceberg. He says he's the the number one hero on the island, and he's here for Luffy. Mm. Um. Everyone starts running because once Frankie gets going, they know that shit's gonna get fucked up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Luffy, he's not afraid. He he's like, hey, I'm Luffy. Bring it on. Uh, but just as they're about to fight, the uh, start their fight, Iceberg wakes up. Yes. Uh, and Iceberg, they're all crowded around him. All the Galilar members. And he says, listen, I've got something to tell you. The person that entered my room last night, I remember who it was. There was two of them. One of them, he had a mask on, he was pretty big. I, there was no way I could have known who it was. But the other, tall black-haired woman with sharp eyes, it has to be Nico Robin. Mm. And why would Robin attack Iceberg? Dun-dun-dun. Hmm. Well, we do know that um, Iceberg has a, uh, a, a, a bounty poster of Robin in his room, so he's obviously very interested in her. Yeah, Iceberg's definitely interested in Robin for some reason. Um, especially since he was able to recognise her at a glance without having met her yet. Yeah, um, yeah, and presumably in the dark as well. Yeah. Um, but... Frankie, he's gonna fight Luffy. Uh, he's throwing poses, mm-hmm. uh, but Luffy, he's got a much better reason to be angry at Frankie than Frankie has to be angry at him. Yes. Uh, so Luffy's definitely gonna do his best to beat him up, but Frankie is very strong and he can breathe fire. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does he have a devil fruit? But then, mm. hang on, he jumps into the water. And uh, he can swim. Yeah, he can swim. So, it turns out Frankie's never eaten a devil fruit. Why would he ever want a devil fruit? No. When he can be a cyborg. Yes. A cyborg Frankie. Yeah, so that's the reason why he has the big metal nose. Uh, mm mm-hmm. Uh, that's why he can breathe fire. That's why his fists can detach on a chain. It's yeah. pretty. It's I, I pretty love cool. his fists, by the way. Just how, like, basically his entire lower arm just becomes the fist. Yeah. Very cool design character. Um. So yeah, they're fighting. Um. While they're fighting, again, we for some reason come back to Iceberg. Yes. So they're talking about hey, um, the Nico Robin. She's with the Straw Hats right now. It must be the Straw Hats that attacked uh, Iceberg. So they put out the alert, and everyone is now aware that apparently the Straw Hats have attacked Iceberg, and. Yeah. Even though it seems that Frankie has some beef with Iceberg, he's definitely not happy that Luffy attacked him. Or at least Luffy's crew. Um, Yeah, yeah. So the four men from the dock, um, we have Rob Lucci, we have... uh, Not Bruno, I can't remember the name of the mustachey guy, but... um, Uh, uh, What was his name? Jabra, was it? No, yeah, Jack. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, they're here to fight Monkey D. Luffy as well. Um, yeah, Luffy now at this point, he, he might have been able to take on Frankie. But Frankie and the foreman of Galilar, that's another oh, no. story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the foreman. And uh, Frankie attacks the four men. Uh, he's like, this is my fight. Hmm. But 
they're not going to have any of it. They're just as angry with Luffy now as he is. Yeah, yeah. So, Frankie distracts them all by taking down a crane. Mm -hmm. Um, Which gives Luffy the opportunity to get away. Yes. And he manages to do that by using his rubbery boy to fling away. But just before they get away, the shipwrights explain that they now suspect the Straw Hats as... The, the Straw Hats are now the main suspects yes. for the crime of attacking Iceberg. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, Luffy, he's like, hey, you don't, you don't know Robin. Don't stop lying about Robin. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they have to get away now. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and also taking down that crane and uh, and fighting the well fighting off the uh, Galila foreman, that pretty much drains Frankie. His his pompadour flops down. He's he's not looking too good right now. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out so Frankie he's he's not feeling so super anymore. No. Uh, so he needs to go off and recharge somehow and. How's he gonna recharge? Oh, he's gonna drink cola, yes. but not, not, not exactly drink it per se. He's gonna put it in his fridge stomach. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so Frankie, he, he he can open up his belly. Uh, he's got a fridge in there, and in the fridge he can put cola. And the cola, yep. the air pressure is what allows him. It's what powers him. Uh, yes. He's essentially <laughs> like a pneumatic cyborg. Yeah. Rather than electron. So, in the bar where Frankie goes to get his cola, he meets Granny Kokoro. Yeah, Blue yeah. Nose Bar. Um, yes, Kokoro's there. Uh, and, again, just. I mean, there's so many good screenshots that you can get with Frankie. Um. Uh, but here's, here's a really cool one of him. <laughs> yes, I love really. that panel. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But there is Granny Kokoro. Mm. And what do you know? Kokoro doesn't just have history with Iceberg. She has history with Frankie. Yeah. Uh, so, Frankie and Kokoro, they're talking, and they're like, well... Basically, Aqualudagoon is coming. Uh, yes. So, that's why Granny Kokoro's here. Uh, yeah. She can't really stay on that little floating uh, lighthouse with that. No. But, now it turns out Granny doesn't really believe that the Straw Hats shot uh Iceberg. And the reason for that is, for some reason, the world government is always after him. Uh, why is the world government left uh, after Iceberg? And could, so if it was the government, was it Corgi, the guy that was after him about the pirates? No. Why would... It, it's always gonna be left to CP9 to do mm. stuff like that. And we've heard this before. Uh, the masky boy that came up to Robin, he said he was yes. with CP9. Uh, so it turns out CP9 is basically the world government's special ops unit. Yeah, they're, they're I mean, like if the you think like ops. MI7. Um, even deeper than MI7, really, because... Well, so, there's CP1 through 8, and CP stands for Cypherpod. Yes. So, CP1 through 8, they're essentially the intelligence branch of the government. Yeah. But then you have CP9, which nobody's really supposed to know about. It's kind of an urban myth to most people. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of those things where it, it's not on any records. Officially, it doesn't exist. But, yeah, they're, they're the ones who apparently are really after Iceberg. Yeah, yeah. So, we now cut... There's a uh, there's a quick cut to the back streets of Water 7, uh, where Robin is talking to two people. Um, yes. Yeah. And they say, about what had to be done yesterday, you did well. Uh, of course, you've also become wanted by the entire town. But it's only temporary. The important thing is tonight. Um, yes. So apparently their plan is to get into Iceberg's mansion again. Um, and if things go wrong, they can feel free to erase all evidence. Um, mm. So they're looking for something, and they say someone named Tom had it originally. And among Tom's followers, Iceberg is the only one still living. Yes. Uh, so, apparently, according to CP9, this is a mission for justice. Uh, they're going to get that, some... That name, Tom, uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, diligent readers will recognise that the Puffing Tom, the train, uh, also shares a very similar name, so there might be a connection mm. there. Yeah. So, okay, we're now back with the Straw Hats, and... Yes. They've and, just uh, escaped I, I, from. I've got a note for this one. Um, um, basically, what this amounts to is, is Robin based or cringe? <laughs> That's what they're deciding. Yes. Um, so, they're trying to... They're fighting between themselves over whether Robin is innocent. Yes. And... Essentially... Luffy comes to the decision that he doesn't care either way. He's got to find out first. Yes. And exactly. also find out why. If she did it, why she... Yeah, yeah. But now everything's about... Everything's getting locked down. The flood's mm. coming real soon. Yep. Um, the sea train is apparently the only thing that's able to get through Aqua Lagoon. Uh, so, Zoro, he doesn't know about all this. <laughs> he's lost again, in typical Zoro fashion. Yep. But he's reading in the paper and he finds out that they're wanted for it. Um, so he's he's at least got that figured out. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Going Merry uh, is captured by some people from Water Cell, uh and taken to a dockyard. Uh, so now the the Going Merry is safe, yes. um, which is pretty that's good. Uh, but Sanji, um, he's like, well. There's only one way to get off the island during this, and it's apparently the sea train. So, if Robin's gonna make some kind of escape, the place that she's probably gonna go is to the sea train. So that's where him and Chopper are headed. And there's a bit, there's a quite a sad panel here of Chopper wondering if he made her angry at the bookstore and asked why she's doing all this. Um. Because you've got to remember, Chopper's still a child. Yeah. Chopper is, he's, I believe, 13. 12 or 13. Um, which, in reindeer years, pretty long. But because he's eaten the human human fruit, his aging is slowed down dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Son uh, Sanji and Chopper, they're off to the train station. But hang mm -hmm. on, they see Robin. Uh, she's across on the other side of the water. Yes. And they're like, "Hey, where have you been? Everyone's looking for you." Um. But she says, 
don't come for me, essentially. Stay there. Mm. I won't be coming back. Uh, this is where we part ways. Mm-hmm. Um, she also admits to the crime. She says, there are no yeah. lies about me in that article. I definitely was the one who entered the mayor's mansion with. Mm, interesting. There's a darkness in me that you and the crew do not know. A darkness that will someday destroy you. And this comes back to Aokiji, where she... where. Aokiji tells them that every single organisation that Nico Robin has been involved with has always been destroyed, but yes. she's always the final survivor. Um, so Sanji, Chopper, they're finding it hard to accept this. Mm-hmm. Um, but she says... After today, we'll never meet again. Please give my message to the others. I didn't deserve it, but thank you for the kindness you've shown me, Tom. Goodbye. Yes. Um, Sanji tries to chase her, but she's gone. And then, uh, I, I love this this little you know moment after you know when they realise she's gone, and Chopper's just like, Sanji, what are we gonna do now? And Sanji just replies, Listen, Chopper. Real men can forgive the lies of women. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I, I just love that even now, you know, he, he refuses to believe that there's anything bad about her. Yeah, um... It's... It's definitely... It, like we've said before, Sanji has a weakness for women. Hmm. He definitely refuses to see them as the bad guy in any situation. Yeah, yeah. Which will certainly come back to bite him later in the arc. Yeah. Um, So, they find the rest of them. Uh, So they're hiding under a bridge with Luffy (laughs) clinging underneath. Uh, They just see Chopper's head pop down and Luffy's like, ah! Yeah. Um... (laughs) But apparently Chopper found them by scent. Because uh, he's a reindeer. He's, yeah, he's got a he, good he old sniffer. Um, so they pass on this information. And mm-hmm. Luffy's... <clears throat> Luffy... He seems angry. But not necessarily at Robin. Uh, more just shocked at the news. Yeah, yeah. Zoro... He is always the stoic in every mm-hmm. situation. So, again, coming back to what you said, they're now trying to work out if she's based or cringe. Is she an enemy or a friend? Exactly. Um, so. Again, I'm just okay. following the manga. Feel free, feel free to interview. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so while all this is happening, uh, Iceberg is, you know, still recovering in bed, and um, and the the uh, head foreman of Galila are stationed outside his his bedroom door. You know, they're, they're guarding him from any potential intruders um, because they figure, you know, there was an assassination attempt last night. We should probably, you know, keep this guy safe. Um, but. One by one, they you know they get called off to you know check out suspicious things, and they don't come back. We find out that uh, you know the things they're going to investigate are you know members of CP9 who are essentially infiltrating Iceberg Adventure, um, and yeah, they're they're proving a lot tougher than uh, they expected. Yeah, um, the. Straw Hats, um... So, uh, my head has gone blank. Okay. <laughs> I don't, that's, right, uh, that's, that's why I took notes. Uh, that's why I took notes. <laughs> um, my my anyway. brain has disappeared. Yes. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're all um, you know, pulled off in, in all these different directions. Uh, meanwhile, um, Luffy and Nami are like, okay, well, you know, at, at the very least, we should go see Iceberg and, you know, ask him about what's going on. 
Um, maybe we can get some information from him. But of course, the mansion is so heavily guarded, how are we going to get in? Oh, it's okay, Luffy can just spring his way over there uh, without thinking. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and this doesn't go well for Luffy, if I remember right. This yeah, no, he, he... he's not one for stealth. No. Um, so, they're about to essentially invade the mansion to talk to Iceberg themselves. Yes. Um, and they're going to wait till night time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and while they're waiting, we get this uh, we get this cool panel of all the Galila foremen uh, guarding the door to uh, yeah yeah on the chairs yeah That's a good panel. Um, but yeah, like I say, they uh, they they get uh, you know pulled away one by one, and uh, uh, eventually I think Paulie is the is the last one uh, guarding yes. the room. Um, but even he, um, you know, has to investigate a disturbance in the mansion. Um, and yeah, he, he is attacked by a couple members of CP9 who, you know, uh, identify themselves as members of CP9. Um, and they seem to be very interested in a particular item that is in this mansion uh, that uh, I, I believe Paulie knows where it is, but he doesn't know what it is. Uh... Yeah. Um, so, this item that they're after is... It's supposedly in the hands of Iceberg. Um, yes. And Iceberg has been hiding it for a long time now from the government. They've repeatedly sent people out to try and convince him to give it to them. And this is kind of yes. like the final straw. Um, this is where... The government's gone, okay, we're done playing nice. We're gonna take it whether you like it or not. So, yes. I mean, Iceberg, he's the leader of, not a country, but definitely a very powerful city. Yeah, uh, yeah. So for the government to go this far, this has to be something very important. Definitely, yeah. <clears throat> so we get this scene of Iceberg, he asks Califer to bring in Paulie. Mm-hmm. And he tells Paulie, uh, there's something I need to talk to you about. Uh, you're the only one I can ask. Uh, there is, in his uh, office, a safe. Um, Paulie yeah. needs to go out into that safe and get whatever's in it and guard That's it with that. his life. Mm. So, yeah... Iceberg, he's hoping that, essentially, CP9, if they come after him, they're not going to find whatever it is. Exactly, yeah. This ends up being a bit of an even deeper plan than mm. we see at first. Because Iceberg, he might be a bit of a lazy guy, but he's smart enough to run an entire city. Um, yeah. And he's smart enough to have outsmarted the government all this time. Yeah. So, it might seem obvious for him to have called Paul in at this last moment, given this to him, but there's a reason that it's obvious. Yeah. So we get this panel of Robin in, like, a mask and a panda man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. they're, they're, they blow up the side of the mansion. Um, yes. And that's kind of the signal for them to start. Maybe. And the Straw Hats, they see this and they're like, well, shit, something's happening. We've got to move now. Yeah. Um, so Robin and this guy... Um, they're fighting the Galila company workers. Not the foreman yet, just the workers. Mm. But one of the people uses a whip and manages to whip themselves all the way up to a, up to the roof. Mm. Um, and then they try to attack her, but she flies away. Yeah, yeah. 
Or seemingly flies, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, while this commotion is happening, uh, the straw has decided to make their move, and Frankie is taking out the object that he's been asked to look after. And there's some more masked people behind him. Uh, and they're like, well, so that's where Iceberg was keeping it. Uh, hand it over. Um, yes. So yeah, everything's all coming to a head now. And we get yeah. chapter 343, Cipher Pole Number. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, the Panda Man and Robin, they uh, they enter Cy- uh, I was about to call him Cyborg, uh, Iceberg's room. And they do so in a very unorthodox manner. So, Panda Man, you know, seemingly has the ability to go through walls somehow. Like yeah. he turns them into a door of some kind. Yeah, and that's that's quite an interesting ability. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it, it doesn't seem useful at first, or at least not for fighting. No. But definitely for a secret agent, you could see how oh, that yeah. Yeah, would be absolutely. useful. Um, and, uh, yeah, so so they they confront Iceberg and you know ask him about this you know this item they're looking for, which uh, I don't, I forget if we find out here, but we find out pretty soon. It, it's a blueprint for uh, something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so they ask him you know about it, and this is where we finally get the reveal of the identities of these people in CP nine. Hmm. And this reveal. Uh, it's a bit. Yes. Yeah. So, first of all, um, uh, yes, indeed, Nico Robin is Nico Robin. There's uh, no two ways about that. Uh, then the, the the man with the panda mask, who you know made the door in the wall, that turns out to be Bluno of all people from the bar. Yeah. Um, so, so far, we have Bluno and four others, I believe, yeah. who I are. Think so. Of these mask, masked individuals. Yeah. Um, and hang on. If Blue know it, it, this is someone who's part of the city. This this is a maybe not a respected individual, but definitely a well established individual yeah, in yeah. the city. He's got his own bar. He owns a business. He uh, he has friends mm-hmm. in the city. Uh, th- this must have been a pretty deep operation. Mm, um, indeed. And while this is happening, um, the Panda Man is explaining to Iceberg why they're coming after it. Yes. Uh, so he says, for generations they've been passed down from shipwright to shipwright, handed down from master to apprentice. Uh, the man you chose was Paulie, the foreman of Doc. Uh, and Iceberg's astounded, kind of, that they know already that he's chosen Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Iceberg, it turns out, has laid a kind of trap for them in mm. that the blueprints that Paulie has got aren't the real blueprints. Yeah, no, um, they turn out to be fakes. Yeah, the blueprints that Paulie has were just a way to throw them off the scent. Yeah. yeah. And in a way it's worked, because not only has it... I mean, it, it makes seem redundant. Why would you uh, have this in the first place mm-hmm. if you... Because we later find out that Iceberg, he doesn't have the blueprints. He doesn't no. have many. No, so he hasn't why, had them for quite a while. Why have these fake blueprints then to... If it doesn't really serve any purpose, but... The purpose that they've served is essentially... By acting like he's still guarding this huge secret for all these years, he's allowed the real blueprints to slip away from them. Um, yes, exactly. Well, while, the, yeah, while the government's busy investigating him, 
the real blueprints were off somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so they're about to kill Iceberg. Um, yes. Because they find out. Okay, so the Straw Hats, they're off to... We'll do this bit first, I guess, because it does come in. Okay. Um, so the Straw Hats, they're breaking into the uh, mansion. Mm-hmm. And they get to the doorway. And we see... They see the bodies of... Uh, sorry. Um, one of the Galilar workers sees the bodies of Kaku... Um, and Rob Lucci outside the door yes uh, with the panda man sat there just like guarding the door alone mm-hmm. so the straw hats um, they arrive while uh, this guy's getting blown the fuck out yep and they attack him. Luffy attacks the guys that are fighting Paul. Um, and the guy, one of the guys that's fighting Paulie, he locks down Luffy to the floor with yes. like cuffs. Um, Zoro, I can't remember. Oh, God, this is where I lose the plot. <laughs> um, Okay, let me... Time to go back to the wiki. Uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't write down the exact order of uh, events here. Um, I just got like, y- yeah, we find out who they all are. Okay, so... Kaku, he... Uh, checks Iceberg's pulse. Um, oh shit, we've already revealed it. Damn uh, well, I've already revealed it by accident. <laughs> Kaku is okay. one of the CP9 people. <laughs> yeah, Kaku, Luchi, uh, Khalifa is CP9, yep. as well as Bluno and... Uh, I think there was one other? I can't remember. Uh, mm, no, I think no that there was wasn't. One. Yeah, that was... So, yeah. Um, and they're pretty strong. Uh, very, yes. very strong, in fact. And yeah. all without yeah. devil fruits. So mm, they indeed. use the Roku Shinki, uh, the yes. six powers. Yes. And so these powers include the ability to kick their legs so str- uh, so fast that they can create like an air blade. Yep, the Tempest uh, Kick. Yeah. They can kick so hard against the air that it essentially lets them double jump forever. Yeah, um, that's the, uh, the moonwalk. Sc- yeah, moonwalk, yeah, sorry. Uh, or gepo. Um, they can harden their bodies um, yep. to essentially give themselves armor. Yep, the iron body technique. Yeah, but they have to be standing still to do this. Yeah, yeah. They can use something that they call finger pistol, which is kind of... Essentially, they harden just their finger, and they can just poke you real hard. Yeah, um, yeah, real hard, real fast. Yeah, so that'll pierce your flesh. Mm-hmm. The other two, I can't remember right. Uh, so one of them I can definitely remember is the shave technique, where they shave, essentially yes. move faster than you can see. Uh, not quite. Um, no? So, Shave, uh, it's also known as the Paper Art. Um, oh wait, no, yeah, sorry, these are the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these are the last two. Yeah, so Shave, yeah, they move faster than you can see. And yeah. then the Paper Art, where they sort of flatten themselves out and let the wind just push them out of the way of your punch. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, which is interesting, for sure, but... Yeah, basically the idea is that they've all trained, trained, been brutally trained since they were children to be living weapons. Yes, so they've got And this means that they have 
ridiculous control over their bodies, a bit like the Pillarmen from JoJo's. Yeah, kind of. yeah, yeah. So they're yeah, they're extremely fast, tough, strong, ne- you know, near invulnerable. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, Kaku he checks Iceberg's pulse. Um, Luchi, and it turns out Luchi doesn't actually have to speak through his pigeon. That's just part of his deep cover, I guess. Was yeah. to pretend that he was a mute. <laughs> um, I guess. Uh, but no, in reality, he does have a voice, and I haven't heard his voice because I haven't been watching the anime. But I, um, I imagine it's a, a deep, sultry tone. Ah, uh, it's pretty badass, yeah. Um, okay. Not very deep. Uh, pretty normal, but okay. Yeah, he's he's a badass. Um, so they have this theory. Um. And their theory is that it turns out a long time ago there was a guy called Tom. Yes, and Tom the ship had Tom. Yeah, and Tom he had two apprentices. Uh, their his apprentices were Iceberg and someone mm-hmm. called Cutty Flam. Yes, um, and Cutty Flam he was supposed to have died. He got ran over by the sea train. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they've got this theory, hey, this Cuddy Flam guy, he's, he's a lot like Frankie, mm. strangely enough. Yes. And when he hears that, Iceberg, his pulse, it, it gets faster and loochy. He's like, yeah, I thought so. Uh, so it turns out this whole time, Frankie has been the one that's had the blueprints that they're looking for. Yes. And Frankie and... Uh, iceberg. They go way, way back. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Uh, CP9. They're about to go after Frankie, but Luffy, Paulie, Zoro, Chopper, and Nami. They break in, and yeah. Paulie. He goes after Luchi. Uh, Luchi is. He's well ahead of Paulie. He, there's nothing Paulie can really do, even with his cool ass ropes. Um, yeah, yeah. Which I I love. I love that Frankie's uh, that Paulie's uh, weapon is ropes. Yeah, yeah. I, I also love how this is a, a callback to you know the first time we get introduced to Paulie and Lucci, in the you know once again it is uh, you know Paulie essentially being beaten down by Lucci. Yeah. Uh, so, CP9, they set off a firebomb. Um, so that's going to destroy the mansion and burn down all the evidence that they were ever there. But before yes. they go, uh, Luchi, he wants to prove to them that even without the six powers, there's no way that they could have beaten him. Even if they managed to overpower him mm-hmm. with the six power. He has the Neko Neko no Mi, the cat's cat fruit, yep. model leopard. Yes. Uh, and he literally and figuratively flexes on them. <laughs> yes, 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 he does. Uh, so Luffy and Zoro, they attack him, and he literally throws them across the island. Yes. <laughs> um, Nami gets chucked upside, Chopper gets buried under some rubble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, to, to put into scale like the distances involved here and how far he throws them, the mansion is at the dead centre of the island. He throws them all the way to the outskirts. Yeah, so he's a very strong guy. And yeah. Part of the reason for this, obviously he's had all this training, hmm. but even among Zoan devil fruits, so we have the three categories of devil fruits, the three main categories... Yeah. Um, but within Zoan, there are two types, uh, two subtypes. Hmm. So you have predator and herbivore, uh, carnivore and herbiv- herbivore, yeah, yeah, essentially. Cool. And the herbivore ones, they tend to be very, very tanky. Um, hmm. But the carnivore ones, they're all about power. They're all about doing damage yeah. so they'll often have claws and fangs and stuff like that 
but they also come with a significant boost to your muscle mass as well. Yes. So uh, as we can quite clearly see with Lucy. <laughs> yeah, he grows like two feet and his biceps get about five times wider, but uh, he becomes an inverted pyramid of a man. <laughs> he really does. He becomes a baby, uh, not baby, uh, a dairily triangle of a man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, for people who don't know what that is, I'm putting up the screen. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, CP9, they're off, and the Frankie family uh, are running around screaming because uh, they want to bring Luffy in. They want to use Usopp as bait because they've captured the ship and they have mm. Usopp. Um, yep. So they want to use him and the ship as bait to get Luffy. So they're yes. running around town screaming that they've got him and that they need to go to the workplace under the bridge if he yes. ever wants to see them again. Uh, Lucci, he beats them up, he finds out exactly where they're talking about and they're off now to find Frankie. Yes. Uh, um, meanwhile, Frankie, it turns out Frankie's a pretty cool dude. So... Yeah. Usopp's explained to him now that essentially he's no longer part of the crew. Um, exactly. Yeah. And Frankie, he's crying. The square. They're specifically called the Square Sisters, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the Square Sisters, they're crying because uh, it's just such a heart wrenching story. Yeah. And Frankie, he's letting Usopp fix the ship. He's like, well, what are you going to do once you fixed it? And Usopp. He's gonna, he's gonna do a little bit of adventuring, and then he's gonna go back home. Yeah, he he, he says, you know, maybe the Mary won't make it all the way around the Grand Line, but it'll it'll have made it to the Grand Line and back again, and that's more than most ships can say. Yeah, uh, but Frankie, he's not having any of that, because he now he quite likes Usopp. Uh, he sees Usopp as a real manly guy. Yeah. Um, and he he realizes that the ship is not going to even reach the next island. Never yeah, mind no. the East Blue. Um, yeah, he says that that what that Galila guy said to you, not a word of a lie. That ship is not sailing. Yeah. So Usopp is like, what do you know? Uh, and Frankie he chucks Usopp into the water. And Usopp, he sees that there's a massive crack in the stern. There's no yes. way that the Mary's going. And Usopp, even though he now knows that, he doesn't care. He's he gets to the surface and he continues yep. fixing. Yeah, and he's like, to give up on it. yeah, he's like, look, I already knew in my heart that this was true. Mm -hmm. I mean. Those shipwright guys, they know a lot more than me. Um, this ship's been through a lot, of course it's damaged. Yeah. Um, he just didn't want to accept it. Exactly. And more than that, he didn't want to give up on what he saw as a crewmate. Um, yeah. Even if they were broken, he's still going to fight till the last breath to save them. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the way he puts it to Frankie is... If you if your best friend was on his deathbed, would you just leave him there and say there's nothing that can be done? Yeah. So Usopp tells Frankie uh, about a uh, figure, the the, the uh, creature that he saw fixing the ship. Yes. On Skype. And, uh, and Frankie recognizes this description. Yeah. He says, so Frank. Uh, he says, by, by any chance, you know, what was it, um, uh, wielding, you know, what was it, uh, did it have a, a wooden hammer and all that? And Usopp says, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Raggy's like, I think what you just saw was the Klabouter Man. Yeah, uh, so we get this weird German word here. Uh, uh, yes. But I, essentially. I didn't to look up what it means, but. So, Klabouter Man. They're essentially kind of like fairies. Um, yeah. So 
it, it, it lives on a ship, and if the crew takes good care of the ship and each other, it, it grows to like them, and it sort of becomes the spirit of the ship. Yes. Um, so, essentially, what was happening there was that the Merry took on a physical incarnation to fix itself, to yes. help them get just a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is... That's pretty touching. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to Usopp, this is like... This is even more reason not to let the Merry down. Yeah, yeah. But then... Uh, the... CP9, they barge in, and they mm-hmm. knock out the Square Sisters, and yep. Frankie knows them as the shipwrights, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. Um, but they tell him, hey, we know who you are, we've just killed the iceberg. Yes. Uh, and they punch him through a wall, and we see a workshop. The workshop for a company that a company ages ago called Tom's Workers. Yes. And CP9, they're they're looking around for for, for the blueprints of what we find out are uh, is Pluton. Yeah. Uh, the ship that Crocodile was after. Mm. Um. So now we know why the government was after this. Yeah. Um, and now we get into the past, Frankie's past, the yes. the history Back between time. <laughs> yeah, the history between him, uh, Iceberg, Kokoro, uh, and a guy called Tom. Yes. Uh, uh, also, quick, quickly before we get into this, uh, I love how on at least the the Viz Media printings of these, you can tell when you're getting go- when you're going to get into a big section of backstory, because uh, of course all the um, flashbacks they have black borders around the um, uh, around the the panels, and that bleeds over onto the edge of the pages. So on the edge of the books, you can just see these big sections of black, and you're just like, ah, yes, now it's backstory time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, this is, yet again, one of Oda's famous flashbacks where yes. it it brings a lot of the emotional weight to the story. Um, Definitely. So, 22 years ago, Frankie, he's on a ship that he's built himself, and he tries to attack a sea king. Um, and fails miserably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he he gets back to shore. Iceberg. He's having a go at him. He's like, "Why do you keep making warships? This is this is kind of stupid." Yeah. And and Frankie's like, "Someday I'm gonna make a warship that's good enough to kill a Neptunian, and then you'll see." Yeah. So there's a, a fish man here with them. The fishman, he's a puffer fish fishman, apparently. Uh, not not in the one that I read. Um, it, at least how Viz translated it. They they call him a long-horned cowfish. Uh, well, according to the wiki, he's a puffer fish fishman. Um, okay, that, that could be a weird translation thing. So, this guy, he's Tom. And yes. he picks up a ship... An entire ship yep. throws it into the air and chucks the masts into it. Yes. <laughs> uh, and that's how he finishes the ship. So this is where we're like, okay, this guy, this guy is pretty cool. Yeah, he um, knows what he's doing. So it turns out Tom, Iceberg and Frankie, they're all part of a shipbuilding company called Tom's Workers. Yes. And Tom's Workers, well... Tom is in a bit of trouble with the government. Mm. Uh, Tom yes. created the ship of Goldie Roger. Yes, and uh, normally, you see, on, on Water 7 or any island, generally it's accepted that if you, you know, uh, 
unknowingly or unwillingly help pirates, like, you know, if you make a ship for them, it's no big deal. But the Pirate King's an exception. If you have helped the Pirate King in any way in your entire life, you are a criminal and you will probably be sentenced to death. Yeah. Um, so, the government, they're coming after him. There's a trial ship. Or a judge yes, ship. the judicial ship. Yeah. And Tom, he's going to be put on trial. Um, mm-hmm. But he's fine with this. He's proud that yes. he helped the pirate king because his whole motto uh, and he says this I don't remember if he says it exactly like this in the anime uh, sorry in the manga because essentially what he says is you should do everything with a dog um, <laughs> okay it's slightly different uh, yeah in, in, in the Viz translation they well okay so it's kind of weird at first for, for most of it they say um, you know uh, you should do everything with a boom. Uh, but then, yeah. when it cuts back to the present and somebody quotes him, they say, with a bang, instead. So, somewhere along the line, somebody didn't get the memo on that. Yeah, so the reason they say this is because it's supposed to be a reference to how, in a lot of anime... Uh, sorry, in manga, obviously you can't give audio cues... Yes. <laughs> uh, in a visual format. So what you have to do is kind of use onomatopoeia. Uh, so if you've got like an explosion, you might put boom, but when, rather than the romanized version, that might be dong, like. Yes. So the idea, essentially he's saying you should do things with gusto. Yeah, basically. Everything, you should put your all into it. Um, uh, and that's what Tom uh, his philosophy is. Yeah, that's, that's what he's all about. So, he's about to be sentenced to death. But then he says, Hey guys, wouldn't it be cool if train? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the judge is like, Hey, it would be cool if train. Okay, you can live. Yeah, um, hell yeah. Build a train, I'll give you ten years. Yeah. So, the Puffing Tom is... Named for its creator, Tom. Yes. Um, so they work for these ten years, and they manage to get the puffing Tom working. And oh, yep. wow, what a marvel! It's it's a it's a cool train. Yeah, the, the first uh, of its kinds, the the only train in the world to run on water. Incredible. Yeah. Um, and it single-handedly revitalizes Water Seven as a city, which is why yeah. it was. Uh, and not just Water 7, the reason that this was so important to the world government that they would let someone who is, in their eyes, a criminal who aided the Pirate King, mm. the reason they'd let him live in return for creating this is because the sea train doesn't just go to the islands surrounding Water 7. It connects the world government's most important bases as well. Yes. So now you don't have to take a dangerous, like, five month journey by ship to get anywhere. Now you can hop on a train and be there in a couple of days. And that is. Yeah. I mean, the Industrial Revolution is perfect proof of why that is important. Yeah, exactly. The, the speed at which you can, can travel is a massive advantage in. Not just economies, but also in terms of making sure that you can control a population. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Um, and specifically, uh, you know, the, the place that the judge is most interested in getting connected up to this network is a place called Eni's Lobby. Yeah. Um, so Eni's Lobby is essentially the. It's the world government's courthouse island. Yeah. Um, so, Tom, he's pardoned now for give, for creating the sea train. So all that's left is to make that official. Uh, yes, so exactly. They're going to have a retrial. Tom's going to present the Puffing Tom as his penance to society. Yes. And everyone's going to be happy. But then one of the biggest... 
No, do you know what? The biggest bastard in all of One Piece. Here uh, comes Spandom. Spandom Span is a cunt. Uh, it is in safe a word, to say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's a fucking slimy little bastard, and he wants the blueprints to uh, Pluton. Because yes. it turns out that the government has known that the blueprints to Pluton were passed down in Water 7 for a long time now. They've just never been able to properly track them down. Yeah, exactly. But finally, they've kind of tracked them to Tom. Yeah. Uh, so Spandam, he's been sent by the government to ask Tom, hey, give us these plans. Yeah, but Spandam, Spandam uh, at the time working for CP5. Yeah. So Spandam, being the dick that he is, isn't going to take no for an answer. He hasn't really had permission to do any of this, but he comes up with this plan. Okay, Tom isn't going to give us the plans. So... I know, I'll frame him. Uh, and once he's in prison, then we can take our time doing whatever we like to him. And hopefully get the plans there. Yes. Um, so Spandam's idea is he takes all of Frankie, because Frankie, his dream was to create a ship, a battleship strong enough to single-handedly take down a seat. Yes. So he's created like 20 of these ships. And they're decked uh, to the teeth. There's 35 of them, actually. Right. So they're decked to the teeth with weapons. Yes. Um, and um, something that Iceberg it doesn't approve of is that Frankie just leaves them lying around. Yeah, because the way Iceberg sees it, these weapons, they could be used to hurt someone, and that's definitely true. Um, yes. that, that comes back to bite Frankie. Or at this yes. point, Cutty Fly. Hmm. Although they so, still call him Frankie, that's just a, like a nickname. Yeah, and the reason for that, um, so he calls himself Frankie because he hates the name Cutty Fly. As you would. Um, and it's not because it's a terrible name. Uh, the reason is that Frankie's parents were actually pirates. Oh, I see. And. They abandoned him at Water 7 because essentially he was getting in the way of their adventure. Right. So he hates his family. Um, he hates pirates. He hates his own name because it associates him with them. Right. So Tom, he takes them in. Um, uh, he takes him in. And this is how they kind of became a bit of a ramshackle family of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. It also includes Kokoro, I think we have got to mention. Yeah, um, so Kokoro seems to be in some sort of relationship with Tom. And that is kind of weird uh, in the context of what we currently know. Um, yeah. So... Uh, why, why, would Co why would Kokoro be with Tom? He's, he's a big old floppy fishman. Hmm. But uh, we'll get to that later. I, I love Kokoro's design in, during this flashback, by the way, because she's still got her old lady face, but then a completely different body. Yeah, and the idea being that she's kind of gotten really fat with years of alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> But your head doesn't get fat, so she she always had a massive head. It's just that now it's in proportion with the rest of her body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, Spandam's plan is to take all these battleships that he's made, the Battle Frankies. Yes. Um, and he's gonna attack the judicial ship, mm -hmm. uh, and it's gonna look like hey. Tom's on trial today. These are Frankie's ships. It must have been Frankie what did it. Yeah. Um, Tom... So, this happens. Tom finds out uh, because Spandam comes to arrest Frankie. Yes. Uh, uh, also, so, Tom gets impaled by one of, um, one of the harpoons. Yes. Um... Which is quite the panel. Yeah. Yeah. 
and little Frankie rushes over to him, he's like, oh my god, that came out of one of my ships. I designed this harpoon, it won't come out. Yeah. So, Frankie, Tom saves Frankie here. Frankie's yes. about to be captured, and I mean, if he's c convicted of attacking a judicial ship, that's pretty much a death sentence. Yeah. Um, but Tom says, hey, wait a second, we've not done the trial yet. Uh, I have a pardon. Uh, you owe me a pardon, but okay. I don't care if uh, you want to execute me for helping out uh, Roger, Coldy Roger. Yeah. Use that pardon for Frankie instead. Yeah. Well, um, uh, specifically, he says, "I take responsibility for what happened today, and pardon me for that." Yeah. So. Essentially, he uses it as a bit of a get out of jail free card, which basically, I mean, yeah, clever thing, clever thinking. Um, I I'm surprised it works, to be honest. But well, I mean, fortunately, the judge isn't the, as big of a bastard as Spandam is. No, no, um, that's true. The the judge does, yeah, you know, he, he seems to have people's best interests at heart. Yeah. So, Tom, he. He's given the uh, blueprints to Iceberg at this point. Um, continuing the tradition of uh, passing it down from master to apprentice. Yeah, yeah. But Tom's about to be taken away on the Puffing Tom, the very train that he created, to the Judicial Island. Yes. Um, to Ennis lobby, and Frankie, he's he's not happy with this. No, sir. So Frankie and the Frog Yokozuna. Uh, yes. Well, they well go... but before that, actually, Frankie decks Spandam in the nose. Oh yeah, Frankie. I mean, Spandam now has an iron nose because yes. Frankie hit him so hard. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, I love that was a satisfying moment. Yes. But yeah, Frankie is now... He tries to tackle the train. Yes. Uh, which, I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen there. But yeah. he gets wrecked. But surprisingly, he lives. And he washes up on a junk island. Yeah. Um, the, uh, essentially, the junkyard where all the, sh the torn apart ships from Water 7 have washed yes. up. And he rebuilds I mean, he's himself. alive at this point. Like, you know, he, he is bleeding out all over the place, but still alive. Yeah, and he somehow rebuilds himself. Uh, so he cobbles together a new cyborg version of himself from scrap. Yes. But it turns out only on the front, <laughs> because he <laughs> yeah. couldn't perform surgery on his own back, obviously. Yeah, well, you can't reach your own back that well. <laughs> yeah, so... He He's he's a front cyborg. The rest yes. of him is normal. Um, <laughs> oh, but you know, I, I, so I love that moment where he is. You know, he, he's trying to stop the train. Right, he, he jumps up in front of it and tries to stop it. And it's very important that Yokozuna is there as well, because you know, this, as we find out, is why Yokozuna has himself been trying to tackle the train day after day for all these years. Because in his mind, you know, that that's the train that took Tom away, and he wants revenge for that. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, Frankie turns back up at, Tom, uh, at Iceberg's doorstep years later. Yes. He's now grown up, and yeah. essentially he's thought dead. And so Iceberg, he decides... Well, I'm a really high-profile individual. I'm well known to have been connected to Tom. And Tom is known by the government to have been the one to have had Pluton's blueprints. Yes. But you're dead, officially. Hmm. So, given you worked with Tom as well, and, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you are sorry for what you did with creating the Battle Frankies, because... Frankie actually promises himself never to build another ship. 
Yes. yes. Which is why, of course, then, you know, in the present day, he's become a ship dismantler. You know, he, he doesn't want that kind of thing to ever happen again. He will not build another weapon. Yeah. So, basically, Frankie now has the blueprints because uh, Iceberg sees it as safer for him to have them, but yeah. CP9... Eventually, they find out that Frankie has it, and now we cut back to the present day. Yes. Um, Frankie and Usopp, CP9 have got them. Uh, Frankie's told that their commander wants to talk with him, which, it turns out, is the bastard himself, Spander. Oh, so he's boy. gone from <laughs> CP9 to now yep. the lead... Uh, so. He's gone from CP5 to now the leader of CP9. Yes. And he wears a leather mask to cover the massive fucking damage that Frankie did to him. <laughs> yes. And he has not forgotten that. Oh, no. No. So, CP9, they arrest Usopp. They arrest Frankie. Uh, mm-hmm. And Kaku realises that the ship's still there. Yes. And while Usopp's chained down, he decides to prove a point to Usopp. He releases the ship into Aqua Lagoon. Yes. And there is a massive fall from the docks, because essentially the ships are supposed to be low into... Yeah. They're not supposed to just be released down. Hmm. Um, so... The Merry takes a massive fall and lands straight slap bang into Aqua, Aqua Lagoon. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty. That's pretty sad. Uh, yeah, Usopp is understandably torn up by this. Yeah. So now we're back at Galila. Uh, Iceberg. Mm-hmm. He realizes the Straw Hats ha- aren't actually the ones that were out to get him because Chopper saved him. Yes. Uh, yeah, Chopper saved him and Paulie. Uh, from the burning building. So, Nami, she wakes up. Iceberg talks to the carpenters, asks that mm-hmm. he, they leave him alone with the straw hats. Iceberg tells them that Robin said CP9 could call for... Uh, CP9... So the reason that Robin is going along with what CP9 is doing is that they have this power at their hands called the Buster Call. Yes. Um, And the Buster Call is... It was granted to them by Aokiji. Uh, Essentially, I think it's five battleships commanded by uh, five captains. Um, Yeah. Essentially bombard an island to the point where nothing is left alive on its surface. Yes. It's, it's, a, a, yeah. it's the ultimate way for the world government to remove a threat. Um, yeah. it, it's essentially the One Piece world's equivalent of dropping a nuke on someone. It's like, total destruction, uh, you know, do not mess with us. Yeah, no mercy, there's no reversing it. Once it's been called for, it's there's nothing... It's just the final. What's what's the word? Um, hmm. The final attempt of the world government to erase a threat. Yes, exactly. So, Robin, she's really scared of this. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, we've seen the Straw Hats come against some pretty strong foes before, but I guess. It makes sense. I mean, we've seen Luffy single-handedly defeat a god, but true, true. For some reason, Robin is more scared of this Buster Call than she was of Enery. Yeah, yeah, she she's particularly frightened of this, and we will soon find out why. Yeah. So they now know that Robin, she never betrayed them. Uh, she's actually on their side, trying to protect. Yeah, yeah. Because and... she was promised by uh, by the CP9 guys, uh, if you know, if she helps them, then they will allow the the rest of the Straw Hats to leave Water Seven in peace. 
Yeah. So they meet. Uh, so Pauly, he wakes up. Um, him and Iceberg, they tell the rest of the shipwrights that the Straw Hats didn't do this. Uh, yeah. So now they're cleared. They're, the charges are gone. Mm-hmm. Um, they're free to walk about Water 7. Okay. But he lies to them. He says that he didn't see who the attackers were. Yeah. Um, so the rest of Galila, they still don't know that Luchi, Kaku, and Califa were the ones that betrayed them. Um, Nas, uh, Nami, she's off to stop the sea train. Um, mm-hmm. Pauly, uh, the Galila workers, uh, sorry, uh, Pauly and the Galila workers go with her. Yeah. And Chopper and the other workers go to search for Luffy and Zoro because yes. they've been chucked halfway across the island. <laughs> <laughs> and here we find out what they've been doing all this time. Yeah, so it turns out that Luffy, he's when he got launched, he tried to then launch himself, uh, but got stuck between two buildings. Yes. <laughs> and Zoro got stuck down a chimney. Yep. Face down. And that's the arc. reason. Yep, and that's the reason that they couldn't get to the rest of the Straw Hats. Yes. (laughs) They may be strong, but they've got no leverage. Uh, yeah. But, um... So, the search party going for Robin, they're off. They finally get to the station. Yes. Um, Sanji is watching, and... Mm -hmm. The sea train, it has to leave Earl. So Sanji sneaks on board. Yes. Um, Nami, she gets in time. Uh, she gets there just in time to watch it leave, unfortunately. Yeah. But they find a note from Sanji that say he's on the train and there's a baby Denden Mushy there. And basically that's just their version of a mobile phone. Um, right, yeah. So... Essentially, they have a way to contact Sanji on the train uh, once he finds uh, Denden Mushi of his own. So, Nami, she decides they're going to find a ship to try and get after the Puffing Top. Yes. But, obviously, there's this big, huge wave, um, this massive storm. Yeah. There's no way you're going to get through it with a ship. Yeah. So, Kokoro, she's... Looking down at the ocean, she sees that the waves are a lot stronger this year. Mm-hmm. So it turns out, year after year, Aqua Laguna is getting stronger and stronger. Yes. And just like a normal um, tidal wave, the big one, the big, like what's actually Aqua Laguna, because the storm itself isn't Aqua Laguna. It's just a huge storm. Aqua Laguna is a massive single wave. Yes. And just like a normal tidal wave, the ocean is rushing back. Um, And it rushes back way further than usual. Uh, So she knows that this is going to be a big... Um, Chimney sees Nami uh, coming. She sees Luffy between the two buildings. So yep. That's right. they pull Luffy out. Yep. Chopper, he sees Zoro stuck in the chimney. They pull Zoro out. Well, more specifically, uh, Chopper hands Zoro one of his swords and he cuts himself out. Yes. <laughs> so they hop over and they're off to... Uh, Nami tells Luffy what's going on with Robin. Um, yes. And Luffy is really, like, he gets pumped up by this, so pumped up that he pushes the buildings apart and lets <laughs> yes. himself out. <laughs> yeah. So, they escape the massive wave, um, just mm-hmm. in time. Yeah. And Paulie, he's nearby. 
uh, he pulls them up over the wall and uh, essentially there's another wave coming so yes. they've got to get to even higher ground which they managed to do in time um, yeah they, these waves are higher than they've ever been before so uh, yeah, yeah people are quite surprised by that so Sanji he's on the train uh, mm -hmm. but he has discovered um, which he basically a fight starts and he's kicking the shit out of the agents on the train Yes, uh, beginning with, of course, Karate Jerry. Yeah, so Karate Jerry, a CP6 agent, mm -hmm. um, he need, he has to bend over to fit in. Um, yes. <laughs> but he is going to fight Sanji. And he says, now nah, don't tell CP9 we got this. Um, mm. Which they very swiftly find out they don't got this. Yeah, <laughs> that, that will become a running theme throughout the rest of this arc, is people thinking, eh, we don't need to tell the higher-ups, it's fine, and then getting obliterated. Yeah, so... Corgi is in with CP9, um, and he explains to Robin that there's a marine captain in the fifth car on the ship. Uh, sorry, on the train. Yes. Marine Captain Tebow. Um, yep. And Tebow's a pretty cool guy. Um, He's got a whole night thing going on. Uh, in the fourth, there's a member of CP7, uh, Wanze. Oh yes, go Wanze. And in the third, there is the newest member of CP9. Um, and his name is Neo. So basically... Uh, they're pretty confident that nothing's going to be able to stop them. Yeah. So we cut back to what set. Oh, sorry, were you trying to say something else? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we cut back to Water 7. Uh, Paulie points out that there's no way a ship is going to get past a normal Aqua Laguna, and this one's massive. Uh, Kokoro says, Hey! If there's anything that can get past this, it'll be the sea train. Uh, mm -hmm. Follow me. But hang on, the sea train's the sea train's gone. It's it's gone already. That's, but she takes them to a cellar, and in it, they find the prototype of the sea train. Yes, Rocket, the Rocket Man. Man. And Rocket Man, oh, it's, it looks cool. <laughs> it is. If I had to describe it in one word, it is determined. <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, so they've got a new... They've got their own... Uh, sea train now. Yeah. And look, as, as luck would have it, it's actually even faster than the normal sea train. My yeah. goodness, what a stroke of luck. Uh, the Frankie family, they come and they're like, Hey look, we have our differences, but they've got Frankie. Please let us come along. And Luffy, he's a good guy. He lets them. Mm -hmm. So the Straw Hats, they got, they get on, uh, they get onto Rocket Man, and Kokoro, she launches the tra train out of the gates. Yes. And, so and the now, Frankie family tag along with their, uh, with their bulls, uh, Sodomu and Gomorra. Yeah, Sodom and Gomorra. Um, so. They're pretty cool. Uh, they've got sunglasses on. They're, yes. They fit right in with the Frankie family. And they're, yeah. they're pretty important. We, we like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. They're good boys. Uh, Oda has this uh, habit of making animals really... Not cool as in, like, badass. Just cool as in, like, lashes the camel. Uh, <laughs> just yeah. wanna be like... Pretty boys. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But uh, the train is off. They're gonna. Um, oh, sorry, just to mention quickly as well. Mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah, they're actually king bulls. Yes. So there's there's different kinds of Yagara. So 
you've kind of got like the regular ones, and then you've got slightly bigger ones. But then you've got like the alphas, and they're the yeah. king bulls. And that's what Sodom and Gomorrah are. Uh, so, they're on the tracks now, they're going super fast. Uh, yeah. Hey, why is this train so much faster than the normal one? Because it has no brakes and it's impossible <laughs> to steer. Yes, I, I, I love the reveal of that, because like, Kokoro's like, just in the cabin with them, and they're just like, hey, shouldn't you be like, you know, up near the engine controlling this thing? And she's just like, nah, you can't control it, it just goes. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Chimney, Gombe, Pauly, Tilestone, which is one of the Galilar shipmen, and yeah, Luli, yeah. they all stowed aboard as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Pauly, he tells the other two four men who the assassins were. Yes. Uh... And they, they are surprised to learn that it was, uh, you know, Luchi and Kaku and, and the rest, because they thought that it was Michael and Hoikel from the back alleys. <laughs> yes, Michael and Hoikel. Uh, so who knows what those two are getting up to? So now the Straw Hats they want to save Robin, Galila they want to get their own back on CP9, mm -hmm. and the Frankie family they want to retrieve Frankie. Yes. So they've all got a common enemy. They're gonna make. They're gonna make a big team. Exactly. So Sanji, he's kicking away through the train, and yep. he gets to where Usopp and Frankie are. Yeah. Yeah. Usopp convinces him that Frankie's actually a pretty get nice guy. Um, mm -hmm. So he frees both of them eventually, and they climb on top, and there we meet Captain T Bone. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, so we, we should we should clarify. I think it's um. Oh wait, no, no. Okay, no, no, much. Carry on. Um. So. Well, we don't meet Captain T Bone just yet, actually. But um. No. So, they call Nami. They tell them mm -hmm. about Robin. Um, yep. Uh, on Rocket Man, huge wave come in. Uh, there's essentially Rocket Man's gonna get blasted to bits. But fortunately, Luffy and Zoro create a combo move. The yes. Gomu Gomu no 300 pound o ho. Yes, or the 300 pound gum gum cannon, as it's translated. Yeah, and. So, they ma blast a massive hole through the wave. Uh, they get yes. through. So now they're safely on their way. Yes. Uh, Frankie, he decides to help him rescue Robin. Mm -hmm. Usopp refuses. He's he's no longer part of the crew. Why yeah, would exactly. he help them? Uh, so he, he just... He fucks off. But fortunately, a few minutes later, a guy... He's in a cool, a cool sun mask, and he's he's yep. got a cape. He's a hero. And yes. he's, got, he's got this big, long nose and some really neat goggles. And also a fancy looking stash. And um, he is the hmm. Soga King. Yeah, so um there's Okay, so uh you need to watch this one for at uh, the very least. Um I'll send you it. Okay. Soga King theme song. Oh, he's got a theme song, eh? Yes, uh, he I'll, does. I'll certainly be playing this in the video as well, uh, but I'll give it a listen here now. Um, so, here you go. Uh, tell me when you're playing it. Uh, sure, okay. Uh, let me just get it ready so I can pause it. Get, oh, make sure it's loaded. Alright, uh, three, two, one, go. Your friend told me everything! I understand that you're here to rescue a certain mademoiselle. That alone is reason enough for me to join your cause. My weapons are at your disposal. <clears throat> My name is... Sniper King! My 
Yes. Like a ride <laughs> far away. When I take aim, it's straight and true. Ooh, la, 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 I love when this. you're a man or a man, <laughs> I will put your heart in my sights. It's <laughs> No one knows what secrets hide behind this mask and So yeah, we get introduced to the glorious hero Sniper King. Oh, I love that. In the manga, he was just like singing that in the background and everyone was ignoring him. I'm glad they turned that into <laughs> that in the anime. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and Sniper King, he's going to help them fight, Rob- uh, fight CP9 and find Robin. Um, yes. So unfortunately, his friend Usopp, he's not here to help them because no. obviously not part of the crew. But Sniper King is free to do what is do as he pleases, and he's a exactly. real hero. Yes. Where, where would we be without Sniper King? Hmm. So Sanji, Frankie, Sniper King, they get down into the next car, and they meet T Bone. Yes. And. T-Bone, he, he looks a bit dead, a little bit dead, but he he's a pretty cool guy. He's he's honourable. He's yeah, yeah. he's a really cool swordsman. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he just he doesn't get a chance to fight them because they just detach them from the rest of the train. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Ah, uh, and this is where we meet Wanze. Ah, uh, yes, good old Wanze. No, not good old Wanze. No, terrible Wanze. He's the uh, noodle chef. Noodle chef. Um, he fights using ramen kenpo, so yes. he creates ramen using his nose hairs. Yep. Uh. <laughs> so, they, they basically just ignore him but Sanji he sees that he's basically abusing food and his knives so while Frankie and uh, Frankie and Sniper King they're off to the next car to find Robin but yeah. Sanji can't let this stand he has yeah. to do something about this <laughs> this abomination so, to the cooking to the culinary arts so yeah, needless to say, even though Wanze, he creates a noodle mech suit for himself. <laughs> yes. I- I'm reminded of, of the video game ARMS, and <laughs> for some reason. So yeah, uh, unfortunately for Wanze, Sanji is a real chef and not a noodle bastard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he beats him quite handily. Uh, yep. And it's the fact, first time he un- beats him so hard that he rearranges his face. Yeah, um, so he makes him beautiful. Uh, yes, but he's but... horrified by this. Where where did his buck teeth go? His his puffed out eyes, his crooked nose. Hmm. And Sanji actually has a habit of doing this. Uh, <laughs> this happens a few times, uh, <laughs> but this is a really cool fight for Sanji. Un- even though it's against a really annoying enemy, yeah, uh, yeah, it's one of the few fights where we ever see him use a weapon. Uh, mm. Because, in his mind, he will never use knives to attack someone. It, that's not what they're for. Yeah. But this guy, he's fine. using noodles. Mm. It's perfectly fine to use a, a knife on noodles when you're a chef. Of course, you can exactly. do that. So, this is one of the only... I don't think we ever do see a Nova fight where Sanji uses knives. Um, so, th- that's the only reason why this is worth mentioning. Uh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so, Wanze, 
Uh, he gets defeated. Frankie, Frankie is facing off against uh, Nero now. Nero, but yes. Before that, well, at the same time, Rocket Man is now zooming towards the pieces of the train that have been detached. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luffy, he goes off to make sure Sanji isn't on it. Zoro cuts it in half. <laughs> yes. Um, but then we see T-Bone, who is running across the tracks like an absolute madman. I love him. He's so dedicated. Yeah. Uh, and T-Bone, he's actually a really good swordsman. It's just unfortunate for him that Zoro was on the train, because he probably could have taken them down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, T-Bone, he gets knocked off the tracks, um, Mm -hmm. and they carry on. So, now we get to Frankie fighting Nero. Um, uh, the the second cat-based enemy who has a name based on the word black. Um, yeah, so... Nero, he's the newest member of CP9. But he's only mastered a few of the powers. Um, yeah, yeah. So the he's rest not of C- master. Yeah, so the rest of CP9, they don't really see him as a proper member. Um, and there's good reason for that, obviously, because, again, in pretty short order, he gets taken out by Frankie. Yeah. Uh, solo as well, because while this is happening... Sniper King has gone forward to Robin. Yes. Try and find Robin using some suction cups, uh, some octopus shoes. Uh, yes. So he's walking he along the side of the train. So he tells Robin that they're there to save her, but she doesn't want to be saved. Uh, mm. Corgi comes out uh, and he's like, I hear noise, this is weird. But fortunately, Sniper King is hiding under Robin's cloak. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, Robin, she's still. I mean, we know she's trying to protect them, and she's still trying to protect them. Yeah, even if yeah. it means that she has to deceive CP9 and potentially ruin her plan. She still doesn't yeah, want yeah. Usopp to get wrecked. Right. So, uh, Usopp, he eventually gets discovered, but he shoots Corgi with a gunpowder star. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while this happens, Robin runs away to the members of CP9. Yes. Um, she's trying her best to make sure that this deal doesn't fall through. Mm-hmm. Uh... Sanji and Frankie and all that. Yep, yep. Uh, Sanji kicks Wanze through the door. Um, Frankie comes in through the ceiling. Yep. And, uh, uh, yeah. She's still refusing to let them help her, but uh, she even attacks Sniper King. Uh, yeah. yeah. But he throws a smoke bomb, and they escape to the last car, and they detach it like the other part of the train from the rest of the yes. train. Unfortunately, Khalifa grabs the car with his with her whip, and Bluno pulls it in like a lasso. So, they've failed to get away. Uh, Frankie, he breaks the wall being held by Bluno, uh, and falls back into the car with CP9. But unfortunately, Bluno... Teleports using an air door. Yes. <laughs> and this is where we get into the real, some of the real potential of Blue Nose Power. So yeah, anything yeah. he touches can become a door, but that doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that he can just open up a surface. He can open a door in midair and sort of go into his own separate realm. Yeah, um, it's some kind of null space thing. And then exit elsewhere, which, mm. again, for a spy is a very handy ability. Oh, yeah. We get... Uh, 
Sanji uh, gets attacked by uh, Luna, but Robin, she's like, hey, we made a deal here. You can't go back on that, otherwise I'm out of this. Uh, and, and Spandam, being the cunt that he is, uh, says, no, no, no. Our agreement was we'd let them set sail from Water 7 safely. We didn't say anything about after that. Yeah. But, uh... Eventually, they do go along with it. Um, Frankie finds out that Iceberg's still alive. Mm-hmm. Um, which... <sighs> There's a really... A really heartfelt moment here between Frankie and Robin. Which... As with Robin, where we had these small instances of, like, yeah, she needs to join the crew. She's, she fits well. Frankie tells her here that simply being alive is not a sin. And yeah. this is one of the first hints, other than his wacky appearance, that Frankie is gonna... He's, he's gonna get along pretty well with the Straw Hats in future. Yeah. yeah. Um, to say the least. But Puffing Tom, it gets to the No Night Island. The, so, Enny's Lobby, it's essentially never night time. It's always light. Um, and I believe this is because it's just got massive searchlights everywhere. Right, okay. But, yeah. Um, the frog, he's. <laughs> he tries to attack Rocket Man. Um, yes. <laughs> which knocks the Frankie family's car away from the train, and the train comes off the tracks. Uh, Yokozuna gets onto the train. Kokoro calls him all over, and he's like, hey, it's Granny Kokoro. Yeah. Uh, the reason he attacked the train this time is because he thought she was being kidnapped by the yes. government. <laughs> So, she can talk to the frog for some reason? Uh, which, hmm, why, why does Granny Kokoro have the ability to talk to frog? I'm sure it would be important. Yeah. But leaving that behind, uh, it turns out he was attacking the sea train all along so that he could get stronger and stop his friends from ever being taken away again. So, this frog... Real cool guy. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of cool people in this one. Definitely, yeah. Um. So, anyway, I think we're just about at the point where everyone arrives at Annie's Lobby. Yeah, so this, I believe, is the beginning of the Annie's Lobby arc. So, yeah. Um, so I'll tell seven... you what, right before we get into that, I just need to restart my video recording, because it can only go up to three hours. Okay. So let me just. There we are, and we're back. Okay. Cool. I didn't even realize we were already at three hours. We need yeah, to split no, these just... down. It's kind of, it's a bit uh, ambitious to try and get. I mean, what was it like seven arcs into one video before? Well, I mean. I don't know. <laughs> We've we've gone. We eight did hours. the first box set in one in one recording, so. Yeah, but that. Another thing is that going forward, uh, the storylines will get much more complicated, uh, much yes, deeper. Yes, yes. There'll be a lot more to talk about, so it's probably yeah. best if we split the box sets up from this point onwards. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I have an idea about how to do that. Um, okay, but yes, getting back to Annie's lobby then. So, um, yeah, everyone's arrived there now, uh, but being a, you know, world government island, it's got quite a bit of security, including several big heavy stone or iron, I think, gates um, that just will refuse to open for anyone. Yeah, the gates of justice. Yes, the gate. well, not just the gates of justice, but other smaller gates leading up to them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Luffy and the Frankie family, they go on ahead to try and open up these gates. Um, meanwhile, everyone else is just sort of 
riding around in circles on the Rocket Man, I guess. Um, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, just because they, they can't get off, it's moving too fast. Um, so, yeah. L Luffy and them, they go on ahead. Uh, Luffy just charges straight in without any kind of plan, um, as he is known to do. His main goal, of course, here is to get Robin back. So he's just charging straight ahead, trying to find her. Um, yeah, meanwhile, the Frankie families are trying to open up the gates to make a safe passage for the rest of them to get in. Um, and this is where we're introduced to the rest of CP9. Uh, so we've already met you know, quite a few of their members, but we get introduced to three more here. Uh, those yeah. being uh, Jabra, Kumadori, and Fukuro, who I have written down two keywords for each of them to describe them. Uh, so Jabra, we have a competitive wolf. Kumadori, we have sword and seppuku. And Fukuro, we have zipper and sassy. That pretty much sums it up, yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> although Kumadori, uh, seppuku is quite enough. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, the... These members are... So now we know all of CP9, or at least yes. all of the agents. There's yeah, obviously yeah. more people like... Uh, like Spandam, who are involved with the organization, but not agents sent yeah. out on missions. So... They are being given devil fruits. Yes. Um, uh... So, yeah, uh, uh, Jabra, we know, already has one, um, uh, but, yeah, this is where the, yeah, the, the returning members here, uh, specifically Kaku and Khalifa, are being given devil fruits of their own. Yeah, and these two devil fruits, one looks like a banana, one's just a purple swirly, mm -hmm. um, these two have been found by the world government, but they don't quite know what they do. No. Mm. So there, the, there are like you know, um, uh, you know, encyclopedias of these things within the world of One Piece that say, oh, you know, uh, you can tell what kind of power a devil fruit is going to be if you just look at uh, you know these certain characteristics. But these particular fruits, pff, no idea. Yeah, and there's probably a reason for that because, frankly, these powers are silly. Yeah, <laughs> they they are a little bit silly. Um, so, yeah, they eat them, but we're not quite given any information yet on what the powers they're given are. So, we get back to Rocket Man, mm -hmm. and they're trying to find a way through the gate. They don't manage to open the gate, so instead, what they do is they break down the fence, and Rocket Man goes flying Fly. into the uh, Marine headquarters. Yes. Uh, sorry, <laughs> into... Uh, and he's lob. Yes, yeah. Um, and, oh yeah, uh, during all this, um, the, the Frankie family and Portly have managed to take down uh, the two giants that were guarding one of the gates, Oimo and Kashi. And, um, uh, yes, yeah, so they managed to you know, take them down. And the, I believe the, the train lands on one of them, who is unconscious on the floor. Yeah. Um, so, Oimo and Kashi... Um, they are friends of Dory and Broggy. Yes, uh, as, as we find out when, when Usopp gets out, or sorry, when Sniper King gets out of the train and, uh, and talks to them. Yeah, so it turns out Oimo and Kashi, they were tricked into helping the world government because the world government, back in the day, uh, around... Basically, when Dory and Broggy weren't still fighting. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they, they say 50 years ago. Uh, they were all on Dory and Broggy's pirate ship. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, the world government tricked them into thinking that Dory and Broggy had been captured. Yes. And that... If they were to serve the world government for a hundred years by making sure nobody gets into this island, then they'll release Dory and Brock. Yes, that, that's the lie they were fed. Um, but yeah, you know, a 
uh, the Sniper King here recognizes the description of of these uh, these two giant captains and says, Hey, hang on a minute. I met a couple guys like that. Uh, you know, a couple guys from Elbaf, like you two. Uh, they wouldn't happen to be Dory and Broggy, would they? Like these guys I met back there? They haven't been captured by the world government. You've been lied to for 50 years. Yeah. So, the giants, they, at first, they're crying. They're, like, so happy about this, because they now know that not only are their captains alive and safe, but that they've continued this epic duel for for decades. And and that's real cool. Yeah. And, uh, and moreover, now they are very, very, very angry at the world government. Yeah, because, strangely enough, when you serve someone for 50 years on false pretenses, you kind of you kind of want to get your own back. Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. So, they help the Straw Hats, and... Yes. Uh, there's also... So... What we're told is that behind, uh, so Eni's lobby is the judicial island. Yes. Uh, this is essentially the courthouse for the world government. Mm. Then behind Eni's lobby is a massive, massive waterfall going down to the bottom of the uh, ocean. Yes, this is actually just like a great big crater in the ocean, uh, and in the centre of that is the main part of the island. Yeah, um, so once you get past this, um, and the only way on over this is over a bridge. Mm-hmm. So you go over a bridge to get to the main courthouse part of the island, um, and then you go from there over another bridge to get to the gates of justice. And behind yes. the gates of justice are the routes to marine headquarters. And the world govern uh, the world government's pri- biggest prison, basically, impelled down. Yes. Um, and once you're on this track, once you are past the gates of justice, there's basically nothing that can save. You. Yeah. Um, you're in the world government's home base now. There's you'd have to take out on the entire power of the government to stand a chance. Yeah. So, uh, they battle a three-headed judge, which just turns out to be uh, three guys, three brothers. <laughs> um, the jurors of the island, and this is fucked up. Um, so, when you go to trial here, Mm-hmm. Your jury isn't like... They take the phrase, a jury of your peers, to its extremes. So yeah. the jury is previously captured pirates. And yeah. <laughs> essentially, they've got nothing left to live for. The only fun that they even have anymore is sentencing people guilty. So that's yeah, all that's they basically. do. If you get to this island... It's essentially, you are guilty. The government considers you guilty, nothing else matters. Yeah, basically. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, the, the jurors also have steel balls as weapons, um, which they use, in, in this case, to, uh, to cripple Sodomu and Gomorrah. Uh, yeah, um, which is a very sad moment. Um, yes. So, Sodom and Gomorrah, they get blinded, um, they're like on the edge of death, uh, but they yep. still keep going, and they get, they finally get Luffy and the others to the courthouse. Yes. Um, and they're standing on top of the courthouse, and there's a really, again, yet another incredibly cool panel of mm-hmm. each of the Straw Hats standing on their own, uh, pillar on top of the courthouse. Yes. I love the panel. Yeah. And they're uh, shouting to Robin. Yes. Yeah, because Robin and Spandam are on the other side. Uh, Yeah, Spandam looking down at them, both figuratively and literally. 
And yeah, they're just shouting out, pleading to Robin, saying, you know, we will rescue you, please, you know, come back with us. And... Uh, just just before that, um, so before this particular scene um, of them shouting to Robin, yes, uh, they actually fight Bluno. Oh yes, that's true. Yes, <laughs> Luffy does fight Bluno. Um, so... Bluno is obviously a very strong opponent, even for someone like Luffy. No. Yes. With the six powers. But Luffy... As we've said many times, Luffy is very clever in terms of fight IQ. And... Yes. He's able to come up with techniques on the fly. Mm -hmm. Luffy, when he was beaten by them, he saw Soru um, shave. Yes. And he realised, there's no way I can beat that speed. Um, even if I get stronger, they're still fast enough to evade. Yes. So he came up with two techniques on the spot. Um, and this is his first attempt at making them work. Um, so, or at least one of them work. So this is where we're, where his second gear ability is revealed. Yes. Or gear set. Yeah, um, yeah. I agree, honestly. So, essentially, what he does is he stretches down his legs and uses them as pumps to push his blood pressure up to the max. Um, yes. To pump his blood throughout his body very fast. And the idea is he's getting a lot more oxygen to his muscles. He can fight much more quickly um, yes and with speed comes force so yeah a lot of force <laughs> so essentially what he's doing is getting to the point where he can where he's nearly exploding his heart and he's taking advantage of his devil fruit to essentially avoid that yeah um, yeah so he can only maintain this for a short amount of time, but while he does it, he's incredibly powerful. Powerful yeah, cool. enough, in fact, to defeat Bluno, yep. which they do. Um, so at this point, and this is pretty early on, they've defeated Bluno, one of the stronger members of CP9. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they, this is where Spandam is kind of like, oh shit, they kind of have a chance to do this. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I do actually love where um, where Spandam is just in his office, and he gets a call from uh, from one of his men out on the front line, and um, and the guy's just like, oh, uh, you know, uh, we, we've been we've been invaded. There's there's pirates on the island. Uh, Straw Hat Luffy's gone on ahead. He's taken out like four hundred guys, and um, and then he gets cut off, and and Spandam's like. Pfft. 400, nah, nothing. Um, and then we find out here, yeah, no, Luffy's taken out over a thousand, and the rest of the um, the Frangi family and all that have taken out a thousand more. Hmm. Yeah, they're so... They're to be reckoned with. Yeah, they definitely are. So this is where we get to the point that we were talking yes. about. Yeah, um, lining up on, on the gate. Yeah, and this scene is... I mean, Robin's backstory is a lot of people's favourite. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is that she... She's had not just... Like, the, the rest of the Straw Hats, they've lost some. Um, mm. They've either been through some tragedy or something has happened to force them to leave their family or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It's basically some tragedy has happened to all the Straw Hats for them to need a new family. And that's yeah. the reason that they are so close-knit. Mm. Um, but Robin... She hasn't just lost her family. She's lost everything. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Her entire mm -hmm. life. Um, to the point where 
not only does she consider herself to be cursed, she considers it her fault. Mm. Uh, in her eyes, the reason that people keep getting a hurt around her is because she's too stubborn to give up on life. And this is... This scene is where she... It's the culmination of where she has given up on life in order to save the Straw Hats. She's finally found someone that she's willing to give up life mm -hmm. for. And yeah. then suddenly they turn up and convince her not only to go back on that, but that she deserves to live. Yes. Um, and, I mean, the panel where we see this, um, we, we said before about how Oda pushes his facial expressions to the brink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of those moments. Yeah, um, in fact, um, I think this needs to be in the video. Um, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll find it later, but... Okay, okay. So, yeah, not only, not only is it just that moment, though, because before we even get to the part where, you know, she's saying she wants to live and all that, we have this whole bit of backstory that is just building up to it um, throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Detailing, you know, the, the island of O'Hara and her origins, essentially. Yeah, so, um... We get to, I believe here is where we get to Robin's backstory. Yes. Um, and Robin's backstory is, uh, it seems Oda every single time wants to one-up himself on how sad the backstories can be. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had uh, Zoro, his lifelong rival, was uh, died tragically. Then we have Nami, her mother was murdered in front of her. Then we have Chopper, his father gave... Uh, he nearly killed his own father, who gave his life to save the country. And yeah. then we have uh, Robin... Uh, sorry, then we have uh, Frankie, who his... Essentially, his father figure was murdered by the government, uh, framed for a crime that he didn't commit and he was destroyed by a train he got destroyed by a train and had to rebuild himself as a cyborg then come yeah. back to an island where he couldn't rejoin his family because everyone believed he was dead mm -hmm. uh, but somehow Oda manages to one-up himself on all of those with O'Hara yep uh, absolutely so, Robin's backstory. Um, yes. So, O'Hara is an island in the West Blue, uh, a pretty unassuming little place. Uh, it's got a great big tree in the center, and it's populated uh, primarily, I'd say, by scholars. So there's all sorts of, you know, um, professors and archaeologists, all, you know, maintaining and researching for, for this big library that they've got. And, you know, they, they take pride in their work, they love what they do. And Robin here, uh, she, you know, uh, has, you know, as, as we see here, she's been adopted by, um, you know, the head professor, Professor Clover. Um, and, uh, yeah, she basically, she lives here, she's an apprentice, and she wants to grow up to be an archaeologist like her mother, who, uh, as we find out here, um, was named Nico Olvia. And Nico Olvia... Um, yeah, she was a famous archaeologist, she, you know, achieved a great many things, but then, one day, you know, when uh, Robin was about two years old, uh, Olvia left, out of blue, and never came back. And so, yeah, all this time, Robin's just been idolizing her, or, you know, her idea of her, and, um, yeah, and, and try training to become a great archaeologist, uh, so that one day she can join her mother and and they can go have adventures together. Yeah, uh, so she believes that uh, that her mother left her behind because she wasn't an archaeologist. Um, which we find out is wrong. It, it turns out that 
there were very good reasons for her mother leaving her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's the reason why Robin idolizes the archaeologists of the island so much, is because the way she sees it is if she can become an archaeologist, the next time her mother goes out on an expedition, she can finally come with. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so that, that's what Robin's been doing for, you know, the, the past uh, six years or so, um, up to this point. And, yeah, then one day, uh, she comes across a giant in uh, who is seemingly washed up on the shore. And, uh, and this giant, uh, his name is Jaguar D. Saul. And uh, he doesn't know what the D in his name means any more than Robin does, and any more than the audience does at this point. Um, Oda, please tell me what the D means. Give me the D, Oda. I want your D. <laughs> I need knowledge of the D. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Jaguar D. Saul. Uh, he's a big boy. He's, oh, yeah. he's he's on the run for some reason. Uh, yeah, yeah. He definitely seems to be a, a little bit a um, little bit roughed up, like he's he's been through something recently. Yeah. So um, he's talking to Robin, and he's like, "Hey, why aren't you scared of me? I'm a big boy." Uh, but she she helps him out. She's like, "I ain't scared scared of you. Everyone's scared of me." Um, so, she, he asks her, there's a town near where they are, uh, and she's like, yeah, there's a, there's a town, uh, we're in O'Hara, and he's like, oh, oh dear, oh no, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, and he also finds out, of course, that um, that she is the daughter of uh, Olvia as well, which is another big oh no. Yeah. So um. Oh, and also, also, that she's uh, that Robin is trying to research the Hundred Year Void, which is another big oh no. Yeah. Um. And we get. Uh, before he works that out, we get this really cute panel. Um, so, Robin, even before the whole tragedy of her life began, she yeah. kind of had an inferiority complex because of her mother leaving her. She yeah, thought, yeah. okay, well, I didn't know enough. I wasn't good enough to go with her. Mm. Um, yes. So, she's been very shy, very ret retracted from society, and she's been bullied. Especially after she acquired her devil fruit power. Yeah, yeah, I was going because to say, that, that certainly didn't help. Um, and because of this bullying, she doesn't really... She doesn't she believe doesn't really in herself friends. at all. Uh, she doesn't have friends. But we get this really cute panel of her uh, befriend, being befriended by um, Saul. Because he's got this really... He's got this funny laugh. There is she, 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 she. Yes. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I just love that little panel. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, she, uh, he, he teaches her to laugh like him as well, and he says, you know, whenever you're in trouble, just laugh like that, and, you know, maybe it'll help you get through it. Yeah. That's real cute. Um, but, yes, eventually he does find out that uh, this is O'Hara, and she's the daughter of Olvia, as there's research being done into the Hundred Year Void, oh god. <laughs> yeah, and somebody's coming to O'Hara. Uh, yes. CP9 di director Spandine. Yes. Uh, that's, that's an interesting name. Um, mm. He's the director of CP9, goodness. Um, but yeah, the, the O'Harans, the archaeologists, they find out that there's a ship anchored off the coast, a navy ship. Mm. Uh, and they're all... they're in panic mode. Um, yeah, because they're, 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 they've been worried about the government, you know, finding out about their secret research for a while. Um, but they, they figure, well, I mean, what can we do? We, we can't just abandon all this sacred knowledge. 
we've got to stay and at least try to protect it. Yeah. So, Saul, he's com- he's completed his raft. Uh, he's gonna go, but Robin, she, he's our only friend. And he says she's sad. So he's like, oh wait, I, I need a, I need a flag. Of course I can't go without a flag. Um, and Robin, she's real happy about this. And yeah. she tells him, one day I'm gonna go to sea as well. Uh, I'm gonna be an archaeologist with my mother. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Saul is like uh, sorry she tells him hey did you know there's a hundred year blank period in, in history uh, and, so, and he's and like yeah well I'm curious about it but you know the government forbids looking into it so I ain't, I ain't too curious yeah and Robin she's like yeah that's why my mum's an archaeologist she's off, she's off to find out but don't tell anyone it's, it's illegal uh, so mm. please, just don't say anything. And Saul's like, wait, does that mean she's looking for poneglyphs? Uh, and yeah, yeah, she was she was looking yeah. for poneglyphs. Uh, and Saul, he knows what's going on now. And mm-hmm. he tells Robin, you, you must never talk about this in front of others. Especially mm-hmm. that your mother is searching for it. And he asks her what her mother's name is. Yes. Um, he, it turns out he knows Olvia. Yeah. Yeah, he, he has history. Recent um, history, but history nonetheless. Yeah, so he tells Robin there's a Navy battleship coming and he's gone, they're going to kill all the scholars on the island. Yeah. You, you can never tell anyone that you're a scholar. Um, so, go uh, back now. You? Well, yeah, yeah. He says, go back and, and warn them, but also, your mother might be here. Yeah. Um. So, Olvia, it turns out she is here, and she's warning the... Uh, she looks real cool, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> Love her design. And she's got, like, this snow-white hair and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she... She's warning the scholars. Yeah. Um, all 33 members of her team, of her archaeology team, died, and she was captured by the Navy. Yes. Um, the government found out that they were from O'Hara, so now they're coming to fuck up O'Hara. Yeah. Uh, so, she's like, everyone needs to leave O'Hara, but no. We need to stay here and defend the uh, the knowledge in this tree. Mm. They're, they're scholars to the very end. Mm, yes. So... Um, but also, Olvia inquires about, you know, Robin. She's saying, like, is she okay? Is she, you know, doing alright? And, uh, and she's relieved to hear that, yes, indeed, she is not only, you know, still around, but doing pretty okay for herself. Yeah, but she says she has no right to see her. Yes. She can't make her the daughter of a criminal. So, now we realise why Robin was left behind all those years ago. It wasn't because she wasn't a scholar. It wasn't because she didn't want to take her or her mother didn't love her. It was because if she went on that trip to, not only could she have died, but if even if she didn't die, if they were found out what they were doing... She'd be, she'd be the world's number one criminal, essentially. Yeah. Um, and that is essentially what happened. So, yeah. Robin, she got left behind with uh, her aunt and uncle, and the anime goes more into this, uh, okay. into the relationship between her aunt and her, and it's fucked. Um, there's like we get a sing we get a single panel here of um so her uncle is a really nice guy her uncle is Olvia's brother but the aunt is Olvia's step brother she married the uncle in- that's why she's the aunt now right and she only cares about her own two daughters uh, and the 
uncle, he's a bit of a pushover to his wife. So, essentially, Robin is pretty badly abused. It's a bit of a Cinderella story. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on there. That's why she's always seen in raggedy clothes in the beginning. That's why she's not very well fed. She's quite scrawny. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's uh, when she was being abused by a step aunt, um, she found comfort in books. She went to the library and she was stealing books. Yes. Um. Uh, but she gets caught by Clover. <laughs> um. She's like, Clover please don't. That, yeah, it's okay. These books are all free to read. You know, knowledge is free. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like. Uh, Wow, that's pretty cool. I want to be like you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Robin, she becomes a fully qualified scholar at such a young age as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So but Before she turns eight. So, now we're back to Olvia. She's like, I've crossed the line. I have to sever all ties. Yeah. Uh, and then the government, they're coming to the library. Mm -hmm. uh, Ovia rushes out. Um, essentially, the scholars are left with her saying, if they ask, you've never heard of me. Yeah. Pretty much. So, Spondine, uh, mm -hmm. he's uh, rounding up all the scholars. Yes. Uh... Olvia, she's firing a rifle in the middle of town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To try and distract, I guess. I, I but, um, but now we come to Saul, and he's like, I'm so sorry, Robin. And we yeah. find Vice Admiral Kuzan. Yeah. Uh, and Vice Admiral Kuzan, well, that's, uh, that's an interesting guy. Yeah. Uh, He's headed to O'Hara, and oh, what do we find out? He's actually Aoki Aokiji. Yeah, so, or at least he will be later on. Yeah, so this is before he became an admiral. Became mm -hmm. this is before he got the nickname Blue Pheasant. Um, but still, he's a really a really powerful figure, even yeah, as a yeah. vice admiral. So, he's essentially there to back up the name. Yeah. Um, but then we also find out that, uh, you know, at just uh, a little while before that, Saul himself was a Vice Admiral. Indeed we do. Um, why is Saul so interested in hiding that Robin is a scholar if he's with the Navy? Hmm. Well, as we find out, uh, he was part of a team that was uh, called upon to essentially be in reserve in case a buster call was made on the island of O'Hara. Mm. And he was having none of that. He was like, look, these guys are just scholars. I've talked to them. They just want to know the history of the world. Can't we work with them, recruit them into the world's government? Um, but no, his higher-ups were saying, nah. That, that knowledge is off limits. They have to die. Mm -hmm. It's not and even Saul just the, couldn't take it, that. Yeah, it's not even the knowledge. Um, the reason that they have to die isn't be, like they haven't actually found out what happened in the void century yet. Um, so mm. why kill them? And the reason is that even if they don't have the knowledge, they have the they can understand the language written on the Poneglyphs. Right. And as long as there are people that understand that language, the language can be passed on. Right. So, the world government is trying to not only destroy the knowledge itself, but any chance that it can ever be discovered. Right, right. Um, but yeah, Saul, understandably, you know, from his position, he just sees this as senseless killing, and he deserts the navy. Um, mm. And that's how he ended up drifting ashore on O'Hara um, and being found by Robin. 
Indeed. So, Robin, we cut back to her now, uh, to where the uh, scholars are. She's finally gotten to them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they they tell her that it's all right. But they're only here to conduct an investigation, but never tell them you're an archaeologist. I swear to God, if you tell them an ar- you're an archaeologist, just don't. <laughs> like, yeah. So, essentially, they're hoping that because she's so young, I mean, why would you expect such a young child to be a scholar? Yeah. Um, and then the Navy barges in, Spandine's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they basically start tearing apart the tree. Yes. Um, they find the poneglyph that the scholars are researching. Mm-hmm. And they. Uh, sorry. Um, just before that, Olvia actually shoots one of the uh, Navy men. Yes, yes, um, she does. But deliberately misses. Um, and she's like. Okay, well, just because I'm here doesn't mean that O'Hara is like I have any connection to it. Um, but basically, the government tells her that they're one hundred percent sure that O'Hara is fucked. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the government has actually been following Olvia for six years. Hmm. Um, and the reason that they were following her for that long isn't because they wanted they wanted to find out whether they had and well they wanted proof whether they had any link with O'Hara yeah, and the yeah. reason for that is because the government was specifically hoping that O'Hara was linked to it so that they could destroy O'Hara and scare the rest of the scientific world into silence, pretty yeah. much. So they're a sacrifice for the, to the world government's ends. Yeah. Uh, essentially, was, uh, it, it yeah, was always well, it was always their plan to destroy O'Hara. Yeah, and to that end, um, yeah, uh, 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 what was his name? Spandine pulls out a golden transponder snail, which, as we know from reading the rest of the story, allows him to make a buster call. Yeah, so a golden transponder st- snail can only be granted by an admiral. Yes. Um, and essentially it calls five navy warships um, or is it ten navy uh, warships 10. under the yeah, ten navy warships under the command of five vice admirals. Yes, that's right. Um, to wipe out all life on an island. Yes. Um, every building, every trace that anything ever existed there. Mm-hmm. So it's a pretty, it, it's a scary thing. But, um, yeah, yeah. And the golden transponder snail actually isn't. A transponder snail. It's one of the few uh, purely electronic gadgets in One Piece. Mm, okay. Because the transponder snails themselves are actual snails. Yeah. yeah. Which have a psychic link. Uh, mm. So they can transmit information to each other in a certain radius. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this one is specifically just... It's directly linked to Navy headquarters. Um, it's completely electronic. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Spandine activates it. Yes, he does. Um, so all the scholars are put in one place. The evacuation ship... like The inhabitants of the island are put on an evacuation ship. Mm-hmm. Uh... The scholars are rounded up next to the library, yeah. and they're essentially they have 
no other choice but to wait to die at this point. Uh, Clover tells Robin, you need to go. Um, yeah. uh, Robin refuses, she wants to stay. But the uh, world government, uh, the Spondine arrives, basically. Uh, yeah. With Nico Olvia. Yes. And uh, and at this point, Robin is starting to cotton on that maybe this is her mother. Yeah. Uh, so she... This is, again, so many feels in this. Yes, I, uh, I, I have written down here, I'm going to show it on the camera, I have the quote, Are you my mother? And big cry. <laughs> big cry. Yes, that is definitely correct. Um, Not only for myself, but also for the characters, because Olvia here, you know, she is absolutely torn up, because she wants to reunite with her daughter so much, but she knows that if she, you know, shows any connection to this girl, you know, Robin is dead, basically. Um, so, yeah, she's tearing up, Robin's tearing up, it, the buster call's about to happen. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's fucked up, man. Just... And then the line, I think you're mistaking me for someone else. Yes. Uh, but Robin, she admits that she's an archaeologist, and no. that is not good. Uh, no. No, indeed. Um, just before this, though, uh, I do want to... There's something that comes before this. Okay. Before the actual buster call is some. Um, yeah. Clover, he knows he's about to die, so essentially as a scholar he just, he wants the chance to confirm his final theory, and he's able to do this because Spondine is actually, he's got a Dendemushi that has, it's directly linked to the world government headquarters and one of the leaders of the world government is talking to them through it like they have a direct they're connected speaking right now to one of the leaders of the world government right yeah so he says essentially why did the people of the past resort to writing on the stone in order to convey a message to the future they dotted the world with these unbreakable stone tablets onto which they carved their history. Isn't this because they felt their message would be eradicated if left only on paper and books? In other words, this is proof that the people who left the Poneglyph behind had an enemy. Uh, if we assume these people were annihilated by this enemy, then this enemy survived through the subsequent history. And coincidentally, the Hundred Year Void ended 800 years ago which marks the birth of the world government. Yes. If the world government happened to be the enemy of the people who were annihilated, we can conclude that the Hundred Year Void contains a history that was inconvenient to the world government and hence was erased. After reading ancient manuscripts and the few poneglyphs that have been found, we've gradually discovered the, the existence of a nation of which no trace now remains. What is clear from these manuscripts is the existence of an immense kingdom. It appears that they once had enormous power, but all information about this kingdom has been relentlessly erased. It is probably that these it is probable that these people understood that they would be destroyed by this alliance of nations, later called the world government, and carved the truth out of their uh, the truth of their existence onto pieces of stone which survive to this day known as poneglyphs. Um, so, the, essentially all of this is building up to him asking a single question. Uh, uh, and the question is, we still don't know the nature of this threat, 
But the key is this ancient kingdom that once thrived, and its name was, and immediately they are given the order to kill him before he can even say the name. Yeah. Oh. Um, and we still don't know what this is about. Really? But Yeah. So this oh. is another of these uh, examples of Oda giving you information that won't become relevant until years and years later. Yeah. But <laughs> there's a huge, huge theory within the One Piece fandom. And I can say this because it's not really a spoiler, because it's only a theory. Uh, okay. But there's a theory that the name of this kingdom was Raftel. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is... That's the reason why I wanted to bring this up, because yeah. this is sh this scene is sure to become incredibly important later. Okay. Even, even later than when we finally catch up. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe when we finally catch up. Maybe chapter 1000 they'll reveal the name of this kingdom. <laughs> maybe. I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> um. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, what's to call Maid, um, uh, the, uh, the Vice Admirals are getting ready to bombard the island, and I believe um, in the... Uh, so uh, after the uh, world government officials leave, I believe the scholars, uh, do they attempt to save uh, any of the books, or, or was that way earlier? Um, they do attempt to save the books uh, when the tree is on fire. Yes. Um, yes, that's right. And this whole scene is actually a callback to the, uh, not a callback, a reference to the Library of Alexandria, okay. which was destroyed because it was a temple. It, it was dedicated to the Muses, the Greek Muses, who were supposed to be the nine goddesses of the arts. Oh. And the reason that it was destroyed is because essentially. It went against the, uh, or at least one of the theories of why it was destroyed, is that it went against the religious doctrines of the time. So, right, yeah. we'll come across a group in this who are referred to many times as gods. Uh, and it's thought that that's the reason why there's this direct parallel between uh, the Library of O'Hara and the Library of Alexandria, is because essentially the world government sees them as heretics because they have this pseudo-religion um, regarding the people that rule them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, they do actually manage to save a few of the books mm. uh, by chucking them into a pond. Yes. I suppose soggy books are better than burnt books. Indeed they But yeah, the entire tree is on fire, the entire island is getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, Nico and her mother finally get to talk to, to each other. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, is it true that you can read the Poneglyph? Yeah. Uh, but, so essentially she's sad because now her leaving Robin behind was all for nothing. Um, yeah. But she, there's this touching moment where she finally admits that she's her mother and mm -hmm. they have this conversation, but then Olvia, uh, Clover tells Olvia to take Robin and escape, um, telling them to get onto the evacuation ship. And Saul arrives. Yep. Uh, and it turns out that Saul, the reason that he knows Olvia, again, like you said earlier, he was part of the Buster Calls like preparation. Uh, yep. He was going to be one of the people who did it, but. He's actually a captain in the Navy, and he 
completely morally disagreed with what they were going to do, especially mm-hmm. after having talked to Olvia in prison. Yeah. And now he wants to save Robin. Uh, he's going to make sure that Robin gets away, but Olvia, she says she still has things to do on O'Hara. Mm. Um, so she tells Saul against Robin's will. Um, uh, so she tells Robin that essentially if O'Hara is going to be destroyed here then Robin needs to be the the torch of knowledge that's carried on into the future yes yeah. um, and then she tells uh, she tells Saul look take Robin we've got you've got a She's not going to go on her own. You've got to take her. Um, so Saul runs off. He's off for his raft. Um, but Kuzan, his ship, one of his shipmates sees Saul. Uh, sorry, not a captain, a vice admiral. Vice admiral Saul. Yes, yes. Um, who is now considered a deserter. Yes. And Saul, he's running. They try to fire at him. But he he just flips a fucking ship over. Yes, I love that moment. Um, but unfortunately, even though he's so strong, he's still there's nothing he can do against Kuzan. Uh, no. So Kuzan he freezes him entirely. Yep. Um, that's the end of Soul. But. Kuzan, he's still a good guy, and even the like it said earlier, his name, uh, his motto is lazy justice. Yeah. He's not going to go out of his, his way to attack you if you're not doing anything immediately dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. Unless he receives specific orders to do something, he's not really going to bother. Right. Uh, yeah. And he's not received specific orders to capture Robin. Um, yeah. And actually, there's a fucked up scene here that's not on the uh, in the anime. Oh. Um, the evacuation ship is leaving. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, and Robin tries to get on it. Mm. Um, she stretches her arms up all the way up there mm-hmm. and they're all screaming like she's a monster a demon mm-hmm. um, and then Spandine tells them not to let her on board yeah so CP9 uh, CP9 stops the stops Robin getting on the boat mm-hmm. um Saul gets frozen over by Kuzan. Yep. And uh, Saul is trying to explain himself to Kuzan why he's doing what he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Kuzan says justice change uh, justice changes shape depending on one's viewpoint. That's why I won't com- criticize your idea of justice. Um. So, he's kind of a moral relativist. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, he kills Saul. Uh, and then, Sakazuki. Uh, we, meet our ne- we meet our second admiral. Aka yes. Inu. Uh, mm. So, he... Let me... I can't remember his exact motto. Uh... I didn't realise he had a matter. Really. Absolute Abs- justice. Ah, right. So Akinu, he's he's an ab- absolutist. He's mm. he's lawful neutral. He doesn't believe that there is any right outside of the world government. Um, yeah. yeah. So he rather than allowing potential scholars to escape, he destroys the evacuation ship 
Um, uh-huh. And we see the evacuation ship destroyed, and he says, uh, if by chance even a single scholar is hiding out in that ship, all this sacrifice will be for naught. You must, you must destroy evil at its very roots. And we see the ship completely melted, which uh, we yeah. don't get to glimpse his powers yet, but yeah. Um, so Saul, this outrageous him. Um, he's like, how can this be justice? Aokiji's like, I'd never go that far. Um, uh, but this is where Saul finally gets frozen up. Yeah. Yeah. Saul, his last words, he's telling Robin to run away. Uh, run for the raft. Uh, get away. Um, and he tells her, you're all alone right now, but someday, without a doubt, you'll meet friends. Yeah. The sea is fast. Someday, for sure, you'll find friends who will protect you. No one is ever born into this world completely alone. Um, just beautiful stuff from Oda. Thank you, Oda. Yeah. Uh, more cry. Yep. Lots of um, cry. And, uh, yeah, and then Kuzan, in a in a show of mercy, uh, yeah, basically says, yeah, go on, I've, I've made a pathway for you with the ice on the on the ocean. Just sail in a straight line, you'll reach an island. And I'll be back to check on you someday, maybe. It's not exactly a show of mercy. Um, although it is merciful in that he doesn't kill Robin. Um, yeah. The reason that he does it isn't that. Um, The reason that he does it is that Saul was a vice admiral. He was actually Aokiji's, uh, one of Aokiji's best friends. Right. And basically, even though he just had to kill him, uh, Mm. he still feels that that was... Again, Aokiji's justice is kind of grey, it's fuzzy. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's based on what he has to do in the moment. Right, um, right. And he doesn't see an immediate threat from Robin, but alongside that, Saul just gave his life for her, and frankly, he doesn't find Saul to have been a bad guy. Um, right, yeah. This was as, all as business explained, yeah. Uh, so he's he's actually very shaken up about having to have done that. Right. Uh, so the reason he lets Robin go is because essentially the way he sees it I, or at least I think the way he sees it is that taking Robin's life there as well as Saul's would be a perversion of justice. It would right. not be just to do that. Okay. Even though because his his version of justice has nothing to do with the law. Right, yeah. Uh, and he even says... Yeah. And he even says, Sometimes the idea of justice can turn people. I have decided to let you escape from this island. The seed that Saul protected, I wonder what she will grow up to be. Hmm. Um, he also tells her, From hereafter, live like a recluse. Uh hmm. I am not an ally. If you attempt anything, I will be the foe who comes after you first. He also says, if you want to die a painful death, you are also free to choose that. So, Aokiji, he's a very layered guy. We, yeah, we don't, yeah. We don't get the best idea of what he's really up to in the beginning. Uh, hmm. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the end of the story of O'Hara. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, and, yeah, all of that leading back up to present day and Robin crying on, you know, the on the top of the tower, shouting to the other straw hats, I want to live. Yeah. And, again, yet another screenshot that you're going to have to put up on screen because that face. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll just type it in and I'll find it later. There it is. Um, so yeah. they've 
So yeah, they finally convinced Robin to let them save her. Yes, essentially. Um, and now they're off. They're they're gonna do it. Uh, yep. So how are they gonna do it? Uh, well, so, the yeah, bridge has I, been I, I taken out. Down how they get to uh, over to the the main uh, House of Justice. Well, that's uh, Rocket Man. <laughs> ah, yes. The s- Rocket Man screams up the bridge because the bridge is being lifted. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Granny Coker, oh, she comes along with Rocket Man. Um, uh, they all jump on, mm-hmm. and they fly over to the other side of the. Air. Yes. Um. So, uh. Chapter uh, hang on. Chapter four hundred now. Um, okay. Wow. So the key to freedom. This is where So Granny is looking back on her days with Tom. Um mm-hmm. and how proud he was to help Roger. Um yep. remembering that Luffy announced that he was gonna be King of the Pirates. Yeah. Um, she's kind of looking back on why Luffy reminds her of Roger. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's why she's helping them so much, is because she sees it as kind of carrying on Tom's memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Spondum, he's off to take Robin across to the Gates of Justice so that they can't save her. Yeah. And Robin, she's in Sea Prism Stone handcuffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so she can't use her power. She's pretty much. I mean, she's not completely powerless. Like, she's not unable to walk, for example. But, but she's un- unable to use her Devil Fruit abilities. Yeah. So. <laughs> He takes him and his elephant sword. Yes, uh, fuck freed the elephant sword. <laughs> a sword that has eaten the elephant elephant fruit. Yep. <laughs> um, they're off to take Robin away. Uh, yes. Meanwhile, the Straw Hats, they've landed. They're off to the stairway, but hey, it's a, it's a weird zipper guy, and he's going cha pa pa Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Um, this is another of Oda's visual jokes. Um, mm-hmm. So this guy, he he just can't keep a secret. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which is he's got a his mouth is literally unzipped. His mm-hmm. lips are not zipped whatsoever. So, <laughs> uh, so dear. he tells uh, Lucci's taken her to the. T- uh, he tells them Lucci's taken her to the. T- Gates of Justice. Spondum's there too. Yeah. Uh, they need to beat all of them in order to get a key from each of them. Each of the keys might be the key to Robin's handcuffs. Yes. Uh, which seems kind of silly to me, because why would you not just not have the key? But, hey. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, Robin. Yeah. Uh, she's kind of fucked because. Yeah. So, uh, so essentially, now each straw hat goes off to take on a different member of CP9 in the hopes of getting their key and hopefully it being the one that they can use to free Robin with. Yeah, and the reason that they need to go after these keys is because, as I told you before, that it's incredibly difficult to damage C Prism Stone. It's what the Polar yeah. Bloods are made of. Very right, few yeah. people know how to damage it. Um, so essentially, without the keys, they'll never be able to get the handcuffs off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got the initial lineup of uh, Zoro versus Kaku, Sanji versus Khalifa, and Usopp versus Jabra. And uh, so yeah, Zoro versus Kaku. I I love Kaku n- now, especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because ever since eating that devil fruit, he he just loves giraffes, man. 
He's he got the mighty power of a giraffe. He does. <laughs> he is jazzed about it. He loves his power. Everyone else thinks it's stupid, but he loves it. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty great. Yes. Um, so he, he can turn himself into, you know, because it's a, a Zoan type, he can either turn himself into a full giraffe, or like a half giraffe, half man thing, which inherits the... The, the longness of a giraffe and the squareness of Kaku. Yes! Yes, it does! Oh, he's great. Yes. Um, um, but, yeah, so him and, him and Zoro have a little face-off, um, and we don't see much of that before switching over to uh, see what the others are up to. Uh, and... Specifically, Frankie. Um, yeah, yeah, Frankie. What's so he Frankie, he got away from Spondum. Um, ah, yes. <laughs> Frankie's a little escape there. Yeah, so Frankie tried to escape with Robin before Robin uh, decided that she wanted to. Um, so he had to escape alone. And how did he do that? Well, he used a, a, a cool technique, the coup de boo. Yes. Uh, essentially, he pretended that he was going to blow himself up. So the members of CP9 ran away from him, uh, but instead he used his jet-powered asshole to blast through the building. Yes, um, and since you told me earlier that yeah, uh, apparently the, the way he works is that the like the air pressure from the cola is what powers all of his attacks. I just realised that this is literally a rocket-powered fart. Absolutely, it is. Yes. Or fart powered rocket, not entirely sure which. Anyway, it's uh, it's quite ridiculous either way. Yeah, uh, and he used up one and a half whole bottles for that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some fizzy cola, but uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, he needs to find some more cola before he can fight again. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so he's looking so, for the kitchen. Yes. And uh, and then we go over to I believe next is uh, Sanji confronting Khalifa. I say confronting, but I really use that term loosely because we all know how Sanji is with women. Yeah. He, he essentially uh, looks at her and then becomes useless. <laughs> yeah, Sanji is yeah. not cut out for this fight. He got he drew the straw the short straw here. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Um, which you know he recognizes halfway through the uh, you know through his his tea time with her he's like hang on a minute this isn't right <laughs> yeah but he still can't do anything about it uh and then it cuts away from his fight and then we cut to nami uh running around uh i think with chopper and yeah. they something falls from the sky something falls down from above them what is this? It's a weird... Ooh, it's Smooth Sanji! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Don't you just love Smooth Sanji? Yeah, so Sanji has been smoothed. Uh, he's all... He's all... He's got no corners anymore. Oh, yeah. Uh, no edges on that boy. And along with that, he's lost all of his energy. Mm. Uh, it's almost... He's, he's all slippery. It's kind of soapy. Uh, yeah, it's almost like he's been washed. What on earth? Mm. Um, but yeah, before that fight, we come back to so uh, the final member of CP9. His fight. So Jabra, his fight is with Usopp. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and Usopp first attempts to to just take the key because it's just lying there, and Jabra's asleep. So Usopp just you know tries to sneak up and uh, and take it, but of course Jabra is uh, quite a light sleeper, or perhaps pretending to be asleep. Yeah, and in the anime, uh, as he's creeping towards the key, there's a there's a bee that lands right on his nose, <laughs> uh, and there's just this really funny moment of him staring at the bee pleading for it not to sting him <laughs> and the bee you can see it like deliberating and finally deciding to sting him on his nose <laughs> oh it's great oh that's brilliant um, but yes uh, Jabra uh, does in fact notice him and Jabra being a massive wolf man 
is, uh, you know, Usopp's no match for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we cut to fucking Kabuki Boy. Um, so, yes, Kumadori. Yeah, Kumadori is gonna fight... Oh wait, no, sorry, the smoothing of Sanji comes later. Uh, right, right now right, we've yeah, got Kumadori. Yeah. Yes. And Kumadori is gonna fight Nami. Uh, so he's like, Yoi, yoi, hurt, I say! And oh, I. Yo. Yeah, you can imagine exactly what his voice is like in the anime. Yeah. It's yeah. so stereotypical. Um, <laughs> but yeah, now we get to the smoothing of Sanji. Yes. Uh, um, so yeah, yeah. Th- throughout all this, um, Nami's sort of just running away from Kumadori, thinking like, "What the hell is up with this guy?" Yeah. Um, so we've got all our big fights lined up now. Yes. Uh, so, so I, I believe, um, yeah, Kaku and Zoro they drop down through the ceiling of the room that um, the Jabra and Usopp were in. Yeah. Um, because uh, Kaku is not quite used to his giraffe form yet. And so he he accidentally went full giraffe and fell through the floor. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so this is where we get uh, the two fights over who's going to get to kill them. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, Usopp's like, well, clearly it's got to be the wolf. I mean, a giraffe's just silly. Uh, <laughs> but then again... That, that neck, that looks pretty powerful. Uh, mm. So basically, he's just pulling a thing. He gets them to fight amongst each other. Yeah. Um, so, during this time, uh, they find uh, Zoro and Usopp find... Well, I think it's just Usopp. It's Usopp just finds Usopp, yeah. a pair of sea stone handcuffs. Yes. Uh, and he goes to fire it at them while they're fighting. Mm-hmm. And then him and Zoro get locked together by accident. Yes. Uh, I, I think the way Usopp describes it as he was aiming for the giraffe, but the giraffe was just so funny that his aim was off. And he <laughs> yes. accidentally hit Zoro instead. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now we have the birth of one of the most powerful weapons in all of One Piece the Great Nose Sword. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, oh, I love it. And basically, it's just Zoro holding uh, Usopp up uh, yeah. with Usopp holding his sword, mm-hmm. uh, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else they can do? They can't get those cuffs off. Uh, yeah, and in fact, I, I love the bit where they get the cuffs on, and um, and Jabra and Kaku are like, "Oh, uh, I, you know, we, we were just gonna fight over who gets to kill you, but like, do you want to take those cuffs off first? Like, we've got keys. We we can. Oh, our keys aren't the right keys for that. I guess we'll just both kill you." <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Usopp, Zoro, they fight. Uh, I believe uh, the giraffe Kaku. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the wolf is just sitting back, like laughing his ass off. Yes. <laughs> um, because let's face it, the giraffe powers are fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, he's getting taken the piss out of, and he's just like, "Shut up! Shut I up, like I giraffes. Don't. I love giraffes." <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Kaku, I love you so much. Fucking hell. Wonderful. Um, so, anyway, let's see, where are we at? So, um, oh yeah, during all this, uh, what Luffy's been doing is trying to find out how to get over to uh, Robin and the Gates of Justice. And he finds out, um, I forget from who exactly, but he finds out that there is an underwater passage. From and Chimney the- and Gonbei. Right, yeah. They're just um, wandering around having a little adventure and they see... Oh, yeah. what is this? Uh, they they see Luchi, Spandam and Robin. And hang on, they disappear in the middle of a staircase? 
and there's a very suspicious torch there. So yes. Chimney, Gombe, they're just like Luffy. They're all for the spirit of adventure. Mm-hmm. And gosh darn it, if they aren't going to explore this secret passage. Yes. And uh, and I believe uh, this is where we get a, a tease of third gear. Uh, where Luffy says, oh, I, I know how to bust down that door. And yeah. Yeah, he goes third gear. We don't see the moment where it happens, but we do see the aftermath where he becomes mini Luffy. Yeah, teeny tiny Luffy. Yes. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, just yeah. blasting down the door with some kind of power that we've not seen yet. Hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, and so then, let's see. Uh, okay, so a, a couple of the other guys sort of tag out. Um, so Nami decides, look, Sanji, you're useless against Khalifa, I'll go fight her instead. And uh, Chopper thinks he can handle Kumadori. Hmm. And Chopper cannot handle Kumadori. Uh, Not entirely, no. Uh, but he does lock him in a fridge. <laughs> yes, and in the... I, I can't remember... Is the fridge scene in this where he's, like, opening the fridge and then closing it again? Uh, I, I think he, he might... Yeah, it, it's implied, at the very least. Um, um, so in the anime, he's... Uh, gets in the fridge and he's like eating all the food while he's in yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but Chopper has to open up the fridge to grab the cola for Frank. Yes, that's right, yeah. Uh, so he opens up, and there's two fantastically funny scenes as part of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Chopper opens up the uh, fridge real quickly, he grabs a bottle, and Kumadori's like, I am trapped! Tra- uh, <laughs> and then... He hands it to Frankie, and the drink turns out to be something like tea. Like I think it's uh, like green tea. Okay, so, so first it was vegetable juice. Yes, vegetable juice. Um, and this changes Frankie's entire personality <laughs> yes. for some reason. <laughs> um, then his personality Chopper... and his hairdo as well. Yeah. So. He then opens up the fridge again real quickly, and uh, Kumadori's like, Trapped in the fridge! Uh, like, finishes off his sentence. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> he uh, hands yeah, this, this, this one time to. It was tea, I think. Yeah. yeah, and <laughs> he sat there on the chair, like, Well, oh, this is a great day for farming, partner. <laughs> yep, that, that's in the manga. <laughs> Just. Just love it. Um, but yeah, eventually he finally gets some uh, some cola for Frankie. Cola. Yeah. And I, I like that throughout all of this, Chopper's just like, are you sure it has to be cola? Are you sure this isn't just like in your head? Yeah, no, this has to be cola. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, he, he so... gets the cola, and that gives Frankie enough power to uh, to properly take on Fukuro. Yeah. Um, no, sorry, Fukuro, he... Yeah. Um, so they had this big fight of them just punching each other once, and then letting the other punch, and then punching. Yes. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get this... Uh, Sorry about that, you were right. My punches up to now were real wimpy. Yeah. Uh, so that's real. Yeah, hits him with a strong right. Um, and uh, yeah, so now now Frankie's back in the game properly, taking on Fukuro and dealing some massive damage. Uh, unfortunately, his sideburn shurikens don't, uh, you know, they aren't quite as effective. Yeah. But at um, least he tried. There's a... Uh, now, uh, Fukuro, he runs away. Yes. Um, and... <laughs> Frankie, he's... He, Kum, Fukuro's running away because Frankie is going to use the Frankie Destroy Cannon. Ah, uh, yes. And he's, <laughs> like, he's like, cannon fire will never reach me. Uh, but no, you can't escape the Frankie Destroy Cannon because it's a tracking cannonball. Yes. Uh, so Fukuro, he's real scared. 
Yeah. But it turns out that the tracking mechanism is just Frankie chasing him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so oh by the way, to, to, to activate this, this cannon, he has to, like, dislocate his shoulders. Ew. Yeah. Ew, we don't like that. Uh, although we do see on his shoulders um, the, 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 um, the letters uh, BF36. Uh, so he is, in fact, the 36th Battle Frankie. Yes, I thought yes that he was pretty is. Cool. Um, um, he, he stopped making battleships and made himself, you know, his final weapon. <laughs> I like that. Mm. Um, so, the, uh, we also get a, I can't remember if it's in this one or later on in the series, but we also get a glimpse of uh, Frankie Centaur. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I think we've seen that a couple times up now, but um, but yeah, <laughs> he essentially like splits his legs in two, but it's kind of like a, a backwards centaur where the, the extra <laughs> legs go in front of him. Yeah, because he couldn't fit them to the back of him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, th- I mean, what th- what's the point? What does that do? But hey, it's 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 a cool, it's a transformation nonetheless. Luffy's probably pretty happy. Yeah. I mean, he does use it to, to pretty good effect a couple times. Like, against Nero earlier, he managed to pin Nero down by using, you know, one of his legs on, on each of Nero's limbs. Hmm. So it has so, its uses. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, basically the fight ends with uh, Frankie and uh, Fukuro. They end up in the water. Um, yeah. They're going to fall down into the big hole. Uh, but Fukuro, he's got the moonwalk technique, he can fly but <laughs> Frankie's just holding on to his fucking legs Yes. And it, it, I don't know if it translates as well in the manga but in the anime, just watching him fly with like one like desperately hop up through <laughs> yeah. the air is fantastic uh, yeah but yeah, and Frank while is like, they're down, I don't think you can support yourself with one leg. So how about we go back to the shore and finish this fight properly? Yeah, but um, while this is happening, while they're down there, Kumadori he breaks out of the fridge. How yes. did he break out of the fridge? It's because he's fucking fat now. He yes. <laughs> he ate everything in the fridge. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But how does how does that make him stronger? He's I mean Luffy, that's kinda how he works, but we've never seen that before. It turns out know. that he has the ability to control his body's cells, like Yes. Uh he, he calls it the life return technique. Yeah, so he can use his hair as like extra limbs, he can digest food in an instant he can there's a lot of stuff that he can do with it yeah but the essence of it is that he just he is a flexible boy yeah yeah. so uh Chopper he can't really fight Kumadori like Kumadori no. is Chopper's strong in terms of just like regular people hmm. he could be any of your average pirates but yeah. Kumadori is a trained assassin yeah yeah exactly uh, so Chopper he has to resort to the rumble ball hmm. um, unfortunately so he, takes... he used one too early and so he had to use a second one yeah and, and once he takes ran out. yeah so once he takes a second one he starts losing control of his so the first one, he gets extra transformations. The second yes. one, he can't really... He starts, like, transforming into stages between. So maybe yeah. he'll try to go into guard point, but he'll end up, like, having massive long legs and really furry arms. Uh, yeah. stuff, Stuff like that. So... That doesn't really help him in the end. He has hmm. to finally take a third uh, rumble ball. And this yes. is where all hell breaks loose. Yes. So there's a very brief flashback to uh, to him back on Drum Island. And uh, 
and Dr. Correa is like, yeah, no, never do that again. Uh, you know, implying that he, he did something bad after taking a third Rumble Ball. And yeah, uh, back in the present day, we find out what that is. So, after taking a third Rumble Ball in quick succession, Chopper turns into a... Let's just say a kaiju, basically. Yeah, so... Do you remember how I explained to you that Chopper essentially tapped into the wavelength of his Devil Fruit with his yeah. Rumble Balls? Hmm. That wavelength is also... Uh, the reason why you can feed a devil fruit to an object. Okay. Because, in essence, and it's actually it's explained in this, I, I'm i pretty sure uh, it's explained by this point. So when they're giving Kaku and Khalifa uh, their new devil fruits, uh, Spondum uh, explains that someone's like uh, well, why can't I have it? Um, and it turns out, if you eat two devil fruits, your body is destroyed. Yes. Um, yeah. And the reason they give for this is that each devil fruit is... It kind of has a soul. Um, and these... If you have two devil fruits, the souls, they kind of fight each other inside of you. Yes. Um, to the point where your body will just break down, it can't handle that. Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's the way Jabber explains it. So, if you can transfer this soul to, let's say, an object, then, of course, the object is going to be able to transform. But that's not really going to be helpful with, like, a Logia, or a Paramecia, but maybe a Paramecia, because... You have to activate a Devil Fruit power consciously, or at least normally you do. Right. Um, so, you can't use a Devil Fruit or at least most people can't use Devil Fruit powers, like, while they're asleep, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a conscious object is going to be able to, maybe if you gave it the Gum Gum Fruit, it'd turn rubbery. Okay. But that's not very useful. Um, if you were to give it a Logia fruit, it wouldn't be able to activate its power. So that would basically just be a waste of a Logia. Yeah. So the way that they've gone around this is that most objects that are given devil fruits are given zoan type devil fruits. Yeah, yeah. So that it essentially imparts a consciousness into the object. Right. And okay. then you can train whatever animal results to obey you. So Fungfried, okay. for example, the reason he's an elephant sword and not like a fire sword is that it just wouldn't work as fire, but he can train an elephant. Um, yeah. It's also the reason why later on when Fungfried disobeys Spondum, because Zorro <laughs> intimidates it, uh, that's the reason it's able to do that, is because it's it has a will of its own. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, with Chopper's Devil Fruit, he's tapped into the Devil Fruit's wavelength. But essentially, he's enhanced its soul, uh, made it, given its soul more control over his body. Um, but if he goes too far with that, the soul will take over. And as the names imply, the Devil Fruits, there's something evil about them. Um, they're not good powers, uh, or at least they're not derived from good. Uh, right, yeah. So, once Chopper loses all consciousness, he's left with this beastly, just this monstrous form that yeah. has no sense of will. It just destroys. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's fucking ridiculously powerful. Uh, Luffy cannot beat this. Right. 100%, there's no way. Zoro can't beat this. It's nigh invincible to anyone outside of, like, the power realms of the, the 
admirals. Um, right, yeah. So, there is not a chance oh, that uh, Kumadori is going to survive this. Uh, Kumadori yeah. gets destroyed in very swift fashion. Yeah, yeah. But then, while Frankie is climbing up, uh, he notices Chopper. Chopper climbs out of the building uh, and starts climbing up like King Kong. Um, yeah. And Frankie... He attacks Frankie. And Frankie's like, okay, well, he's clearly not himself. Something's happened here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's... I believe that's where it cuts off. And then we come back to Zoro and Usopp. Hmm. Uh, so... Zoro's come off, uh, come up with this idea. Okay, let's do rock paper scissors. Whoever loses will cut that person's arm off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Usopp's not happy with this idea, so <laughs> they go for the nose sword. Uh, and I can't remember what does he call it. Hang on. Um. Okay. Well. Yeah, it doesn't show what he calls it just yet. Okay. Um, well, but... uh, and anyway, so, um, so so what happens uh, at that point is, uh, I believe um, Frankie, you know, has the bright idea to essentially knock Chopper into the sea, which should, you know, in theory, uh, neutralize his Devil Fruit power and hopefully retain him to a more manageable state. Mm-hmm. Um, which does end up working. Uh, yeah, it does. That was very clever on Frankie's part. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um. Meanwhile, speaking of taking a dunking, uh, Khalifa's taking a bath, straight right in front of Nami. Yeah, uh, so... That's a show of confidence if ever I've seen one. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, at least by Western standards, certainly. Yeah, uh, and also from although, the standards of she's a devil fruit user, so, you know, being submerged in the water should certainly dull her powers. Yeah, but, uh... Strangely enough, it's uh, it doesn't seem to be that way because mm. Sanji he's been thoroughly defeated, but in a way that's not like him. Like, no. Okay, maybe he'd have gotten beaten up. Maybe he wasn't able to beat her up, but he's not usually so thoroughly defeated. No, certainly not. Um, so she must have some kind of very strong power. Mm. And if she can use this very strong power while she's in the fucking bath, then something's definitely up here. Yes. So, it turns out that her power is the bubble bubble fruit. Yes. So, I told you a while ago about um, a vice admiral who was working with Hina the Black Cage um, back in... Uh, Alabaster. Okay. Uh, the la- the old lady who could squeeze pirates out like towels and leave them up to dry. Right. And this would wash all the evil out of them. So, Califer's Devil Fruit is kind of... Because there's a lot of very similar Paramecias. Um, right, yeah. So, some Paramecias are the same as others in terms of what they do, but just stronger. Um, right. Okay. So you're not going to get, like, another... Like, there's not two bubble bubble fruits in the world. But there is the wash wash fruit, which is kind of a less powerful version of... Right. Um, so, whereas that one... Whereas the wash wash fruit can wash out evil... Khalifa, her bubbles can wash out all of your energy. Um, yes. And that's essentially how she defeated Sanji. Um, mm. She can also uh, turn you smooth. Uh, yes. she'll, she'll make you so slippery that you can't stand up and you look like a weird like skittle. Like a yeah, bowling yeah. pin. It's weird. 
But, uh, yeah. So Nami now has to fight her. Yes. Uh, solo, in fact. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and this uh, is at first cool. it seems she was, uh, yeah. At first it seems like Nami's on the back foot. You know, obviously this is a, a new power that she doesn't quite know how to deal with yet. Um, and, of course, she ends up dropping her uh, climate baton. Uh, but after picking it back up and sort of, you know, figuring things out, she does come up with a plan to succeed, which ends up working quite well, as it turns out. Um, yeah, so this so... climate baton is upgraded compared to, you know, the last time we saw it in action. Um, mm -hmm. Now it can actually, you know, be rather useful. Well, it could. It was quite useful before in terms of. I mean, it's still got most of the same powers. Uh, yeah, it's just, just they've been upgraded yeah. thanks to Usopp's clever use of dials. Yes. Um, so, again, yet another instance of nothing in the story is ever is ever left behind. Even mm. small things like the random shells that they picked up and swapped for rubber bands in Skype here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they s still become incredibly important later on. Yeah, yeah. So, Nami's new and improved climate act, she can... she can use it to create a thunderbolt inside, which she uses to strike Khalifa, but unfortunately Khalifa, she creates a... she turns into a big bar of soap, basically. Yes. Which, for some reason, shields her, I guess. I guess. Um, um, she also uses the uh, the soap sheep technique. Uh, yeah, Khalifa uses the soap sheep technique against Nami, which is essentially just... She makes her bubbles move and charge the enemy. Um, mm. She... So Nami... She avoids this using a technique that she calls Fata Morgan. Um, yes. Essentially, this is just a mirage. Except, yeah, yeah. whereas before when she was fighting Miss Doublefinger, uh, this mirage, she can make it move, uh, mm. she can create many of them. Yes, um, yeah, we see quite a few at once. And... It seems to be a lot more convincing, even though yeah. for some reason, I mean, it wouldn't convince me, given all of them seem fat or thin or like tall or whatever. But yeah, yeah, the, the, the sort of funhouse mirrors kind of effects going on. Yeah, but we'll go with uh, we'll go with the One Piece logic. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, eventually, Nami, she uses the climate act to create storm clouds inside the nice. building. Mm -hmm. And then Khalifa, she thinks that what's coming is a, another thunderbolt. Mm. But, unfortunately for her, Nami... And this is actually fucking brutal. Oh, uh, yeah. Because yeah. I don't know if it's ever confirmed but I'm pretty sure that Nami actually kills Khalifa with this, with this attack. I, I'd uh, be convinced that she did. Um, so, that's, that's that kind of shows you the upgrade in power that she has yes. now that so, she's so got she, this. She uses the Thunder Lance. Yeah, and the Thunder Lance, basically, rather than firing off a Thunderbolt from the clouds, she directs the Thunderbolt from the clouds to the tip of her staff, to the tip of the climate yes. act, so that she can, with pinpoint precision, aim it. And it's a devastating attack. It stops Khalifa's heart immediately. She's just done. Yes. Uh, very, very likely dead. Uh, which, when when you think about it, of all the crewmates, you would never have expected Nami to be one of the people to kill a CP9 member. Yeah, Especially you know what, at this enough. point. Yeah. I mean, she could definitely hold her own against some very powerful opponents, but mm. she's never really shown herself to be a powerhouse. It's always mm. been trickery. Yeah. But yeah. now that she's got the dials, she's become a much... She's on another diff She's on another level when it comes yeah. to fighting. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, so, let's see. Uh, yeah, we've done the bubbles. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> throughout all of this, uh, Spandam's been boasting about how he got a golden transponder snail and at any moment he could make a buster call. He accidentally makes a buster call. Yeah, he accidentally presses the snail. Uh, yeah, and he's he, like, he thought he well, was holding I'm... the other transponder snail. I think this comes later, though. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, comes a lot later. No, uh, no, no. I, I, I read through it today. It was it's this early on. Uh, the 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 effects of the Buster call don't happen until a bit later. Uh, but yeah, th this is the point where he calls it. Oh wait, yes. Uh, right. So um, now we get to. Spandam, Luchi, and Robin, and Luffy finally catches up with them. Yes, exactly. So, uh, the Buster Call has been called, and Luffy mm -hmm. is about to fight Rob Luchi. Yes. Uh, but, uh, sorry, Luffy is about to free Robin, but Rob Luchi tells Spondum to go ahead with Robin uh, yes, so that he can right. fight Luffy. Yeah. And essentially this is the big fight. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so Rob, he's a very strong character. Um, not only is he strong, he's bloodthirsty. He, mm -hmm. His devil fruit suits him very well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, they begin fighting, and Luffy basically has to pull out the second gear, mm. but yeah. it doesn't really work. Yeah. Rob Lucci is so many levels above Luffy that even with this huge boost in power and speed, they're still basically fighting on even terms. Hmm. Um, which is impressive given this is only... I mean, the only difference between now and when Luffy fought him before is that he's now using Gear 2. Uh, gear 7. Yeah. Yeah, and good. he came up with that basically as a way to defeat Luchi. Uh, that hmm. wasn't something that he'd been thinking of for a long time. So, for... For an improvised move, that's incredibly powerful. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, the entire island is going mental because of the Buster Call. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's trying to evacuate. Uh, yeah. Chopper is still climbing up the tower. Uh, Zoro and uh, Usopp are still fighting. Uh, Jabra, uh, Jabra and, and Kaku. Kaku, yeah. Uh, so, all hell is breaking loose. Um, yes. And Luffy's fight takes a turn for the worse when uh, Luchi decides to stop playing around and bring on his uh, leopard form. Yes. And the leopard form, I mean, as we've said earlier, he becomes hench. Uh, the Derrily Triangle begins, and yep. immediately he starts raining down the calcium on Luffy. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Luffy is getting fucked up real bad. Um, mm. And... Even though he wants to be in, in Gear 2nd, because he knows that if he uses Gear 3rd, he's going to become tight. Yeah, um, exactly. But he basically has no other choice but to use Gear 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, so he pulls out Gear 3rd, and it, it's pretty devastating. in term, yes. like, It's a very powerful move. But it still isn't enough to defeat uh, to defeat Luchi. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so here is where we find out what Gear Third actually is, 
and essentially it allows him to blow parts of his body up to gigantic sizes and, um, and uh, uh, you know, with all the force that comes with that. Um, but he can only use it for a limited time before his body deflates and he becomes tiny. Yeah, so the name of it is Bone Balloon. Yes, Bone um, Balloon, that's right. Oh, cat bugger off, you know that? Sorry about that, cat. He's being silly. Um, so yeah, uh, basically Luffy gets a giant fist. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's filled with air, so you wouldn't expect it to do much, but One Piece logic will go with it. Yeah. It's, it's a big hand that does lots of damage. Yeah. Um, so, while this is going on, Usopp uh, and Zoro are fighting Jabra and yep. uh, Kaku. But, hey, along comes Sanji. Um, yes. So Sanji and Jabra, basically, they decide to go fight between each other. Mm-hmm. Um, leaving Us- uh, leaving Usopp and Zoro to fight uh, Kaku. Yes. Uh, Jabra, he can... So each of the CP9 members has their own specialty in uh, the six powers. Yeah. So... Jabra, his specialty is that he can use Tekai, the iron skin. Oh, sorry, the iron body move. Yeah, yeah. But still move while he's doing it. Right, okay. Um, so Sanji, he's kicking him with all his might, but there's really nothing he can do. Until... Uh, so... <laughs> Jabra, he stops the fight. He offers Sanji the key, uh, and he starts crying. And he's like, "I never, I never wanted to tell anyone this, but Robin's my long lost sister." Uh, <laughs> I forgot about so, that joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, so his whole thing is that he's a crafty, sneaky guy. He's yeah, yeah. he tries to trick you, but Sanji he ignores it, and he uses Diablo Jamba. Yes, oh, I love it. And Diablo Jamba, basically, he spins around real, real fast, which yeah. heats up his foot red hot, like burning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And kicks uh, Jabra so hard that he just gets defeated in one hit. He, yes. He slams him all the way down to the floor, like to the ground floor. Yeah. Um So finally he has the key. Uh he or at least one of the keys. Yeah. Um Spandam and Nico Robin, now they're at the bridge of hesitation. So this yes. is the big long bridge before the gates of justice, and mm-hmm. the idea of it is like it gives criminals a chance to reflect on their actions before they finally pass through the gates of justice. Like, yeah. Yeah. To regret their lives. Um, but Frankie catches up to Luffy uh, and Luchi. He asks Luffy if he needs help, but Luffy's like, fuck off, this is my fight. Yeah. <laughs> he tells Frankie to take the keys and go to Robin. Um, so... Uh... Zoro and Kaku, they're continuing their duel. Um, they've gotten out of the handcuffs now because yes. uh, Sanji found the correct key for them. Right, yeah. Uh, and, uh, also, I, I believe Kaku Tempest kicked so hard that he cut the entire building they're in in half. Yeah, uh, he cut the entire roof off the building. Um, yeah. So, Tempest Kick is uh, Kaku's specialty in the Six Powers. Right. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, even though his power is ridiculous, a giraffe, his big long neck definitely gives you some, uh, some momentum when you swing around. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. <laughs> so, aside from him crumpling up his nose and trying to use it as a gun, 
Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so he calls that nose pistol. Um, aside from that, he's got the more powerful move of spinning around real fast, building up a bunch of momentum, and then releasing a tempest kick that he calls sky slicer. That basically yes. just cuts in a massive arc around him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Zoro, uh, he's having trouble with Kaku a bit. Um, Kaku is definitely strong. Um, yeah, yeah. So, Zoro fights with three sword style, but according to Kaku, he fights with four sword style. Um, and his reasoning behind this is that he can use the Tempest Kick to release a slash from each one of his four limbs at once. Yes. Um, which I guess you can call four sword style, but there's no swords. But, hey. Um, but Zoro uh, doesn't want to be one-upped. No, so Zoro, and this is really uh, this is something that is still theorised over to this day yeah he uses a technique that he calls I believe here it's calling it cute, uh, Kutori um, I believe in the anime it's referred to as Ashura Doji um, okay. basically he takes on the appearance of an Asura deity, which is yes. basically like a three-headed god of death. Yeah. Uh, and of course, each one of those, uh, you know, three parts of him wielding three swords each. Yeah, so, essentially, Zoro's like, okay, you've got four sword style, bitch, meet nine sword style. <laughs> yes. Uh... So, Zoro obviously defeats him with this. Uh, it, it's strange because <coughs> he obviously... It, it's not obvious whether he actually grows more limbs or whether he's... Th whether he's moving so fast that he appears to. I, I took it as more of the latter, just based on what we've seen him do so far, but honestly, it could be either. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, why would he call this Kutoriu, uh, Nine Sword Style, if he's only using three swords still? I mean, he takes swordplay very seriously. It, yeah. Just yeah. because he's moving very fast doesn't mean he's not still using three swords type. Um, so it's confused a lot of people as to what's actually happening there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Zoro he wins. Um, yeah. uh, and Zoro... <laughs> so, before this whole thing, uh, when they were getting on the train, Paulie gave Zoro a message to tell to Kaku. Uh, yes. Basically, just you're fired. fired. Yeah, tell him you're fired. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's. Now we cut back to Robin again, um, and this is another really powerful moment. Robin is now clinging to life, like she's finally, she's accepted that she wants to live. Um, oh yeah, actually, I think we forgot to mention um, back when they were all standing on the gates, you know, in a row in that really cool shot, and um, and Spandam was like shouting down at them. Uh, uh, Luffy and the gang essentially declared war on the world government by yes. shooting down their flag. <laughs> yeah, so Luffy ordered Soge King to shoot down the world government's flag, and that yeah. is a huge thing. Um, obviously, the symbolism of it. Um, yeah, yeah. But in this world, that is genuinely um, a declaration of war. Yeah. Um, so they've—they're not only pirates now. 
they've announced their intention to destroy the world government. Yes. Whether they knew that that's what they were doing or not, that's still what has happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that is a huge, huge moment and definitely comes up later in the story. Mm. It's, I mean, the world government redoubles its efforts because of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to uh, Robin on the bridge. Yeah, so Robin, she's finally accepted that she wants to live. Mm. And she's been dragged along by Spandam. Uh, she basically just does the child thing of like throwing a tantrum and falling to the floor to yeah. get dragged. Except, while she's being dragged, she bites onto the bridge and mm. like holds on with her teeth. And yeah. that is f- that is fucking ouch. Yeah, yikes. Sure. Oh. I did not like that. But no. it really shows the determination now that Yeah, yeah. Now now that yeah. she's got something to live for. Yeah. Um So Spandam, he's he's gloating that he set up landmines behind them. Hmm. Um He tells her that his father was Spandine. Shock, horror, who could have guessed? Um, and Robin's pissed at this. Uh, meanwhile, in the background, Frankie triggers one of the explosions. And he's, yeah. blown, he's blown away into the sea. Uh, and then Spondum is hit in the head by a missile. <laughs> yes, I love that moment. <laughs> um, so... Sniper King is yep. all the way in the distance, but as we know, he's he's Sniper King. There's no exactly. distance that can prevent him from hitting his target. Yes, exactly. So yeah, he's uh he's gonna help out with the escape. Um, still no mention of Usopp. Uh, we don't know where he's no. gone. Uh, uh, but I'm sure we'll catch catch back up with him later. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Robin, she manages to get away for a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Frankie, he blocks bullets that the Marines fire at them. Yeah. Um, uh, S- Sniper King shoots the keys that Zoro and Sanji had collected um, all the way over to Robin. Mm-hmm. And finally, Frankie uses the keys on Robin's seat stone cuffs and she's free or at least her arms are free so we get a really really satisfying moment (laughs) where now that her arms are finally free she can use her devil fruit abilities and the very first thing that she does is fuck Spandam up real bad (laughs) Oh yeah. <laughs> so we've we've seen her use clutch before, but this is the first time that I've really believed that she has crunched the bones of a person to dust. Yeah, absolutely. Um uh, and, and with good reason too. Definitely. Uh again, there's always at least one really satisfying moment um yeah, in every yeah. fight. Wonderful. Oh dear. Um, so yeah, she does that, and uh, then let's see. So uh, the best of call Luke arrives. Actually, um, sorry. Uh, it's at this point that the Buster call arrives. Right. Yes. Yeah. The, so, yeah the, the warships are here. So the top of the judicial towers blown up. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything's getting shell. Yes. Um, in the tunnels, uh, Nami, Kokoro, Chopper, Chimney, and Gombe are on their way to towards where Luffy is. Uh, mm-hmm. And Luffy and Luchi are still fighting. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, but Luffy. in the midst of everything getting blown up, uh, a leak springs in the underwater passage, and the whole thing gets flooded. Yeah. Uh, so... Nami and the others, they're, they're in dire trouble. They're about to get yeah. drowned. How are they going to get out of this? Well, they get saved by a very unexpected presence. A mermaid comes and saves them. 
My Incredible. goodness. A mermaid. A beautiful mermaid. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Sanji, he's real happy about that. <laughs> For all of two seconds. Well, um, once he wakes up, he's not so happy. But Yeah, what, what, once they realise. <laughs> uh, but we're not quite there yet. So that's that's a reveal that comes later. Um, well, no, they, they they do reveal the face of their of their uh, savior um, in that scene. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it turns out Granny Kokoro, she's a mermaid. Yeah. Uh, no wonder she was with Tom. Um, mm-hmm. It makes you wonder how long they've been together and were they actually in a relationship? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, back to the fight with Luffy. Uh, yes, yes. Luffy, uh, sorry, Luchi explains to Luffy, because Luffy hasn't really had time to think through Gear Second. Mm. Um, basically, every time that he uses it, he's causing his heart pressure to go way up. He's doing massive damage to his organs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, he's shortening his own lifespan every time he uses it. Yeah. Um, but Luffy, he doesn't care. There's a, He's quite happy to risk his own life to save his friends. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so the leak that was blown into the tunnel uh, is from Luchi. Uh, Luchi right. blasts a hole in it. Yes, um, he does. So, Spandam, he orders the Marines to take Robin, but mm-hmm. they see the buster call them, they're like, fuck that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, the buster call, they can destroy everything on the island, mm-hmm. except for the bridge. Right. Um, and the reason for that Spondum thinks it's because he's there and he's just so important. But it's because they want Robin. Um, so, apparently during the last Buster Call on O'Hara, mm-hmm. everything except for wherever Spondum was standing, that's where was fair game for them to shoot. Right, um, okay. Because he genuinely was important in the gun. Yeah. But Spondum, he's just riding on his father's coattails. Uh, yeah, yeah. They don't really care about him. So, as long as he's not near Robin, they're quite happy to blow him up. Yeah. So, the Frankie family now, they're mm-hmm. off to the Gate of Justice. Um, yep. Sniper King, he falls down um, because of the attack on the tower. Uh, mm. He falls off, uh, gets caught. Uh, they t- tell him to leave, but he can't really. He's too weak. So he tries to explain his new uh, slingshot. He's like, this is really cool, in it? But Sanji doesn't care. Uh, uh, so Nami, Chopper, and the rest... Uh, Again, they're underwater now. They're getting dragged along by Kokoro, who's a mermaid. Yep. Luffy is damn near exhausted. Um, yes. He can't use gear second anymore. Um, so he's left with his final... Like, his last hurrah. So he has to use gear third now. It's the only way that he yes. is capable of beating. So he blows his arm up um, and then he attacks Luchi he uses a move that he calls Gigant Pistol Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool and it sends Luchi fucking flying uh, straight through the wall straight toward the sea Uh, we get a marine called Vice Admiral Doberman and Doberman is a pretty cool guy even though we don't get to see much of him but the this guy he he's telling his men not to go and capture Robin 
because Lucci is there. Um, you're wondering, hey, why why would he not want to want them to go near Lucci? So it turns out that 15 years ago, 500 soldiers were captured on an island by pirates. Uh, the ca- the captain was demanding that he become the king of the island, uh, and in return he wouldn't kill the soldiers. Mm. Yeah. The king was about to give in, because uh, a lot of the rulers in One Piece are actually good people. Yeah. Uh, but the world government sent a 13-year-old boy to the island. Uh... This boy infiltrated the pirate's hideout, and with the reasoning that a soldier's purpose is to protect the kingdom, so by being captured and ransomed against the king, they were doing the opposite and essentially were traitors, so he killed all 500 soldiers immediately, as well as all the pirates. Yeah. Um... And that 13-year-old boy is Rob Lucci. Uh Um, So, the Marines, that's that's scary. Uh, They're like, okay, yeah, we're not going near you. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, The Vice Admiral, he's like, as long as he's here, nothing's going to go wrong. Like, he's fucking unstoppable. Yeah. Uh... The Lucci is knocked out from the Gear Third, um, and he lands on the, one of the Marine ships. Yes. Uh, uh, he gets knocked out and returns to human form, uh, and he takes off his shirt, uh, and on his back is all scars and shit. Um, but the scars look like the world government symbol. So yeah, you have to yeah, wonder. You have to wonder. Did he carve that into himself? Was that something that he was like branded with as a child? Maybe. That's strange. Hmm. But it's. It, I don't think it's ever really explained. Okay. Um. Luffy attacks the ships. Um. He destroys the ship with a gigant axe. Uh, but Lucci manages to dodge. Um, he turns into his complete animal form. So, where Chopper has his reindeer form, yeah. Lucci, Lucci has his leopard form. Yeah. And bites Luffy. And that's gotta hurt, man. You see those teeth. Yeah, yikes. So, Luffy... He blows his body up like a balloon, which forces Luigi's jaws off him. Yeah. Um, so Luigi returns to his human form. Uh, Luffy uh, tries to hit him. I can't remember what the attack he uses now is, but basically he uses another big boy attack to try and attack Luigi. But again, it's dodged and it destroys the mast of the ship. Um, Lucci uh, has now worked out that when Luffy is big, obviously mm-hmm. his speed decreases. Yes. Uh, even even though it makes him massively powerful, it's still there's a drawback to it in that he can't attack as fast. Right. Yeah. Um, so another of the vice admirals called Oniguma he notices the fight and he orders his own ship and the rest of the ships to target the ship that they're on. Mm. Uh, His thinking is that Lucci's definitely going to survive. Hopefully the Straw Hat Boy will. Um, One of the Marines is like, nah, fuck that. There's a thousand Marines on that ship. But the Vice Admiral kills him on the spot um, which we're starting to see in this some of the Navy's ruthlessness. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so up until now, 
it's been sort of a dichotomy between pirates and the navy where pirates are the chaotic force in the world and the navy is sort of the force of law and order. Yeah, in the yeah. same way that in Dungeons and Dragons terms you can be chaotic neutral, chaotic evil, chaotic good. There's that chaos still exists, but it can be bent towards different purposes. Yeah. yeah. The same exists on the other side. The navy there are lawful good characters in. Like Garp's gra- uh, like Garp. Uh Luffy's yeah. which we haven't talked about yet because he's not in here yet, shit. Uh, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll talk about him in like ten minutes, so it's fine. Yeah, but uh, so on one side you've got like Garp, who's lawful good, and then on the other you've got lawful evil people like Luchi, who mm-hmm. takes all of his moral judgment from what is legal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it turns out that he only ever joined the CP9 because it gave him a license to kill. Yeah. So, yeah. that It's pretty bad. Uh, Lucci's history is not the best. No, but uh, uh, well, makes for an interesting character, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, Luffy, he's now tiny again. Um, yes. Spondum is laughing at Luffy. He thinks that Luffy died when the ship was attacked. But no, he's just hiding. Um, so Spondum is have, having his big laugh. Uh, Frankie punches him in the face. Yet another yep. great moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Spondum, he tries to attack Robin with Funkfried. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Frankie intimidates uh, Funkfried and throws him right back at Spondum. <laughs> yes, I love that moment. It's great. Uh, Lucci finds out where Luffy's hiding, starts to attack mm-hmm. him. Yep. But, hang on. Ouch. Uh, I have been hit many times. Uh, so he's now starting to feel the pain of mm. Luffy's attacks. Um, yeah. Up until now, I guess it's kind of... He's been overtaken by the adrenaline of it all. Yeah, yeah. But he's starting to struggle now. Mm. Uh, Robin, Frankie, they hijack Spondum's ship. Um, uh, Kokoro jumps onto the ship with the other straw hats yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a great moment with uh, Sanji who when he sees uh, Kokoro he he just immediately becomes depressed it, it's, <laughs> yes. it's so sad uh, all of his dreams have been crushed uh. I also like that he uh, he says that his dream was to meet a mermaid. Uh, when all this whole time, like he gets carried away around girls. Uh, yeah, yeah. All this time, his dream has been to find the all blue. But the second yeah. a mermaid comes in, that is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once he finds out that's a possibility, there's no there's no going back. But, um, yeah, Luffy, he's finally big again. Well, not big, normal sized. Normal sized, yeah. Um, Oimo and Kashi, the, the uh, pirates, oh, yeah. uh, they've been carrying Mozu and Kiwi and the rest of the Frankie family, hmm. as well as Paulie, uh, Lulu, uh, Tilestone, um, Sodom, Gamora, and Yokozuna out of yeah. the way of the Buster Call. Uh, yeah. But they're attacked by three ships. Uh, and they fall down and we don't know what happens to them. It's a big... It's a cliffhanger, if you will. Right. Uh, yeah. So, Luffy, he uses Gear Second again. 
and at this point it's really taking a toller. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Straw Hats and Frankie, they're waiting on the ship for Luffy so that they can escape. Yeah. But the Buster Call ships, they there's an announcement over the Tannoys saying that everyone other than them has been killed by the Buster Call. Mm-hmm. And all of them, and Frankie definitely, uh, they're all... That's... That's shocking. Like, just... Yeah. But, uh, they focus on the important thing at the moment, Luffy's fight. Uh, so, Luffy gets hit by, um, Luchi with Rokurogan, which is essentially, so his most, his speciality with the six powers is finger pistol Um, so he has this enhanced version of it Rokuoga uh, and that is really it's it's big damage for Luffy but Luffy he's still gonna fight Um, the Buster Call ships they realise that Luchi and Luffy are in the tower Um, so they destroy half the bridge because Robin is no longer on the bridge, they're now able to destroy it. Right, yeah. Um, they then take aim at the ship that the rest of the crew are on. Uh, they're going to catch a Nico. Uh, but the crew start fighting back. Um, and they manage to pull it off quite effectively. Like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sniper King, he sees Luffy and Luchi in the tower. Yes. Um, he's like shouting to Luffy. Um, the rest of the Straw Hats, they're cheering him on, and Luffy, he's like, he's found new strength through this. He's, he sees all his friends motivating. Yes. And, and, uh, and specifically, it's it's when Sniper King takes off his mask and reveals to. to well, well, he, he approaches Luffy as Usopp and says. Yeah. Listen, Luffy, you can win this. That yeah. guy, he's nothing. You have a dream, and whatever you do, dreaming, don't give it up, Luffy. <laughs> yeah, but Luchi has an interesting response to this. And it comes back to what I said before about l- lawful evil and how mm, yes. there's a lot of moral relativism in this story. He says that evil cannot win. Uh, so he very clearly sees himself as the force for good here. Yeah, yeah, which is even though, interesting. Yeah, even though he knows he's bloodthirsty and he enjoys killing, he hmm. believes that as long as you're killing the right people, it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which, I, that's pretty fucked up there, friend. No, but I mean, go for yeah. it. The leopard bastard. Um, so, Buster Call ships, they're saying that 200 captains and lieutenants are going to finish off the crew and recapture Nico Robin. Hmm. Um, so, underneath the five vice admirals that captain these, um, yes. these ships, there's 200 captains and lieutenants, and that is quite a formidable force. Yeah, um, yeah. Because we've already seen things like Smoker is a captain. Yeah, even though technically the same rank as Smoker. So. Yeah. And Tashigi is a lieutenant. Hmm. So that gives you an idea of just how much fight power, fighting power that they've got here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sanji's just gone missing, though. Hmm. Um, on the bridge, Frankie, Sniper King, and Zoro. They're fighting the captains and lieutenants. Yes. And there's devil fruit users there. Uh, that, that makes it a lot tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Zoro's sword Yubashiri. Uh, so one of the captains has the rust rust fruit. And he grabs Yubashiri, Zoro, one of Zoro's swords, and rusts it. 
and it breaks. I about that part. Yeah. yeah, so Zoro now only has two swords. Um, Robin and Nami, they fight off the marines that attack the ship. Um, Luchi, uh, he's starting to win against Luffy. Um, Luffy's used gear second too long now. And it it's really taking its toll. Um, yeah, yeah. Luffy can barely move. Uh, he collapses after Luchi uses another Roku Ogan, and Luffy collapses uh, into a pool of his own blood. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Sniper King sees Luffy fall, and this is a big shock yeah. to the crew. This this is where he does the big speech. Yeah. So, <coughs> we get the big speech. Uh, Usopp challenges Luchi to a fight. Um, so, Luffy's like, no, there's no... You need to not do that. So, that's the reason that he gets back up again. Is to prevent Usopp dying. Because if... Usopp goes up against Luchi, there's not a chance. Right, um, yeah. So, it, basically, it's just Luchi attacks Luffy, Luffy withstands it for a good while now. Uh, and then, finally, Luffy uses Gum Gum Jet Gap. Yes. And this is the final the final move that finishes off Luchi. It punches him straight through the towel wall. Yes. Um, Luffy can't move, though. Uh, so he shouts to Robin. He's, he says, we're all going back together. And another big feels moment. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Luffy can't move. Uh, he's completely stuck there. He's used yeah. all of his energy. So, the Marines, they're fucking gobsmacked. Like, Rob <laughs> yeah. Lucci is super strong. Uh, how could he possibly have lost? He's basically their greatest fighting force. Uh, on this battlefield, at the very least. Uh, Usopp and the rest of the crew, uh, they're all like, yay, Luffy, but Addendum Mushi. Uh, also congratulates Luffy. Who could this be? It's the Frankie family! Uh, along with the Galila shipwrights, Yokozuna, Oimo, Kashi, and Paulie! Hey. Um, so, Paulie, his ropes, he's he tied together a big net real quick, and gosh darn it, those Galila ropes, they're never gonna break, so yep. they managed to climb back up, and yeah, really? they're all they're all good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the Marines have realized that Luffy can't move. Uh, so they're gonna fire the uh, they're gonna fire their cannons at the escort ship, the one that was gonna take Robin away. Yes. Because it's got the straw hats on it. Uh Sanji, he appears, and Kokoro, Chimney, Gombe, and Chopper, they were all still on the uh, escort ship. But Sanji, he saves them. A Marine tries to catch Nami, but Kokoro slaps him with a fin. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, the ships start firing at Z- Zoro. Um, hmm. Uh, and then they start preparing to fire at Luffy. Yes. Robin, she realises she can't pull uh, Luffy out of there. She, he's just too far away. He'd just fall in the water. Hmm. Um, they're all screaming, like, you need to get up. But he, there's no way he can. And then, another voice... Usopp hears a voice Frankie says, oh it's the Frankie family but Usopp's like no, I know this voice Mm -hmm. Luffy hears it too 
it's telling them to look down. The rest all start hearing it finally, and Usopp's like, yes, we need to jump off the ship. Um, mm-hmm. Zoro's... Uh, Robin, he asks Robin to pull Luffy into the sea. Zoro's like, that'll kill him, but Usopp goes, no, we still have a friend. Um, and who could it be but the Going Merry? Uh, yeah. The Going Merry has come of her own volition to save them all. She's brave to Aqua Laguna. Even with her massive crack in her stern, she's gonna get them to safety no matter what. Yes. Um, and she actually talks to them. Uh, yeah, yeah. She says, let's go on one last adventure. So... They're all they all jump onto the going merry. Spondum he orders them to open fire on the merry. Um, but the ships all get caught up in a strong will. Um where did this whirlpool come from? Well, Sanji uh while he was disappeared, he decided, hey, we might need to delay them at some point. How can we delay them? Well, there's two fucking massive gates there. Those have got to take a while to open. Uh, So he goes off and he finds the way to close it. Um, So the gates are now closing. Yes. Uh, And it turns out that the reason that the gates are there, the gates of justice exist, they're not just a symbol of the world government's power. Um... They actually exist to control the currents of the waters around the uh, around Eddie's lobby. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and this will come up later. Uh, this is something that definitely is useful information later. Right. Okay. Um. So, Nami, she's a good enough navigator to avoid the whirlpools. They managed to get out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zoro and Sanji use Luffy's floppy body as a sling to deflect cannonballs. (laughs) But but Spandam, uh, he's yelling for them to fire even more. But Robin, she breaks his spine. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it's not the end of Spandam, really, but it's still that's a significant uh, significant yeah. blow to it. Yeah. And then finally, Frankie uses the coup event to fly the ship away, yes. which is very interesting and hmm. Could, could they use this later on, perhaps? Perhaps. Although, uh, given the Mary's condition, I can't imagine that's very good for her right now. No. So, the Frankie family, Galila, the Giants, the King Bulls, and Yokozuna, they've commandeered the Puffing Tom, and they're off back to Water 7 along with the Straw yes. Hats. Yeah. Uh, Aokiji arrives... Uh, and he's like there's no way that we can sh- say this is anything other than a complete defeat for the world government mm-hmm. um, the straw hats they're, they're gone like, they've pieced out uh, and while they're on their way back they see a Galila ship with iceberg um, but just as they see, just as they get to the ship with Iceberg on, Mary splits in half. Yes, and that moment was absolutely heartbreaking because when I was reading that, I was thinking, oh, the Mary's back for, for one final journey. Surely she'll at least get back to Water 7. No. No. No, she does not make it back to Water 7. Um, what's more, she. She gets a fantastic 
they're real. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. There's expertly like, done. Yeah, the, so, the whole Viking burial with the with the fire and everything. Yeah, so the straw hats, they're like, please, just fix her one last time. Just at the very least, even if she can't sail with us, she can still live. But she's split in half. There's no, there's no way. Um, so Iceberg, he's like, no, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. But he he hears the. Uh, so it turns out the reason the Merry managed to get to them in the first place is just as Aqua Laguna was uh, coming, he went out and he repaired her. He heard he heard her voice, uh, and she asked him, "Please just repair me so I can sail one more time." Um, and he was moved by that because in his mind that's a miracle um, mm -hmm. Luffy uh, he realises the iceberg what he's saying is that there's nothing that can be done yeah. so they all get on iceberg's ship and they set fire to the Merry because the way the way that they explain it is they don't want her to be lonely on the sea floor. Yes. Uh so as they're watching the ship burn, they all hear the soul of Mary uh thanking them for yeah. taking care of her and I mean when you start this series, you don't expect to cry for a ship. No. But everyone does. Yep. It's yep. unavoidable. No avoiding it. <laughs> um, yeah, Luffy. That they're, they're all saying their farewells, and, uh, and Mary's just thanking them for, for, for taking care of it. Ah. <laughs> and Luffy's like, no, your damage was my fault. Like, I ripped your mast off, we crashed you into icebergs. Like, but, no, she says that her only regret, regret was that she couldn't continue with them. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that is uh, the uh, as she, as she thanks them one last time for a wonderful journey. Yeah, that's that's, that's the uh, official end to the Emmy's lobby arc. <laughs> I'm tearing up just thinking oh, about oh, it. Yeah, you're, make, you're making me get worked up as well. Oh. Uh, like this is raw for you, but this has been I've I've I saw this for the first time like eight, nine years ago and it still gets me like this. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, we're finally on to the post Ennies lobby arc. Yes. <laughs> which is just a little it's a ten chapter arc or twelve. Yeah. No, ten chapters. Um Yeah, it's like A volume. And it's just a goodbye to the uh, to to Ennis Lobby as an arc because you can't really you can't just leave it on the Mary's tragic funeral. No, <laughs> but you there can't really be, say that that's not no. the end of the arc. So yeah, no, there, there, there had to be a, a bit of um, a bit of injecting some gusto back into the story um, before moving on. And uh, and they do that with the entrance of. Uh, I, I'm just gonna like play in the background some music uh, right now, and uh, I'm not sure if you will understand the reference, but uh, essentially, this guy comes in saying, "I'm not, not your daddy, daddy I'm, I'm your grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> I'm not your daddy, I'm your grandpa. It's Monkey D. Garp. I'm not your daddy, it I'm is, your grandpa. First, uh, so, the Straw Hats have got back to the island. Yes, yes, of course. Um, and Frankie's like, okay, well, I get it, you're still pissed that I stole 200 million berries from you. Yeah, that, that, that was a, a pretty big thing. <laughs> but I've got an idea. So, the reason that he stole the money in the first place mm -hmm. was because for years he had 
a dream. Um, he said that he'd never create another battle, Frankie. He never wanted to create a ship that would hurt anyone ever again. Yes. But in his mind, Tom, he helped... Uh, he helped uh, Goldie Roger by creating the Oro Jackson. And he wanted to sort of... He wanted to create a dream ship that would sail all the oceans of the world. And he could see no other crew more worthy of this ship than the future king of the pirates. Um, so he saw it as kind of a chance to follow in Tom's footsteps. So what he did with this money was he went out and he bought a branch of Adam Wood. So Adam is a huge tree uh, in the One Piece world The Essentially, its branches, its it, its wood is stronger than iron. It's fantastically strong, um, but still has the flexibility of wood. The it, it's as light as wood. It, it's essentially better than both wood and metal in every conceivable way. Right. Um, so it's the perfect thing to create the stern of a ship from. Uh, exactly yes. the parts of. Mary that got broken in the first place. Mm-hmm. So he decides, okay, well, you've got no more money, but I've got this plan to build this big ship, and I've got, I finally got the material, thanks to your money. I'm going to give this ship to you. And the Straw Hats, they're pretty chuffed with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The Straw Hats, they're waking, uh, they're sleeping in uh, hotel uh, on Water 7 mm-hmm. and then hang on some guy crashes through the wall <laughs> yep <laughs> uh, and as he said it's Monkey D. Garp and Luffy yep. he's still beaten up he's still recovering but Garp he hits Luffy <laughs> and yeah, just smacks him. for some reason this hurts Luffy uh, Luffy actually takes damage. He manages to feel Garp's punch. And Garp, he says that there's no protection from a fist of love. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah. Luffy wakes up and he's like, G-G-G-G-G-G-Chan? So, yeah, everyone's pretty shocked that a Navy... A Navy Marine... I don't know why I said Navy Marine. A Vice Admiral is Luffy's grandfather. Luffy's grandfather of all people, yep. Uh, They're they're still pretty... I love how he just... Yeah, he just struts up and he's just like, I always knew you were were no good. I was raising you to be a good Navy boy like me. And then, oh, that that red hair guy, he's he's feeding you all this uh, nonsense about pirates. And then I turn my back for one minute. What happens? You go and be a pirate. Yeah. So, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into why that might have been later on, but, Mm. uh, Garp, essentially the rest of them, they're all shocked, but, hey, there's this Navy Vice Admiral, and a very famous Vice Admiral. Uh, Garp is legendary. Um, this guy is in the middle of our hotel room and has just punched our captain, so they're understandably on guard. Yeah. <laughs> but Luffy tells them not to try it because Garp definitely could kill them. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, he says that he's been nearly killed by Garp many times in the past. Uh, he, Garp, trying to make Luffy into a strong man, he yes. left him in the jungle, he chucked him into valleys, he, he basically just did anything that could possibly have been dangerous. Yes. Uh, all uh, to make think, Luffy like, the str- relationship between Piccolo and Gohan. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of that there. But going even further in that, at least Piccolo gave Gohan new clothes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Luffy, uh, he and Garp, they fight because Garp 
doesn't like that Luffy's a pirate now. Yep. Uh, he's angry that the red hair influenced him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the middle of the fight, both of them fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. But then Garp asks if Luffy knows what Shanks is doing. Mm. And obviously, Luffy doesn't know because years and years ago uh, he was left behind on the island by Shanks Um, Mm -hmm. and Garp explains and this is our first mention of Whitebeard's compatriots I suppose you could call them but also rivals Mm. Um, so there are four pirates the Yonko uh, the four emperors in fact yes And the second half of the Grand Line, that's their territory. Um, Mm -hmm. Shanks is one of them. Whitebeard is also one of them. So, essentially, the only... They're so powerful. Each each one of them is so powerful in and of themselves that Marine Headquarters required the Shichibukai. They are the reason that the Shichibukai exist, is because even with all the admirals, if two of these were to team up, there's no way that the marines could win. Right. Or at okay. least it would be very difficult for them to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whitebeard in particular hmm. has... He could probably destroy the world within a minute. Okay, okay. I just figured he was a pretty intimidating guy, but all right. (laughs) Yeah, there's a reason that they stand at the top of the pirate world. Hmm. Um, So, Garp, he says, hang on, uh, there's some, uh, there's some real, real interesting guys here to meet you. Uh, One of them, he has two kukris, uh, curved blades. Um, and Luffy fights a guy who... Hang on, this guy uses Shave. So Zoro's fighting a blady boy, and Luffy's fighting a, a pink-haired guy with a bandana. Yeah. Uh, they they beat them very easily, well, yeah, needless to say. But it's Kobe and Helmeppo! Of course. So, so Garp is... He's been training them this whole time. Um, yeah. And he's sort of taken them under his wing. So I believe at this point in the story, they're both lieutenants. Right. Um, Which, I mean, if you think about it, the Straw Hat's journey so far has been less than a year. Yeah, yeah. For them to get from cabin boys to lieutenants in less than a year, they've had some really good tutelage from Garb. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. Um, And also, kobe has gone through a growth spurt as well. Yeah. And then Garp tells Luffy not only has uh, not only has Luffy now met Kobe and Helmeppo again, he's also met his dad. Yeah, yeah. That, to which Luffy is surprised he even has a dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have Monkey D. Garp um, and Monkey D. Garp is the legendary navy man who chased down Gold Roger to the ends of the earth. Yep. And then we have Luffy, one of the biggest... He's he's part of a group that's known unofficially as the Supernovas. Um, so there's a, f- a few different pirates who all started at about the same time. But they're all really quickly rising through the ranks and getting high bounties. Um, and then we have the father... So in between the two is yes. Monkey D. Dragon. Yes. And Monkey D. Dragon is a revolutionary. Uh, pretty much the revolution. Uh, he leads the revolutionary army, uh, who are essentially directly opposed to the world government and trying actively to dismantle it. Yeah, yeah. And... Basically, that makes Dragon the most wanted man in the world. Wow. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and so supposedly, uh, Dragon was uh, at Rogue Town or Loke Town. And, uh, Indeed, just he was. Checking out Luffy, yeah. And in fact, 
he saved Luffy. So you may remember back in Log, uh, back in Logtown. Yeah. There's a there's a moment where Smoker is about to capture Luffy, and then a big storm blows in. Yes. And, yes, I do remember that. And a guy with a tattoo on his face. Uh, Smoker looks up. He sees the guy with a tattoo on his face, and he's like, "Ah, it's ah. you. What are you doing here?" Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy was, like, wearing a cloak as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was Monkey D. Dragon. Mm. There we go. Uh, he, I guess he just couldn't help but save his son. Um, I suppose. Because he doesn't seem to really give a shit, to be honest. Hmm. Uh, he's kind of proud of Luffy for being a pirate rather than Navy. But other than that, Luffy can just do his own thing. Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Luffy... Garp says that he's not here to arrest Luffy. Um, obviously, he's his grandson. He's just here to say that... Luffy is going to need to go to the second half of the Grand Line if he wants to continue his ven- adventure. And the second half of the Grand Line is called the New World. Yes. Uh... And the new world is ridiculous. Um, it the, so the difference between the East Blue and the Grand Line. That's about the difference between the Grand Line and the New World. Yeah. Uh, so. He also lie ahead. Uh, Kobe also tells Luffy, and this is where we finally find out. So, do you remember I told you that there was a reason that the Navy ships were able to get through the calm belt? Oh, yes. Not- yeah, yeah, this is where he explains it. The, uh, yeah, the so... Stones. Not only do they have... Uh, not only do they have steam-powered ships with paddles to drive them through the calm belt, but any ship that went through there would be pretty much constantly under attack from Sea Kings. So you'd have to have a very high-ranking Navy officer on every single ship just to get through there. Um, Probably multiple in case something happened to that one. So rather than that, a very clever guy, um, I don't think he's named just yet. Uh, No, I I think he is. Uh, um, uh, Doctor something or other. um, So... uh, What's his name again? Uh, yeah, Kobe bigs it up. He's like, oh yeah, that guy's incredible. His advances in science uh, revolutionizing the world. Hang on a second, let me. Because it's very important. Vegapunk, Dr. Vegapunk. So, Dr. Vegapunk, he discovered that you can put sea stone on the bottom of ships. And, I mean, this is a very costly thing to do because sea stone is so expensive. But if you coat the bottom of ships with sea stone, because the sea stone emits the same wavelength as the sea, Hmm. it essentially makes you invisible from below um, to the ocean predators. Hmm. Uh, He's also the guy that I've been alluding to as he's the one that worked out that you can feed devil fruits to objects. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he's, he's a very he's essentially the head of science for the Navy. Um, Okay. So, yeah, um, he becomes important later on as well, although I haven't quite fi- found out how yet. Uh, okay. Again, we still we still haven't got all the information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more you read, the more you realise this story is still incomplete. Um, yeah. There's so many things to still discover. So... Okay, so, yeah, uh, yeah actually, I, I think we should um, we'll probably wrap up quite quickly here, because... 
uh, yeah, we only have a few things left to do, and I've only got 10 minutes left on my recording before I'd have to restart it again, and I don't want to do that. So, right. uh, yeah. so quickly, they have a party to celebrate yep, their party. win. Aokiji comes, um, he, him and Robin, they have a chat, and Aokiji says that he was going to capture Robin, but now that he's seen that she has a place that she finally wants to be, uh, he's not going to pursue her anymore. Unless he's specifically ordered to, obviously, but yeah. he he realises now that she's not the destructive force that she used to be. Um, yep. Shanks uh, and Whitebeard yes, apparently... Yes, they have a little chat, don't they? Yeah, they have a little chat, and this is really cool. Uh, so Shanks tells Whitebeard all about Luffy, um... And we get introduced finally. So, do you remember Montero? Uh, no, I don't. The ability of the Skypeans to sense oh, Mantra, movements. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you remember I said that that was kind of a build-up to another ability? Yes. So, I told you way back when that we'd seen that ability in the very first chapter in Romance Dawn. Right. So, Shanks and Whitebeard, they meet, and they use something called Haki. And uh, that's a name I've heard, but I don't know anything about it. So, it when Shanks boards Whitebeard's uh, boat, all the smaller, uh, all the lower ranks on his ship, they all fall unconscious. Um, yeah. And it's explained that this is due to the combined force of Shanks's Haki and Whitebeard's Haki. Okay. Um, so Haki has many different uses and many different forms, but one of them is the ability to intimidate to the point where you can almost control a person. Okay. For a short time. Um, and that doesn't just stick with people. Do you remember when Shanks's arm was bitten off? Yeah, yeah. And he... Why does the Sea King that bites it off not attack, attack him after that? Yeah, yeah, Shanks... that was kind of odd, wasn't it? So Shanks stares at the Sea King. Yeah. And f finally, this is where we get our first clue as to why that is. It turns out that all the way back there, Shanks was using Haki. So, he intimidated the Sea King so strongly that it obeyed his will and fucks off. Right. Really much. So, yeah. Uh, okay, interesting. Let's keep that in mind for the future. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, as for the actual topic of their chat, uh, Shanks is basically saying, Hey, listen, Whitebeard, y you know that guy Blackbeard? I think he used to be in your crew? Uh... He is racking shit at the moment, so please, uh, don't send Ace after him, I know you already did, just pull him back. Ace is not ready to fight that guy, he is way too strong. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Blackbeard, he's not happy, uh, he, in his mind, uh, he's insulted his crew. Um. And there's a very good reason for Black, uh, for Whitebeard in particular to take that as an insult, but we'll right. go into that at some point later. Okay, okay. Um, uh, let's see then. The uh, oh, the crew get all new bounties. Um, uh, yeah, Luffy of course gets three hundred mil. Uh, the uh, the others get you know some amount of millions. Chopper gets fifty. Yeah, Chopper. Not fifty million, is, just fifty. Yeah, he's he's considered their pet. Yes, so, the the, the uh, candy floss loving pet. So, um, now they are all taken to Frankie. Uh, Frankie takes them to see their new ship, the Thousand yes, Sunny. New ship. Yes. And the Thousand Sunny, it's real cool. It's got a it's got a lion on the front of it, yeah. and it's powered by cola. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they're all about to depart on the ship, but. Hey, there's something we need to do. We've got a crew member to pick up. Yeah. Two, even. Um, so, they convince Frankie to go with them. 
by stealing his, uh, his underwear. Tricks. Yeah. Ste- stealing his speedos and then crushing his balls. <laughs> and that, that's a very funny scene in the uh, anime, particularly. Yeah. Oh, so like, um, the voice actor had a lot of fun with that scene. But earlier on, so they want to get Usopp, but earlier on, uh, Zoro he laid down the law. During the uh, after the duel, he really showed that he was the first mate mm. because when Luffy wasn't was too emotional to really think straight, uh, he put his foot down and said, "Unless Usopp comes back, bows and says I was wrong, uh, and apologizes." If you let him back on the crew, I will be the next to leave. Hmm. And... Obviously, that is a big... uh, That's some big stakes there, so... Yeah. They all... That really calms them down. They start to think about it logically. So Hmm. Usopp, he's running through Water 7. He's trying to think of ways to be like... Hey guys, it's me! Let's go! But... No, the Straw Hats, they're they're sailing away, and he realises, it finally hits him, that Usopp, he's made a big mistake. Um, Yes. One that he he kind of can't rectify. So, once it hits him, he breaks down, and he finally bows and apologises, and Luffy immediately throws... His arm out all the way Jeez. to the shore and grabs him. I love him. Oh. And so, something else I love about that scene is at, at first when he's you know um, playing it off like it's no big deal or, or like you know oh come on let's let's go sail off together. Uh, Luffy and Zoro, they hear him, but they don't acknowledge that they heard him. They're just like I'm not hearing anything. The moment yeah. he apologizes, then they hear him. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I just I just love that. So I guess the final thing is uh, it's technically part of this, but I th- I think we can leave this till next because I consider this the beginning of the next few arcs rather yeah. than the end of this one. So the battle okay. between Blackbeard and Ace. Yeah, I, I can see how how that would tie in more with the next stuff, and also that gives us a perfect time to end when I've got. 1 minute and 13 seconds left on the recording. So, I will say thank you to everyone who has watched through this 6 hour video. This is going to be one video. The other part is another video. I I thank you very much. You have been very good pirates boys and girls. And uh, uh, we, we will be talking about the next bit of the story very soon. Zombies? Possibly. Other things? Maybe. Fishmen? likely. Uh, and and when we get to that, you will hear all about it. But for now, I really must end this recording. It is about to end, so I will say goodbye and good luck on your travels. Goodbye!